You like that typing or what? Dude, how am I going to go through all these today? How do you think Frank should cut this shit up, too? Do you think Frank should, uh... My only thought is... Like, for this week, I think all at once is probably the best thing with timestamps. But I feel like we need to prepare this content for the future. Like, for example, when Alpha and Beta and, like, The War Within is coming out, people might be like, okay, I want to play a Farseer Shaman or something. And then they're going to be like, let's see what some people think about Farseer Shaman. And they're going to be able to, like, actually type that in on YouTube and then click my video. Where if I release these giga cuts of every single of like 12 all at once there's no way people are actually going to do that unless i commit to um unless i commit to like doing videos in the future breaking down each one to do that again but i don't know yeah guys the unquestioned coolest name the unquestioned coolest name rider of the apocalypse finally got released and i so far it's been pretty accurate to with cool name and really good tree so i have i have high hopes Also, Rider of the Apocalypse and a couple of the Paladin ones and Frostfire Mage have, like, fully... I am fully convinced that these hero talents were a really good idea from Blizzard. Because not only do I think that the gameplay of these is just really, really sick, but I think people are going to play the expansion, and they're going to play the expansion just because some of these exist. They're like, I can't decide if I really want to come back to Ra WoW, but even though it's not a great tree, I can be a Dark Ranger? All right, log in. Wait, I'm a demon hunter, and the, I saw this on Twitter, but apparently the Rider of the Apocalypse tree is like you're channeling the Four Horsemen's shit, like, log the fuck in. You know? Like, I think... I, I think Blizzard... I think this is an insanely good idea. Because, like, what people have said is, oh, well, they this is basically just them adding rows at the bottom of the like spec trees but they can't actually do that so they made hero talents 
Yes, but by phrasing them as hero talents and by buying into the theme, they're going to get so many more people to buy into this. I think these hero talents are going to get a significant amount of people to play the game that would not have otherwise. They're they're milking bat chests hard. Oh yeah. 400 people on YouTube. Yeah, what what have I done by the way? Shout out if you're listening on YouTube right now. I know you guys haven't watched the stream before. Most of you, I'm sure some of you are just getting the ad-free experience or just the way better player, but uh Yeah, I talk a lot during the starting soon screen sometimes. By the way, is that a normal thing or is that a me thing? Like, I turn on the starting soon screen for 15 minutes, but I just talk to you during the whole thing. A lot of people do that. Okay. All right, we're chilling. We're chilling. I like how I read the one person who said a lot of people do that, and everyone else is like, that's a you thing. <laughs> Dude, I like how on Twitch, if you have more than 7.5k megabits a second upload, it's like they'll shut down your stream. And YouTube, when I do it at 8k upload, they're like, warning, your content is really bad because you're not using a high enough bitrate. <laughs> It's literally, I'm, I'm doing the same thing to both, but YouTube's just literally keeps popping up with a warning saying you could be doing so much better. <laughs> a lot of people podcast during their starting soon shit. Yeah, that's my bit is I just podcast during my whole stream. That's just my, that's my bit. Yeah, YouTube's YouTube's player where you can pause and rewind it without having to open the VOD, ten times better than Twitch. Um, the quality that you can upload on YouTube and you can use better encoders is just better. Small problem, for a lot of people, chat is a major part of streaming, and YouTube's chat is is donkey for sure. But that's what I did. So my, my YouTube thing right now, the only thing it says in the description is, hey, if you want to participate in chat, come to Twitch. <laughs> Do I make money from live streaming on YouTube? Like, I know how I make money on Twitch. I, I get subs, but subs are a very small part of my income. I don't know how many subs I have right now, like 5 or 6K or something. 6K, 7K. I make all of my money from ads right but i'm assuming ad revenue on youtube is more goaded but do i have to set how many ads play on youtube i mean the premium people don't get it but you could enable super chats on youtube what does that mean Ah, yes, only the premium people don't get it. Well, I've heard from a lot of my viewers that normally watch me on Twitch. They're actually watching me on YouTube because... Why do I have 600 viewers on YouTube right now? Uh, they're watching me be on there because they don't have Twitch Turbo or they don't sub to me on Twitch, but they have YouTube Premium. So that, you know... I mean, how do I... I don't know. How do I enable this shit? Oh, I have to set up memberships. <laughs> what the fuck are memberships? Set up your memberships. Uh, one level. Dude, this is what it suggests for three levels to set up your memberships, by the way. 
unnamed level one is like three dollars and then you have level two and then level three is gameplay with you and connecting on social media what the fuck does that so you're telling me if i let you do a 25 dollar a month sub on youtube i have to fucking like in my time off of the game i have to just fucking queue up nah dude we're just gonna do one level five bucks how do I like alter? It says member shout outs. I'm never going to call these out once. I don't do that. Dude, that sounds so. That sounds so pretentious that I don't call out subs. But I, I truly think it ruins your content. I truly mean that. If I, if I sat here and solo podcasted for my daily three to four hours streams and I just called out every sub. I think it would significantly decrease the quality of my content. And also I'm ADHD as fuck. So I would literally forget what I was talking about. It's a pandemic. All right. Anyways, we're doing the one level tailor your offer to work for you as well as viewers. Um, can I delete all this? Okay, here we go. Member shoutouts. Not that. Member only live chats. Nope. Priority reply to comments. Eh, actually, sure. Early access to new videos. Nope. Photo and status updates. Nope. You literally get nothing. If you want to sub to me on YouTube or you want to become a member, what's the what should the level be called? Some people have a post screen that rolls all the new subs. Oh, that's pretty smart. What is it called? Suckers? Simp? DD? Oh, dude. DDDD -D -D is good. I'm doing that. Good shout. All right. We have DDDD -D -D member tiers. Next. Oh, I have to submit this for review. So YouTube has to... has to review me getting and then it wants me to announce memberships i don't want to do any you know i'm just not even gonna have memberships man it doesn't even matter why would anyone even do that why would anyone sub well a lot of people sub to not get ads but i feel like on youtube if you're gonna go the i don't want ads route you just turbo get premium, right? Like YouTube premium has to be the most value service. Twitch turbo. Dude, YouTube. Okay. Twitch turbo is goaded, but YouTube premium is 10 times better than Twitch turbo. Like All right, anyways, I don't know why I'm stalling. We should, uh... We should just stream, right? We should we should stream. I'm trying to, like, whittle down this food. I, I made myself some extra food because I usually forget to eat during my stream. And then... Uh, I'm just not hungry, so I... It's fucking sweet. Hello, everybody. Mm. It's time. Hello, hello, hello. And hello for the first time streaming to my main YouTube, which has 700 viewers right now for... That's actually insane. Well, hello. Uh, so if you guys are watching on YouTube, quick shout. Shout out if you guys are chatting there. Uh, I don't have that open. And I'll explain why. Uh, I have like thousands and thousands more viewers on Twitch than I'll have on YouTube. Uh, and the chat experience on Twitch is a bit better. And I thought about having a scenario where I could show both chats. Um, but then like certain people are going to be hearing me have a conversation with someone that they can't see. I don't think it's hard for me to see both chats, but I think it's weird for both people to not see both chats. So I have Twitch chat on the screen if you're on YouTube and I have uh, 
I don't know. I just feel like you should just watch on Twitch. If you if you care about chat, you should just be watching on Twitch anyway. But if you want to have the better player on YouTube or have no ads due to already having YouTube premium, that makes sense. But I would probably just have Twitch. Wait, can't if what's the OP viewer experience here? Wouldn't it be having open like Chatterino or a pop out of the chat, but then watching on YouTube if you're a YouTube viewer? That it has to be that, right? That's like, is that the, is that the tech? Yeah, I don't know. I could also make my, when I'm doing these kind of like streams, I could make my chat bigger too. Here. There we go. Not for you guys to type fucking excavator stuff, but... My YouTube is super delayed. Oh, interesting. So when I set up the broadcast on YouTube, it, uh... When I set up the broadcast on YouTube, it, it asked me if I wanted, like, higher quality or super low latency, and I think I chose the thing in the middle, but I should probably just... go higher latency, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Max, please, this is coming from a place of love and respect. Please save Rider of the Apocalypse for last, and for your health and sanity, skip Monk Hero Talent Trees. I'm really looking forward to the Monk, because I, I, I play a lot of Monk, and I have high hopes, which I probably shouldn't have. So, by the way, I know a lot of you... Okay, I'm just going to say, I, I've seen some initial reactions to some of them on Twitter... But, like, that's what people always do. They see things and they have initial, like, major reactions either way. And then a day later, especially content creators, would be like, I don't know, I thought about this more and it's okay. Like, I don't know if that's copium or if initially, like, a lot of people just want to react crazy either way. I'm going to completely disregard every single opinion that I have slightly seen. I have not read any of these. Um, I know Rider of the Apocalypse has to do with the Four Horsemen, which is just fucking sick. Um, so... We'll we'll get there. It, believe me, if I if I hate it, I will I'll say it. But uh, I don't want to go into it knowing that some of you guys are are pissed because I also think sometimes you guys read stuff and you get way too emotional too fast and it's not really that bad. Uh, one second, let me find uh my tier maker. So the last time I looked at this, I did make so so far for all of the ones uh reacted to so far or that have come out i have listed on here uh one thing to note is this is not true of all of the ones that are like upper mid lower mid or mid but the ones that are really really bad and the ones that are really really good you can tell by reading just the beginning of it you don't need to read any other node except for the starter node and you can tell that it's fucking insane or it really sucks. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So let's see what they actually released today. So, wowhead. And there's usually two articles. There's like the one that Blizzard posts, uh, which is way harder to read than the one that wowhead, wowhead usually posts. Okay, Wowhead's ones are great. It's so much better to read them in this format. So I'll read mainly off of this, but I do want to open the Blizzard one because sometimes the Blizzard post shows or it has some dev notes that are not included on here wow just let's just spam this thing also shout out blizzard releasing 12 of these they've really ramped fast huh we were getting like four at a time twice and then they were like all right we'll give you eight but then they said you were getting eight in this week in wow right but then in this week in wow uh that we got this week, they didn't even mention how many we were getting. They said, oh, by the way, on March 15th, maybe we'll look at a few more hero talents. But last time this came out, they were like, we're gonna look at eight. So I was assuming we were gonna get four today. And then without even announcing it, they just give us 12 of them, which is insane. Um, so that's super cool. Uh, let's look at this. So we gotta start where we want. Okay, so I just 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the Wowhead one. And if there's a dev note, you guys just need to tell me. And then I'll, before we read it, we'll look at the dev note. Let's actually just skim. We can probably even see. Uh, Aldrachi Reaver. Doesn't look like there's any. There's so many dev notes. I don't, I haven't seen any so far. Pack leader. Rider has a dev note. Oh, it's actually in the tree. Wait, okay. I'm a little confused now. I haven't seen this before. Okay, so Rider of the Apocalypse. Oh my god, there is a dev note in the tree. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, that's new. Uh. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Okay, so we got to figure out where to start. So before we started... Not from top down, but from like certain classes. So let's see actually what's even being rated today. Uh, because we can use this to update. Hmm, what's the best way to go through all of them and talk about it and then rate them after and have a Frank? What do you think? Do you think we have a separate update to the to the tier list uh video, or do you think we do that fluidly during it? So like you finish reviewing it and then you rate it right away. Dude, I love the Frank rat. Oh, that's so good. All right. Well, Frank's just not here, so that's good. Um, I'll just YOLO it then. Uh, so before we start, we so far, we have gotten a really, really even mix of, of good and bad. We have gotten a couple insane, a few really bad. Good news is, is they've already said they're reworking one of the really bad ones. We just haven't heard anything about Lightsmith and Trickster yet. Uh, I believe at the end of today, we will now have seen all of the Death Knight hero talents, all of the Warrior hero talents, all of the Evoker hero talents, and I think that's it, right? I don't think every, I don't think any other class has had every single, oh, uh, Druid, Druid is done. Yeah, Druid gets Druid of the Claw, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, so a few are done. A Warlock is almost done. Oh, Paladin's been done. Yeah. Shit, chat, I don't know where to start. I don't know if I want to start with Rider of the Apocalypse because I have so much high hopes for this. And I think this is... I mean, we we also did a tier list of just how cool the names were and Rider of the Apocalypse is by far the coolest name. So... I'm thinking about just ripping it from the top. Just going right down the list. Which would be Deathbringer and into Rider, into Aldrachi... Into Druid of the Claw, Pack Leader, Flame Shaper. It looks like it's uh, classes, uh, just alphabetical order. Wait, what are we? So we got, we got Mistweaver and Windwalker. We have both Windwalker ones. Okay, good day for me. We have Farseer. This is one that I've seen an excessive amount of dooming for so far. Um, and that's unfortunate, seeing as this is the hero talent that is shared with Elemental and Resto Shamans, which are... The two specs in the entire game that currently don't have a raid buff and have been famously not brought to raids at a competitive level for this entire expansion. I think they might be the only two specs where that's true. Maybe Survival Hunter too. Um, so them being like, all right, this can be the thing that fixes our problem. Oh, wait, we don't have a raid buff. Oh, we don't, oh wait, we don't have a reason to be brought to content Mythic Plus as well. What a perfect way to fix that. Right? Everyone is talking about how, how they can give shamans some utility that puts them in a raid This besides enhance because they're already in there by default and they have that kind of value. In Mythic Plus, when Fury Totem in the right comps is also good, even though it's annoying to, to talent into. Like, the hero talent tree would be a way to address that. Although, actually, is that... That's not actually true. Okay, I, I've, I've come back on that after it came out of my mouth. Because wouldn't that be bad if... If the Farseer tree was the way they solved that problem, and then Ellie and Resto couldn't play their other one, the whole expansion, because they got their viability from only one of their hero talents. Okay, so that would be that would be a very bad way to solve that problem. Um, sorry, I'm just yapping. That's what I do. I just yap. And then I'm really looking forward to Slayer. Uh, at least in Blizzard's rhetoric, they said that Slayer is like all about execute, and I'm excited to have execute be back. In the game again 
uh, well, not back in the game, but like I want, I want warriors to be the executors. I want warriors to be the best execute in the game. They haven't been for a while. Also, Slayer's just one of those names. Slayer's just a fucking crazy name. So, I want to, I want to see it thrive. All right, so let's get it. We'll start it out with Deathbringer. Okay. Uh, before we read the first thing, let's see if Blizzard has anything interesting here about it. So, any dev notes uh, or any lore summary? Let's see. Um, Deathbringers are the emissaries of death, empowered by the Shadowlands. Their physical strikes and abilities aim for their enemies' souls and vanquish them without mercy. Okay, crazy theme. Oh, oh! before we start this too, I mentioned this in the starting soon screen. Um, but just about all of these hero talents. Uh... I've seen criticism of these being like, why is everyone getting so hyped about these? It's basically just like a regular... Hey, Lily. Or Ella. It's okay. Um, it's just it's just basically Blizzard... These are just things that should go at the bottom of everyone's spec tree. But because... They can't do that because of the Evergreen system, they're just... They're doing hero talents instead. I think that this is so much more than that. Um, I think... So, first of all, the gameplay, this is not really gameplay related. Like, I think some of these have proven that, like, if you had any doubt of, like, oh, hero talents are just whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, like there are some of these that are going to make your class significantly more fun to play. Like, they're actually sick, gameplay-wise. But even just theme. I think that hero talents were such a smart idea, because even if it is just extra spec tree points, it's also so heavily theme-based, and I think... So many people care about WoW theme that are not, like, constantly giving their opinions on WoW year-round. Like, are are there Death Knight players? And I read this a little bit, where there's, like, you know, when we look at Riders later, it's about, like, the Four Horsemen. Are there people that are Death Knight players that have played Death Knight back in Wrath that are going to come back because of Rider of the Apocalypse? I think so. Like, cool, like, uh, Dark Ranger or Frostfire Mage. I absolutely think... That people are going to, if they're on the edge of playing it, they're like, holy shit, I want to be a rider of the apocalypse. So I think the fact that they basically gave you extra spec tree points and are also introducing heavy theme. As I've seen more and more of these, I just think it's a huge W. And I think the closer we get to the expansion, the more people are going to just be talking about this kind of stuff. All right. Let's slam it. Deathbringer. All right, you guys know the test. The very first node so far has been able to rule out or confirm whether it is super insane or really bad. And if it doesn't sell you, most of the time it's somewhere in the mid category. So it's between Blood and Frost. If there's anything I want to see from here, I feel like, and it's I don't want them to paint you into Breath of Syndragosa, but I think... And this is a real deep cut, but I think there's a world to make Bone Storm more interesting that involves constant, constant runic power generation rather than immediate, used all at once, instant draining. Uh, and then I think that Breath needs a lot of work to be more versatile. And I wonder if they're going to address that here with the Blood and Frost Death Knights in the same tree. Uh, Reaper's Mark, two runes, one minute CD. Okay, viciously slice into a soul of your enemy, dealing Shadow Frost damage and applying Reaper's Mark. Uh, okay, each time you deal Shadow or Frost damage, add a stack of Reaper's Mark, and after 12 seconds or reaching 40 stacks, the mark explodes, dealing damage per stack. Reaper's Mark travels to an unmarked enemy nearby if the target dies or explodes below 35. Ooh. And where there are no enemies to travel to... Oh, or explodes below 35% health when there are no enemies to travel to. The explosion cannot occur again on a target for three minutes. Wait. Oh, okay, so specifically the Reaper's Mark traveling to a different target or exploding below... Okay, I, I initially was like... I read that last part and I'm like, okay, you can't use this on the same target, but no, it's okay. Okay, so it's giving a one-minute cooldown damage profile spell... Two blood and frost. Um, 
let's just remove tanking from the equation real quick and we'll see how this gets supported later but just just i think it's interesting to just read the first thing because clearly when they make these this is the thing and then all of this supports the thing there's been a few scenarios but they're pretty rare so far when like the first thing's okay and then something at the bottom makes it 10 times better uh this doesn't sound amazing right at the map. Also, Frost is not really a class that is in need of having, like, a stronger bit at one minute. Uh, they they are kind of famously a really, really good one-minute class, or, like, a little bit less than that. Like, they just have really good pillar up time, especially with the, the Dragonflight talent tree. Uh, blood tank damage profiles are totally whatever. Like, there's usually nothing that is super controversial in that way. Like, you look at a tank's damage over the whole fight, you're not ever looking at a tank class to carry swapping to an ad at a certain point or something like that. Um, so basically, this is just something you're going to use two runes on every minute. And when you're doing damage, which a Frost DK is going to do, a has a ton of ticks of Frost damage. This is going to stack to 40 stacks extremely fast. Um, and then it's just going to do a big burst of damage. Uh, I'm... This is not horrible, but I, I don't know if any... It, there, it'd be, it would surprise me if someone's reading this and they're like, this is sick. Let's, let's, this is probably something that needs to be supported a bit. So uh, sometimes it's a little confusing where to go here because sometimes the middle has like the sauce that makes everything make sense and the left and right are like supporting things. But let's just go left to right and see what happens. Uh, so Reaper's Mark unleashes a dark wave towards your target and back, dealing Shadow Frost damage in both ways to all enemies caught in its path. Okay, I'm trying to think. They're both melee classes, so you're not going to get, like, hella good value out of this. What's the range on Reaper's Mark? I'm assuming 40. Uh, okay. Wave of Souls, crits, cause enemy to take 5% increased shadow frost damage for 10 seconds, second to two times. My, my only hope for this, both as melee classes, is I hope that this has a really large hitbox. And, like, if you're in melee range of a bunch of targets and you cast Reaper's Mark on the biggest one, for example, I hope that this wave is big enough to realistically cleave everything in the pack and not have to do any kind of weird positioning to where you're making sure that it's actually the farthest, like, every mob is in between you and the target. Because that could be just really annoying to play with and very reliant on tank players if, uh if you're a DPS and not, if you're not playing blood. So that just something, I, but they could fix that instantly. I mean, that sounds fine. So basically this is just going to make it even more of a stronger one minute, right? Cause like everything else is going to take more damage from your spells after you're going to be doing 10% more dam. Uh, and this could also just hit really hard itself. This is pretty good. It also gives it more of an AOE profile. Um, here we go. We have Shuttered Soul. Reaper's Mark Explosion causes a piece of the target's soul to tear out and spiral outwards, dealing 10% of the explosion's damage to enemies it passes through. Okay. This looks like the visuals of this could be insane. Enemies hit by this effect deal 5% reduced fizz damage to you for 10 seconds. Okay, that second part is just like a blood thing, so it's going to make it more of like a DR as well. That's like a completely irrelevant DR, uh, for whatever it's worth, but it's fine. If anything, if you're making stuff for blood, I think in either of the blood trees, it would be smart to have... If there's anything that blood really needs... Actually, this is so hard to deal with because, again, it would make it super OP. I'm always saying, like, Blood Decay's biggest fault is they need something that allows them to, like, be tankier in a pull before until they get into their rhythm. But that would also make Blood Decay just, like, the best class of all time, right? Like, you would... <laughs> Imagine a Blood Decay. Like, a Blood Decay, once it, like, gets going, and if you play Blood Decay, you know what that means. You can't die. The The difficulty, if you play correctly, the difficulty is getting into that flow, like, when you're starting a pull. Getting threat and getting tanky enough to get into your flow is so... But, like, if they were to give you something that, like, bridged that gap, they would also just never die to anything, right? Um. Uh, either way, fine so far. Um, looks like they, they didn't miss the mark on this having some AOE toolkit. Also, this is going to kind of help Frost and Mythic Plus a little bit. So, Frost outside of Breath... Well, Breath is, like, theoretically a sick dungeon talent if your tank constantly chains combat and you can keep it up forever. But I think everyone who's ever tried this or realizes that like practical is different than theoretical, that just doesn't happen and it's a huge problem. So, the, so Frost usually tries to do something like a blit in dungeons like it should be a little bit more consistent right but then that never really a blitz always like a bunch of tiers below other things 
giving you something where it's realistically gonna you're gonna have a little buff on the pack on a one minute cooldown one minute cooldowns in a in a dungeon environment are fantastic right uh so this is this is definitely just profile wise really really good for frost and dungeons bloody decays have been actually doing decent aoe damage this whole expansion uh so i don't know if they need it that much but still interesting keep going um reaper's mark cost is reduced by one rune and its cooldown is reduced by 50 percent uh okay so the uh, so uh, okay so the first choice note here is this happens twice as often and and casts and, and costs half as much okay so the other part of this choice node, if it doesn't do that, better be absolutely insane. Reaper's Mark... Now, this is so weird. This is the most powerful node on the entire tree so far, and it's a choice node. Uh, Reaper's Mark now explodes at 50 stacks, and the first Scythe of the Exterminate has a 100% increased chance to apply Reaper's Mark. Okay, so we don't know what the fuck that means. That's got to be this, right? The first Scythe of Exterminate. All right, let's, let's time to read Exterminate, right? And then we'll go back to that. Uh, after Reaper's Mark explodes, your next Marrow Rend or a Blit costs no runes, summons two Scythes to strike your enemies. Ooh, I kind of fuck with this. The first Scythe strikes your target for Fizz damage has a 15% chance to apply Reaper's Mark, and the second Scythe strikes all damage around your target for Shadow Flame damage. So far, I have only read two of these, but I really, really like this. It's cool. Uh, so you just get a free Reaper's Mark, which now seems less OP because it's up every 30 seconds. But then also Reaper's Mark now explodes at 50, means you can get a bit, means every use will be 25% stronger at least, right? If you just look at it that way, uh, 50, or 40 to 50. And then the first Scythe of Exterminate has a 100% chance to apply Reaper's Mark. So, does this chain infinitely? Oh, I see. I see. It does not make the first Scythe of Exterminate have a 100% chance to apply. It increases the chance by 100%, meaning it goes from 15 to 30. I see. Okay, that's actually kind of interesting, but... Don't you just take Swift End for sure, unless it ruins your... If it makes your rotation clunky or something? I mean, the first one is just single target versus AoE. I mean, I like the choice node. I don't think that this choice node is a... The worst choice nodes you can make are you don't take these in different situations and you don't take these for different reasons. You just pick the one that does the most damage. That's not really this. This will definitely change the way you interact with Reaper's Mark a lot. And it also gives you... I wonder if painful... Not painful death, but like... I wonder if Exterminate can proc off itself. Like, for example, if you have a 15% chance to apply Reaper's Mark... 100 or 30 percent with painful death i'm assuming that will trigger exterminate again so you could just kind of rng into like crazy value but then like there are certain fights where you know you'll need swift end at certain points maybe i don't know i think i think you were probably just going to play the one of these that it sims the most i think that's true but i don't I think it the 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 question provided to you is more interesting than that, even though that might be the way you solve it. I, I kind of like this. I, I think I need to play with it, but I don't hate this immediately. There's there's a lot of other choice nodes that are a lot worse than this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly it's Gamba versus Consistency. I mean, could you imagine Painful Death RNG? I mean, you could... If Reaper's Mark is strong, I mean, you could absolutely pop off with... Pretty sure you'd still take Swift End right now, but either way. Um, blood Fever. Your Blood Plague deal has a chance to deal 30% increased damage to Shadow Frost. And your Frost Fever has a 30% has a chance to deal 30% increased damage to Shadow Frost. Is that on application? Or every tick? Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's every tick. And the reason why is it's just giving you some extra... It's basically just juicing up your... Is it juicing up your Reaper's Mark? So I'm assuming like your Blood Plague is ticking, it's ticking, it's ticking, and then it procs, and it's going to do two sources of damage. It's going to tick for Blood Plague, but then it's also going to do that extra tick called Blood Fever, probably, 
and I imagine that both of them give you a stack on your Reaper's Mark. So it's it's making it explode faster, and it's giving you more value with your stacks. Um, and maybe there's more synergy later. Uh, Reaper's Mark Explosion deals up to 30% increased damage based on your target's missing health and applies Soul Reaper to targets below. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I don't think Soul Reaper, as far as I could tell, Soul Reaper isn't as good as it used to be. I remember DK's telling me that yesterday because, like, Soul Reaper used to literally make, at least on Holy DK's, the best execute in the game. I'm not currently sure how it stands for Frost. Plus, I also think the bottom of the DK class tree is still a little problematic. Hopefully, it gets looked at in the War Within. Um,. That is fantastic if Soul Reaper is good. Um, and you also don't need to take Soul Reaper for this to work, right? So uh, it's not like pushing you into a talent. Uh, okay, I like that. Uh, down here, while Icy Talons is active, your abilities that spend Runic Power deal Shadow Frost damage. Uh, so Blood, Marion, and Heartstrike have a 20% chance to... Oh, wait, there's actually... Okay, let's, let's back up a second. So I'm assuming... Does this change the damage, or is it doing extra? It changes the damage, right? You just do Shadow Frost damage with your spells rather than... Uh... Right? Do you think it's going to change your animations? That was one thing that really sold me. I'm not usually a art or theme guy within WoW, but... In Aberus, I loved all the Shadow Flame shit. Like, I I just thought that purple and red combo just looked so cool. So I wonder if uh I wonder if while Icy Talon if Dark Talons while it's whatever, while Icy Talons is active, your abilities that spend runic power just shadow frost damage, I wonder if that'll actually alter the appearance of your abilities slightly. Cause that has kind of looked really cool in the past. Um either way. And just in general, Heart Strike and Marrow Rend have a 20% chance to increase the max stacks of an active Icy Talons by one up to two times. And Consuming Killing Machine or Rhyme has a 20% chance to increase the maximum stacks of Icy Talons up to two times. Okay. And then Wither Away is the choice note with this. Blood Plague deals its damage in half the duration, and the second Scythe of Exterminate applies Blood Plague. Okay, so when you're procking Reaper's Mark, it's going to be putting up your dots again. So you don't have to blood boil, and the dots you're putting up by blood boil are doing double damage. Uh, how much how much damage does blood plague do? I haven't played blood this expansion. How much uh, is blood plague a blaster? Like, is that doing a lot of your AOE damage? It's not the ma majority. It's a dot, right? So okay. So I mean, it sounds like this will be pretty strong. Uh, but you kind of need resets, or at least you need to play swift end. I mean, painful death would kind of make this. Well, I mean, you're blood boiling anyway, so. I don't know if that would even matter. Uh, it wouldn't like I'm, I'm like the only way I'm thinking about this is like is Wither Away gonna feel bad if like your blood plague's falling off? That's not really how blood pay, how how blood plays. Uh, and then for Frost, Frost Fever deals its damage. And okay, the first one is way more interesting. Actually, I don't even know if I like either of these. I think this one's kind of unless it changes the animations to be really cool. Uh. The, fr the second one of these, like, Wither Away seems like they had a decent idea for blood, and then they tried to apply it to Frost, and I feel like that's just really stinky. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess all it's doing is it's saying in both of them, regardless of the exterminate applying Frost Fever thing, it's just saying your, your dots deal double damage, even though you put them up again permanently. It's okay. And then, okay, whatever. I, I didn't like that that much. It's fine. Uh, Shadow Frost damage applies. Ah, perfect. Uh, this makes all of this make sense now. Shadow Frost damage applies double stacks to Reaper's Mark and quadruple stacks when it's a critical strike. Uh, rhyme, and then this makes Rhyme Empowered Howling Blast deal Shadow Frost damage and Blood Boil deal Shadow Frost damage. Okay, so this is much more synergistic with this. Um, and again, I wonder if Blood Boil will look different that it's Shadow Frost. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. And with these being so heavy theme based, I think they could do that, and I hope it looks really cool. Uh, okay, so that makes this make a lot more sense. Or this, I think. Where, where is it? No, no, no. Okay. Um, you're gonna you're gonna get stacks of this for sure, big time. A lot of it. I think Frost is going to get way higher stacks of this because like Frost just constantly does ticks of this damage, like way more than Blood does. Uh, okay, so this looks like it's the damage reduction node. 
I have no opinion on this from tanks. So when I make this defensive argument, just I, I often see tanks pu push back and they're like, no, tanking has never felt this good before. Right? I'm there with you. Cool. I'm not talking about tanks. Tanks are kind of their own thing. For healers and DPS players, the defensiveness in this game has gotten super out of control uh, through resilience and avoidance, and more importantly, through the class tree giving you just way too many defensive options. Everyone's seen what's happened to Mage this expansion, which is completely insane, but even classes like Mistweaver Monk went from having to choose between Dampen Harm, Diffuse Magic, and Healing Elixir to getting all of them and Fort Brew. That, that happening to the entire game, certainly some classes more than others, has vastly increased the problem to where Blizzard's only way of challenging you is trying to one-shot your character. And that's super annoying for players to just have to know whether they're going to get one-shot and press the button ahead of time versus a much more fluid, reactionary, peripheral vision view of your health bar and making decisions after you've taken damage in the past. The defensive power creep in this game is out of control. They need to nerf it. And I'm not going to mention this for the rest of the day because I'm going to look at 11 other trees. But just seeing classes gain more defensiveness is a is a is a huge like nuclear warning going off like there's just like an alarm going off that hopefully hopefully they're aware that this could be a big problem i'm gonna make sure to drink water i'm gonna forget okay that being said there is a defensive imbalance in the game at the moment uh there i would say last expansion it was more there were more than a few classes that were horrible, a bunch of classes that were average, and then a few classes that were great. Now it's weird where, like, a few classes are... More than a few classes are unbelievably OP, and they also happen to randomly be playing Verse, which, again, Verse is just such a huge problem in PvE. Uh, and then there's not nearly as many bad classes defensively. Like, like Red Paladins were one of the worst defensive classes in Shadowlands. They are significantly better now, right? I mean, Red Paladins are probably one of the tankiest classes in the game. Uh, Hunters were super squishy in Shadowlands. Hunters got major defensive buffs. Uh, I I don't like they're they're not nearly as strong as Red Paladins, but they are certainly just right within average defensiveness. If you think Hunters are squishy, you're wrong. Um, Shamans are still a little down in the mud. I, I just. I think there are, there is room to give classes defensiveness in the tree. I just think it's going to be a problem if they're just like, well, every class needs a defensive node, because that's just not true. Uh, and that's my last time I'm going to rant on this today, but you get my point. Uh, Death's Bargain. When you summon a damaging effect equal to 20% of your maximum health, I have 2,000 viewers on YouTube. That's insane. Uh, you instantly cast Death Pact at 50% effectiveness. may only occur once every two minutes. Uh, Death Pact stinks, so that's not that good, which I guess is good for my argument before. Uh, when a Reaper's Mark explodes, the cooldowns of this effect and Death Pact are reduced by five seconds. Okay, so I'm assuming you're going to instantly cast it regardless of whether it's on cooldown or not. It's just going to go off. And it's also, like, not going to happen when you're low HP. It could happen even from 100 to 75, so it could be completely useless. This could actually be bad. Like, you could take a big hit of damage and then Death Pact casts, which gives you, like, a healing absorb. And then you actually... <laughs> and then, like, now you're in trouble. <laughs> um, anyways, let's read the next one. Uh, each rune spent uh, reduces the magic damage you take by 2%. And each rune generated reduces the physical damage you take by 2% for 5 seconds. Sec okay, so you're just going to play that 100%. I mean, that's 10 times better than than the other one. Uh, you, you need to buff Death's Bargain a lot to compete with the second one. That's, I mean, infinitely fucking better. Uh, also, insane? I'm trying to... Th mm, it's not insane. You probably are going to be rolling around with an average of like... Uh, maybe like 6% magic DR. Something like that. 4 to 6%, which is totally fair. Um, and way better than Death's Bargain. I would, I would say to look at Death's Bargain again. That, that choice node isn't actually a choice. Like, like the way you need to look at this is like Rune Carve Plates is like passive defensiveness. But in most scenarios, Death's This may be a PvP thing, but Death's Bargain is also kind of that. It's just significantly worse. Like... 
you getting a 50% effectiveness death pact is not a massive thing that's going to be game changing. It's going to be super random. Uh, Reaper's Mark exploding is not happening all the time, right? It's a 30 second cooldown or it's something that can chain. Um, so that, that just has to be made better. It must be a PvP thing. I don't know. Either way. Uh, next choice. Reduces the cooldown of Lichborn and Raise Dead by 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, when an enemy deals direct damage to your AMS, their cast speed is... Okay, this is a... Uh... What? I mean, even for PvP, Expelling Shield has to be dookie, right? I mean, that's... What's going on here? Uh, I mean, so you just take the first one 1,000% 1, of the time. I mean, I guess they wanted to give you... This is very clear. Like, I, I've heard a lot of comments from PvPers. Well, not a lot, because I barely hear anything from PvPers. But they're like, Hero Talons seem much more PvE-focused with, like, a random node that makes sense for PvP. And that makes sense. I mean, I think most of the game is PvE-focused with, like, a few things for PvP. That's how it's been for a long time. Uh, but, so this one, I guess, is they're trying to throw some PvP thing. But I'm pretty sure PvPers would even want the first thing. Um... All right, whatever. Okay, cool. So we're done with this, and then we have Exterminate. I still think my initial... Uh, you know what? Let's let's rank all of these at the end. Because I need to kind of get context, because seeing how all the other ones are gives a lot more context. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait. That's actually insane. How come up? literally a third of my viewers are on YouTube? That's crazy. First YouTube stream, doing pretty good. Randomly have 2,500 viewers. Uh, okay. Shout out YouTube. Uh, moving on. To the last Death Knight tree, we have now officially seen all three Death Knight trees. We've seen Sand Lane, Deathbringer, and Rider of the Apocalypse. Rider of the Apocalypse won the, uh, the thing we did before any of these got released, which is what are the coolest names, and Rider of the Apocalypse was definitely the best. This was... I mean, this is just an amazing thing. I've already heard about the first part, uh, but let's get into it. Spending runes has a chance to call forth the aid of a horseman for 10 seconds. Mograin will cast Death and Decay at his location that follows his position. Okay, I wonder if your talents that are needed... Oh, check the dev notes. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Um, I wonder if your abilities that require you being in a D&D &D will work off of his D&D. &D. Oh, you guys are saying that's what the dev note is about. I love memes. Let me read this. Dev note. While not directly related to Rider of the Apocalypse Tree, we both know that Sand Lane and Rider Trees have talents to interact with Death and Decay, and we'd like to avoid those talents draw too much of the player's focus of feedback as we have some plans to alleviate the pressure of staying with... Oh, what a dub. What a dub. They're saying, hey guys, just letting you know, we under we hear your feedback that having to be in your D&D &D sucks. So, uh, we have no nothing to reveal right here at this moment, but I can say we have plan plans to change how Cleaving Strikes functions the more within. Alright, so if you guys don't know, Cleaving Strikes is a thing in their class tree that makes their abilities... Basically, you just have to be in your D&D &D at all times. There's also like some thing where you gain haste while in it. So there's other things to change besides cleaving strikes, but uh, but this also I know we're already done with all the paladin trees, but it needs to be mentioned. Uh, there's another class in the game where it's mastery and DKs complain about having to play in their D and D. Paladins have to play in their consecrate, which is smaller, and or at least to be smaller, it might be the same size now or bigger. There's significantly more power in consecrate than there is D and D. And just for everyone that plays this game, the play in your Consecrate gameplay is absolutely horrible. And I have trust that they'll fix it because there is no way they could not have heard the feedback about D&D &D without people every single time mentioning, yeah, Paladin is 10 times worse. Uh, so I'm glad they realized this. Uh, definitely also make Paladins not have... Playing in your Consecrate is, is horrible, horrible gameplay. All right. 
Guys, I know it doesn't use runes. I know it's up all the time, and it's not on a cooldown like D&D. That does not change the fact that it is absolutely horrible. If you kite out of it even slightly while you're doing the rest of your rotation, you're just like a piece of paper. It's really bad. You'll insta-die. It's so bad. Um, okay. Uh, here we go. Spending runes is a chance to call forth the aid. Okay, so cast D&D at his location that follows this position. With them making being in your D&D less valuable, it also makes Mograine not seem great. But either way... Uh, white main, cast un Undeath on your target, dealing Shadow Frost damage per stack every 3 seconds for 24 seconds. Each time it deals damage, it gains a stack, cannot be refreshed. Uh, and this is an RNG thing. So none of these look super powerful right now, so I imagine there's way more synergy and power later in the tree, or this is going to stink. Uh, cast Chains of Ice on your target, slowing their movement speed by 70%. Uh, and increasing the damage they take from you by 5% for 8 seconds. Okay, so a little bit of a buff. But, like, I don't know. You're barely going to even track that, right? And then while Nazgrim is active, you gave Apocalyptic Conquest, increasing your strength by 5%. So, basically, all of these are, like, you gain some, like, little niche utility thing besides Nazgrim. Plus, also, just some damage happens. Who knows how much Mograine's Death and Decay is. But, hopefully, it's tuned enough to where when you get Mograine, you're not pissed. Right? Because you're not getting... Uh, you know, you're not getting one of the cooler ones where you're gaining 5% damage, they take 5% more damage from you, or also you're giving them a dot. Uh, but maybe they could just make Mograine's Death and Decay own, and it also AoEs. So, like, Mograine might actually be the best one of all of these, right? Uh, depending on the scenario. Uh, these trees are hard to read and know exactly where to go because sometimes you need to read the next thing, the bottom thing immediately. It actually kind of looks like we might want to do that. Uh, let's look at that. Okay. Army of the Dead and Frostworm's Fury call upon all four horsemen to aid you for 20 seconds. So this is a frost on a holy tree. Uh, okay. So it makes your cooldowns... Well, okay. Frostworm's Fury is really interesting. Last time I checked... That's a talent, right? That's like a... I guess it's not hard to get. Do you play this a lot? That's the only thing I'm thinking of. So like it kind of it kind of shoehorns you into two talents almost if the horsemen are strong. That being said, we've talked about this before with tier sets. It's really not complicated to understand whether people like being shoehorned into talents or not. It's usually when that thing is is or isn't powerful enough, or if that ability is really fun. Frostworm's Fury is definitely a sick ability. Like, people, you like pressing Frostworm's Fury, definitely. Um, like, if Fro if they could have this all the time, they would, right? Um, but hopefully they make, uh, make Frostworm's Fury more uh, attainable or, like, powerful, so you feel like you want to take this all the time. But it is interesting. Maybe, maybe there's some talent tree differences coming as well, right? Like, for example, they could bake in Frostworm's Fury. Totally reasonable, right? So, um, we'll see how that works. Uh, going back, though. It's kind of weird because Unholy is like, always going to have army. I don't know. Uh, let's read the left side. Uh, okay, while outdoors, you are able to mount your Acheris Death Charger in combat. <laughs> Does that include in a raid? It does, right? Like, tendrils outside, you can mount. Outdoors is outdoors. Uh, outdoors and indoors is usually the difference between whether you can mount or not, and there are plenty of raids that are outdoors. Probably not an instanced combat. Well, wait, let's read the rest of these then. So, call upon your Death Charger. Active ability... Okay, Death Charge re replaces Death's Advance. Call upon your Death Charger to break free of movement and parent effects. Wow, okay, so it turns Death's Advance into, a, into like, a snare break. Would have been extremely relevant, this expansion, uh, on, on Broodkeeper and Tendril. Uh, for 10 seconds, while upon your Death Charger, your movement... Uh, while upon your death charger, your movement speed is increased by 100%. You cannot be slowed. You are immune to force movement. It turns death's advance into pally. It turns death's advance into paladin's horse, plus also breaks roots and snares and shit. So they hit the nail on the head here with fantasy, big time. I'm really interested. I, I feel like people... Yeah, freedom plus pally horse and is 
a lot longer yeah this is interesting this is gonna make De uh, death knight's mobility a lot better death knights are weird like in straight line mobility they're considered one of the slowest classes in the game but in reality at least in raid they're actually one of the best movement classes uh because death's advance is just completely absurd in raid combat um and it's kind of like mages right like mages in a straight line are actually slower than like almost every class in the game but when used correctly their movement in a raid fight is fucking crazy right uh maybe maybe comparing mages to death knights is a little egregious but you get my point um awesome theme i'm really interested to see how on a paler horse works in instanced outdoor combat i just think that's super fun and either way even if this choice is just you take death charge in any real combat and when you're world questing or when you're leveling you take on a paler horse i still think that's okay like a lot of choice nodes aren't actually don't have the choice you think and i think that's accomplishing that's accomplishing cool theme while also giving you two things that are unique in different parts of the games even if it's binary at which one you take I think that's an interesting look at a choice node too if it works that way is it only a mount or is it fight on a mount a uh, good question but i think with the rider of the apocalypse you have to be fighting on your mount right i mean that's the whole bit i'm assuming attacking dismounts you yeah maybe it would be super yeah maybe you're right Okay, moving on. Uh, when your diseases deal damage to an enemy affected by undeath, which is the white main dot, uh, it gains another stack. Additionally, when it deals damage, it infects a nearby enemy. Oh, that makes this way better. Okay, so white main's just an absolute beast. So far, white main is winning the four horsemen challenge of being way better than the other three. Let's see if that continues. Uh... The damage of your diseases, Frost Strike and Death Coil, are increased by 15%. Okay, whatever. Let's read the middle. Uh, your damage is increased by 5% while you gain the benefits of your D&D. Your damage is increased by 5% and you, just in general, right? And you gain the benefits of your D&D while inside Mograine's D&D. Okay, so this is just straight up you gain 5% damage. Kind of interesting. They're giving you, like, the benefits of being in your D&D while also dev noting and saying that we want to remove that interaction it's fine because those interactions still exist and and honestly i'm not completely i love playing dk i'm not completely against there being some value in being in your DD. it's just feels really bad when a ton of your value comes from it and you feel like shit if you're outside of it and it makes you feel limited but if it's like oh you get a small bonus when you're in it i think that's totally fine like, i think right now after they change this which they said they are uh like getting five percent haste from being in it is totally reasonable where cleaving strikes kind of isn't right uh so that's fine whatever cool uh wait so your damage is increased by five percent and you gain okay so never mind you have to be in his death and decay to get the five percent damage increase i was wrong about that i read that as like a comma your damage is increased by 5%, comma, and you gain the benefits. It's actually just only all of this applies when you're in Mograine's. That actually kind of makes sense. I feel like without that, Mograine's Death and Decay would have to be insane for it to not suck when you get Mograine. So this may, this this kind of has to exist. Uh, but it does follow you, so that's good. Uh, might not even have to think about that. I'm actually interested to see how these play in combat. Imagine that it doesn't follow you and he's constant. If you're kiting mobs, like... Uh, here, if you're kiting mobs, right, this is you, and then, like, here's all the mobs following you, and here's here's Mograine. Kind of looks like he's dabbing, right? And then you're, you're kiting. I could also see it being like this. Like, you're moving this way with the mobs, and he's, like, just behind the whole pack. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see, but... Uh, so, if an enemy dies while Nazgrim is active, the strength of Apocalyptic... That's the buff, the strength buff. The strength of Apocalyptic Conquest is increased by 3%. Additionally, each rune you spend increases its value by 1%. 
Whoo! How long's the buff? While Nazgrim is active. I mean, he's active for 20 seconds when you press Apocalypse Now. So it's going to gain that kind of a uh, pillar of frost talent that like gives you more strength for all the things you're doing it's gonna kind of feel like that for unholy or frost for 20 or 10 seconds depending on the scenario and it's gonna feel a little rampy and it's gonna feel i mean this is just insane for like your cooldown window like your cooldowns are gonna feel really really good for both except it's weird it's again frostworm's fury just a really interesting button to tie this to but um, I don't know what other choice they would have. Like, if you did it to Pillar of Frost, for example, it's just too often. Right? It's just, you just, you can't have it up that much. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, if an enemy dies, yeah, okay, read that. Uh, choice node. Every 50 runic power you spend extends the duration of the horseman's aid in combat by one second up to five. Like that. Uh, other than maybe having to, like, hold off, I don't know. Eh, that's fine. It's okay. Uh, when you have two or more horsemen aiding you, your runic power spending ability is still 20% increased damage and have a 10% chance to refund a rune. Bro, and these horsemen are going to be kind of popping out all the time, right? I mean, for this to work like this. Like, I actually really like this. I think having their power being relatively low, but you spawning a lot of them is a way better option than them being insanely OP individually and then it really mattering if you got lucky to spawn them. Like, spawning them all the time not only helps theme, but they're adding to... They're giving you things for, like, when a few or more are out, you're, like, way more powerful, and they're actually going to make that happen. It depends on the chance, but very clearly, the way that this is designed is lending you more towards... You're going to get these to spawn pretty frequently for a lot of these other things to make sense. It probably cycles. Oh yeah, true. So the war, so warlocks have the closest thing to this. I forget the name of it. Is it uh, D Diabolist? They have one very similar to this, and they do they do actually rotate. It's not random. Uh, but I'm not speaking about that when I say randomness. The randomness I mean is the proc chance for you to get any of them, kind of thing. Does this mean that you'll have twenty percent more damage on breath? That's very insane, if that's true. And imagine if every tick of breath has a 10% chance to it to give you a rune back. That sounds maybe a little too crazy. Uh, okay, either way. Infinite breath. The whole, like, there's going to be infinite breath is... Uh, what, it's, like, it's like that astronaut meme, right? The, like, always has been thing. Like, literally every patch, you find a way to have infinite breath if you play properly. Which is also part of the problem. Doing a line? <laughs> that was the funniest. Bro, I'm eating... I'm eating... Do you really think? I was like... Man, this four horsemen shit is sick. Fucking just, just and just rail a line. That'd be insane. That'd be so fucking hype. Okay. Um. Little do you know, I actually do have it down there. I just, I have, I only have this bowl of pasta as a cover up. Okay. While at your aid, the horsemen will eventually cast. Or will occasionally cast anti-magic shell on you and themselves at 80% effectiveness. What the fuck? What the fuck? That is insane. I mean, so we're, we're guessing a lot here. We don't know how often horsemen are going to spawn, except it's kind of obvious it'll be a decent amount. And then we also don't know how often they're going to cast AMS on you, but that is insane. I think this is not going to go live. I actually think they're going to nerf that. I think that is the most broken defensive thing I've seen on any tree. So for you guys who maybe haven't played in a while or watching this, uh, somehow randomly 3,000 viewers on YouTube right now, um, AMS is often misunderstood as being super OP defensively because it's just a magic absorb. It's OP because it functions as an immunity while it is up. 
if a lot of dots are trying to apply to you or whatever. One of the first things we try when testing or pulling any boss for the first time is what can AMS immune? And sometimes it's so insane that you sack them. And it also gives you back resources too. Holy moly, that is good. That is so good. And 80% is a huge number. <laughs> that is, uh, that's so strong. Uh, and then when, and then Pact of the Apocalypse, when you take damage, 5% of the damage is redirected to each active horseman. Wow. So, I mean, that's insane too. I mean, even if throughout the fight, when you don't have your cooldowns up, this is like a 5 to 10% passive. Guys, passive DRs are so OP in this game. Currently, with how this game is made, where everyone has crazy defenses, we're not doing the whole tangent again, but like, you can look on Warcraft Logs death statistics. There are classes when played at the highest level that are more tanky than passive defensiveness classes because really good players know when to use those buttons. But that's extremely difficult. When you look, especially lower percentile stuff, you look at death logs. The classes that just passively have defensiveness are, are 10 times better because this game is just so gibby now that you need to be so proactive. I'm not gonna, I, I, I promised you I wouldn't do the whole tangent again. And I think stuff like this is really cool, but I just really think the overall defensiveness in this game is a massive problem. Just gonna leave it at that. Uh, this is so good though. And cool. And the first one is like, I like the first one a lot more because they're both OP, but the first one will like change decisions you make because like you get AMS and like, you'll just randomly immune stuff and be like, Oh, that was sick. Fuck. Yeah. Horseman. Fuck. Yeah. Mograin. Thanks for the AMS buddy. Uh, Okay, when you obliterate or scourge strike a target affected by Trollbane's Chains of Ice, uh, it shatters, dealing Shadow Frost damage to nearby enemies and slows them by 40% for 4 seconds. Okay, so this is needed because Chains of Ice was looking like by far the weakest one of these, even just on paper. And then obviously we've already read Nazgrim, White Mains, and Mograine's node to like make each one better, right? But this this needed to happen. Um, and I still think it depends on what the number is here. This could either be like the best one to get an AOE, even though I think it's probably just going to rotate through them. Uh, but I could also still see it being a bit weaker than other stuff. It slows them, but you think it will affect bosses? Uh, bosses are universally not affected by slows, yeah. Um, also, I could see this being really annoying. Can you imagine like, there's like some big slowable mob and you're in Sanguine and then like you just chain your frosty k just chains of ices it from his guy <laughs> um but also let's just hope sanguine doesn't exist next expansion right um the cooldown of your horn of winter on holy blight or sorry the cooldown of your horn of winter and unholy blight are reduced by 15 seconds and dnd &D is reduced by 10 seconds i don't really know how i feel about this tree so theme they knocked it out of the fucking park. They hit the longest home run in the history of baseball. Like, they... They kind of nailed the theme. They nailed the cooldown alignment. But, like, half of these nodes... In which other classes are gaining some kind of value... They're just... Four of these nodes are just making... These... Uh, horsemen... Actually relevant. You know? Uh, the defensive nodes are fucking cracked. I, I think... I'm not kidding. I think both of these choice nodes... So, not just the best one you can choose, but both of them are better than every other class's defensive node that has been shown so far. By by a lot. No, nah, not by a lot. There's... Druid one's good. This, this is insane. Like, this is super, super insane. And DK's already not squishy. Um... But I think they're cool enough to keep. I just, I kind of worry. You guys know my bit about defensives. Uh, I like, I really, so what are aspects of this I like? Theme is good. The cooldown, how it's going to feel in cooldowns. The, the death advance becoming a horse thing is sick. The runic power mattering to spend it to increase their uh, time in combat. 
Um, my only thing is, like, I don't want this to feel bad when you, like, don't have runic power when one is out kind of thing, like, outside of your CDs, but, like, during the random procs. I almost wish it was, like, a combination of runic power and rune spent, so it was, like, you were just doing your normal rotation and they're out longer, but then, like, you wouldn't feel as good from spending that runic power when they're out. Um... Dude, this node is insane. So, um, I might be looking at this wrong. When you take damage, 5% of the damage is redirected to each active horseman. So, it's not actually multiplying by the amount of horsemen that are out, right? It's just a 5% DR pretty much all the time. That's still better than, like, every node, though. Like... A 5% passive DR is insane. I mean, it, it, it might be, but I could see it being split. Uh, yeah. Even, even if this is just 5% ever, it's going to be basically permanent, and it's super insane. What do you guys think, chat? Like, when we rated this stuff before, it was like... Theme really mattered, absolutely. Gameplay matters. The, the, I, I love this tree. The only thing that holds me back is the fact that they had to spend four of these nodes making these guys do something that they should be doing in the first place. Like, they had an idea for Mograine and White Mane and Trollbane, like, already. And then they were like, okay, we're just going to give you the base level of this here, and then, like, we're going to spend half of this tree just making them do their thing. Uh... Now, I'm not... Keep in mind, if you're new to watching these, we're not exclusively talking about power. Like, this is, a. Uh, I don't know. We're, like, power doesn't really matter as much. It's more like design. And also, Frostworm's Fury... I mean, you're going to have to play Frostworm's Fury guaranteed with this. And I just... I don't play Frost enough right now to know what that does to your build. And again... We're, we're doing something really dangerous, which is trying to apply hero talents to a version of these spec trees that we don't know. There is an extremely high slash almost guaranteed chance that, like, basically every tree that didn't get recently reworked in Dragonflight is going to look very different in the War Within. Maybe Frostworm's Fury is more accessible. If they're building it into part of your kit, like, I'm assuming they're going to have it not be just, like, two capstone things gone, the whole expansion. So maybe we'll just leave that alone for now. Am I, am I dooming too much on it? Do you guys see where I'm coming from? I'm not dooming. I, I'm, I'm saying this is a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10. That, that's my that's my take. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm saying that, like, I think just saying this is a straight 10, like, I, I think, personally, my opinion, it would be a, a stretch to compare this to Scale Commander and Frostfire Mage. Where those are, like, 10s, right? Like, the whole tree is a 10, right? Like, they had an idea, and then every single node built on that. I think they spent too many of these nodes explaining to you what this is going to do in the first place. That That's... that's Maybe I'm being... And I want to call this a 10. This is this is my favorite name. And maybe maybe I'm... Right. Hopefully, I'm, I'm making some good sense here, but... But, man, but, man, they're they're making you spawn the four horsemen in combat. Am I, am I looking too far past how cool that is? And, I mean, if you're talking bat chest value, like... People coming back to the game and, like, bat-chesting about... I mean, this is just... Th there's no higher level of this than, like, you're going to be one of the... You're the goddamn fifth horseman. All right, this thing's sick. You're right. You're right. You're right. I I'm being... I'm being... Uh, what, what, what did Suki used to tell me? When we would be in traffic and, like, someone would, uh like, cut her off and she'd be like, Fuck you! To the guy in traffic. And then, and then I'd be like, I don't know, maybe he has, like, a... Maybe he, like, is having a bad day, or he's he's late for something important or something. And then she was like, yeah, I don't really want you to be so evolved. I really just want you to tell that guy, fuck you, with me. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. So now, when, if you pass someone in the car, you're just like, fuck you. If they say fuck you, you say fuck you, right? And you need to not be... Maybe I'm trying to be too evolved with, with my... With my, uh... With my stuff with the tree here. Okay. All right. First look at Demon Hunter. 
Oh, also, before we get off here, I know I didn't, like, rate them yet. I'm going to do that at the end of the stream. I think DKs are doing pretty good. You're not Paladin tier where Ret Pal or Ret Paladin tier where your two options are both very different and completely sick. Um, DKs are probably going to end up with like a super insane, a really cool, and a kind of bad. So like it's like upper mid tier like so far compared to the other classes that have had them all released. It's not Paladin tier. Um, which is good. A lot of demon, a lot of DK players. Okay, uh, Demon Hunter. So Aldrachi Reaver. My main issue with Aldrachi or with Demon Hunters is, like, Demon Hunter players are so lore based, right? Like, or not lore based, but like they're so. What's the word? Like, they're so into playing Demon Hunter. Like, like they probably wear blindfolds around their house. Like they fucking love this shit, you know. Um. You couldn't come up with something better than Aldrachi Reaver or Felsguard. Like, you couldn't come up with some, like, line that Illidan said one time that was just sick. Like, I feel like Demon Hunters would have been better served by having some super epic names. That's all I'm saying. Like, the Betrayer. Like, holy moly, you know? Okay. All right. Uh, Demon Hunter, the Aldrachi Reaver. This is for Havoc and Vengeance, just like the other tree. There's only two. Uh, let's check it out. First look, Art of the Glaive, consuming three or uh, three soul fragments for Havoc or 20 for Vengeance, allows you to cast Reaver's Glaive. It'll replace Throw Glaive, okay. So you're not going to have to have like a new keybind for it. Also kind of interesting to think about with the way that Havoc plays right now, but I'm assuming that's going to be gone. Uh, throw a Glaive enhanced, and it also kind of pins you into that side of your tree. Like when this current tier set is gone... It's more of a choice for Havoc to, like, play these Throw Glaive talents, right? And this is kind of shoehorning you into that. And I wonder if the Demon Hunter talents, once we see both of them, are going to be so basic where it's like, okay, well, Havoc Demon Hunters, you have two choices. We're giving you, like, a Throw Glaive-centric one where you take the Throw Glaive talents and another one where it's about, like, being in Demon Form or something like that. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, throw a glaive enhanced with the essence of consumed souls, dealing physical damage and ricocheting to two additional targets for additional damage replaces throw glaive. So it's gonna hit five targets, something like that. Uh, begins a well or even more, right? Doesn't it already have something that I don't know? Uh, begins a well practiced pr pattern of glaive work, enhancing your next chaos strike and blade dance. Uh, fracture, shear, and soul cleave. Okay, so it's gonna enhance your next button. Okay. Uh, Chaos Strike, Fracture, and Shear apply Reaver's Mark, which causes the target to take 15% increased damage for 5 seconds. And Blade Dance and Soul Cleave deal 3 additional Glaive Slashes to nearby enemies for additional damage. Okay, so you have, like, kind of a choice, right? Do you want to buff your damage upcoming or... Okay, so this is already really cool if... There are scenarios that are correct for both, right? It's, I think, boring if it pre if you press either one and it doesn't matter. Oh, it enhances both. So no matter what, your next Chaos Strike and your next Blade Dance are both going to do that. So you'd want to press Chaos Strike first, right? Always. Uh, okay, we got a spam going in chat. Let's check this out. Max, something to remember is that Eldrachi Reavers are liter are literally a military order who fought so tooth and nail to defend their world against the Legion that literally Sargeras had to come down and kill them all. He literally had to try to beat their greatest champion. The tank artifact is from that champion. The Eldrachi are fucking sick and you need to put some respect on their... Okay, shit, my bad. I, did I didn't know it was like that. Okay, I okay so Eldrachi are insane. I my bad, my bad. Holy moly. I'm just picturing the person who typed that is like in their room in the pitch dark, by the way, with like maybe some like very Burning Crusade green moonlighting and a Naruto headband or or some kind of blindfold. But that goes hard because you called me an idiot and you were right, you know? Uh. Okay, so here we go. So we're doing that. Okay, so it's just going to buff your buttons. There's no choice involved, so that's fine. Uh, let's read in some direction. I'm going to avoid all these choice notes because I'm feeling weird. While enhanced, Chaos Strike and Soul Cleave deal 30% more damage. Okay. 
While Reaver's Mark is on your target, melee attacks have a chance to strike with an additional Glaive Slash uh, uh, for damage. Oh, and Shatter a Soul. That's actually interesting. Oh, uh, wait. What is Reaver's Mark? Did I miss him? Oh, that's... Oh, that's the... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the damage buff. Five second thing. Got it. Uh, so during the five seconds, melee attacks have a chance to strike for an additional thing and shatter a soul. Super good. I wonder... That's probably really high uptime for that to matter. Uh, but that could be good for both Vengeance and Havoc. Sounds good. Consuming a soul fragment causes your next Chaos Strike, Fracture, or Shear to deal bonus damage. But you're going to be getting a lot more soul fragments with this. Let's read the bottom. After consuming both empowerments, gain Thrill of the Fight causing your increasing your attack speed uh by five seconds and causing your next ability to deal 30 percent increased damage and healing okay i'm gonna need to be convinced and so far this is this is mid for me I, I mean this is certainly not insane okay well it makes it seem a lot better because apparently aldrachi reavers are fucking warlords but whatever uh so far it's looking pretty mid let's keep going uh, Ventral Retreat can be cast a second time within three seconds. Ooh. Okay, so that's fun. And Ventral Retreat resets the cooldown. Does that mean that... I don't even know where this talent is that you always take. No, is it just built in? Is it just baked in? That's... That's... That's almost ridiculous. Resources. I... Are, are you gonna... Yeah, I know I know initiative, yeah. The, or it's below initiative for the thing, yeah, down here. Are you gonna have any realistic way to actually spend that Fury, though? That, that almost sounds... The initiative part of it's good. Does that actually sound fun to play with? Dude, you would need to have, like, just... Oh, Fel Barrage would make that excellent. Yeah, Fel Barrage is, like, the only thing that would make that feel good, though. You guys know my my pet peeve. Overcapping resources drives me insane. When you are properly playing the game and capping resources, specs that do that drive me crazy. Ventral Retreat resetting the cooldown of Fellblade, on the other hand, also makes things just a little bit more consistent too. Like, that sounds bad because Fellblades, you can kind of just play around having a Fellblade, but it, it does just kind of feel nice, you know? Also, that's just a lot of Ventral Retreating. So, I mean, in a way, you could look at it like this. Like, this choice node was designed for, like, they basically were like, Ventral Tree can be cast a second time within three seconds. Then someone at the office was like, hey, so a lot of people hate the movement stuff, and we've done a good job so far of making sure that there's no movement builds that are pretty relevant. Can we give a choice node here for them? And they're like, all right, we'll give them Fellblade every time so they can always go right back to the boss. Um, maybe something like that. Uh, okay, so Fellblade surrounds you with a Blade Ward, reducing physical damage by 10% for 5 seconds. Okay, so making Fellblade a lot more relevant for Vengeance. And then the other one I'm assuming is Havoc. Consuming a Soul Fragment also heals you for an additional 15% over time. That's... Insanity for Vengeance, right? That's like... That's insane. Like, it's, it's going to do a lot of overhealing, but it's also going to... That's going to be insanely value. <laughs> that sounds really strong. But it doesn't seem like there's a really good Havoc note here. I mean, like, Incorruptible Spirit is fine for Havoc, I guess. Uh, And there's also certain raid fights where Army Unto Yourself and Dungeon Bosses that are excellent, right? Like, uh, if you guys have played Demon Hunter and High Mythic Plus this season, you're like, oh, my class is super tanky. It takes all this passive reduced damage and I leech all the time. But then you get to a high enough... <laughs> dungeon and you're like oh i don't really have enough buttons here and then it's sanguine week and someone's trying to get you to take uh someone's trying to get you to take mortal dance and you're just like well i kind of need deflecting dance to even kind of live this boss yelling at me every 10 seconds and one-shotting my whole health bar right and then like having 10 percent fizzy r in multiple scenarios would actually be quite good if you ever as a havoc demon hunter to get enough points, spec out of, uh, man, where is it? It's somewhere down here. It's the thing where you get armor, this infernal armor, to get, uh, like, Sigil of Misery plus Imprison and, uh, Charred Warblades. If you do those dungeons that have that high fizz damage, like, you'll notice not having infernal armor and die. Um, 
So that's also not bad. I, I think this could just be more... I think Incorruptible Spirit could be more interesting for Havoc for me. But also you're just going to be getting so many more Soul Fragments as Havoc. So it's kind of just like more passive healing. I don't know. I don't, what do you guys think? I, I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, each successive... Just compare that to like 5% DR, which is Turbo Broken. Or like the AMS thing. Like, I don't know. Demon Hunters and DKs are probably similarly tanky. Uh, each successive enhanced ability deals 10% increased damage, and the effect of the second enhancement is increased by... What? Each successive enhanced ability... So... So you're... I mean, you... They already want you to press Chaos Strike and then Blade Dance, but this is just going to make that second ability do 100% more and then 10, I guess. So it's just like, I mean, that Blade Dance is just going to pipe. Or or I guess you could picture it as a three-button combo. It's like Throw Glaive, Chaos Strike, and then Blade Dance. Three, not just two. But then I guess... this So it's kind of making you want to Blade Dance second? It's four buttons because of the capstone. After consuming both empowerments, gain thrill of fight, increasing your attack speed, and causing your next ability to deal 30... Oh, so it is four. But then, why is it specifically the second? I mean, if this is just you do this normally, you press Throw Glaive, you press Chaos Strike, you press Blade, blade Dance, and then that correctly... That's actually Blade Dance as the second enhancement, then that would feel good. You can choose Chaos Strike second for a 30% damage buff. <laughs> mm. But the third will be 110. Let's, uh, let's play with this and see if this makes more sense. It seems a little confusing right now. And also, like, even... There's a few ways I think this, I think this works. It'd be really hard to tell without actually playing it. But both of them seem kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, left side. Reaver's Glaive generates 20 Fury. So pressing Throw Glaive generates Fury. Or is that just going to mitigate the cost of Fury to do the thing? It'll probably... Uh, it replaces it, but it doesn't necessarily say that it's going to have the same cost necessarily. So I guess it's just... It makes Throw Glaive not only start that combo, but becomes a generator. Um, and the other one is just AoE... Throw Glaive deals damage to enemies near its initial target. This is something where the solution is going to be simming it. Um, but, well, I mean, it's also a single target versus AoE thing. But, I mean, you could also make the argument that, like, even in AoE, you would take the first one, depending on the scenario, especially with Pryo. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the second enhanced ability in a pattern shatters an additional soul fragment. Okay. And casting... An enhanced ability. Oh, okay. That, this, wherever this tree was just going to go, uh, it just went up, uh, I don't know how many steps, but a few. So, I can tell you I played a lot of Havoc this patch, and the whole bit of your hunt being reduced by casting Throw Glaive or whatever, I was like, this is so good. You guys have heard my tangents where I'm like, hey, man, if you have a good tier set and then you have some stinky class tree points, bake it in. That's that's the glory of these tier sets or these these spec trees is like when something is great in tier sets, which is you getting a chance to innovate every patch, you can keep it. And I can tell you the current Havoc tier set is so fun to play. Getting the hunt reduced is so fun. Um... And having that be gone forever would feel really bad, especially if they're going to do something throw glaive based. And then right, right at the end, right at the buzzer, Mike Breen scream and bang. They they throw in some hunt CDR as well. Okay. Uh. That's gonna feel good. Okay, this just got way better. I still, I still am. Really happy they kept in Hunt CDR ability or having that option. And this really does kind of... We haven't seen Felsguard yet, but I really wonder if, like, Felsguard or is going to have just nothing to do with... Like, throw, this is the Throw Glaive tree, and the other one is something... It's going to have to relate to both having Vengeance. Maybe it's meta-related. It's, like, big meta. Or... 
It can't be the hunt related. Like I, I think this is like the one that has to do with the hunt. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's I beam fell dev related. Um Immel or it could be Immel aura related, yeah. But I mean like Immel or yeah, I mean there's there's the Immel aura stuff in both trees, yeah. Uh I think they could have done better with a throw glaive tree. I don't know. Am I am I being like I'm just not wowed by this. It looks like it might be fun to play, but there's no wow factor on the theme. It seems like it'll be fine. It just it just seems like it was about to be like below mid, and then this made it mid or slightly above because of the gameplay. I don't know. This this would be mid for me. I'm, this is my opinion. I think I think I think this is mid. It's not bad. It's not bad. There's bad. There's bad stuff, but that's not bad. All right, we have the last druid ability. Let me, let me take a uh, drink of W. Uh, okay, so I think there's a lot riding on this tree. We noticed this with uh, Moonkins. When Moonkins got introduced to their Keeper of the Grove thing, if you were to ignore theme entirely... Keeper of the Grove's profile, and if you ignore the fact that you're pressing treants to gain the power and and just the overall theme, it's going to be strong. Um, And, you know, that's just kind of a casualty of sharing a tree with Resto. And then you knew that because Guardian had... Uh, what are they called? Arcane-ish abilities? Solar? Not solar. Opposite of solar. I don't know. They had like like the Moonfire stuff, right? You knew that the Moonkins were going to get the flavor they wanted. Lunar, yeah. They were going to get the fl the flavor they wanted from, from the Guardian side, and they did. Like, I actually think the gameplay, personally, the gameplay of Keeper of the Grove is better than Elune's Chosen. Elune's Chosen just totally nails the theme for Moonkins, and Keeper of the Grove totally misses. Not to mention that Resto Druids are also kind of at odds with the new design of Resto Druid of we're just spawning trees now kind of thing. Uh, so, I don't know. And then and then Druids kind of had the same thing. Like, Druids have gotten... Feral Druids got their tree that combined with Resto. And it looked really good for, like, Mythic Plus Resto players because it was trying to combine the aspects of Cat Weaving and also being a healer. Even though JB, the ultimate... Cat weaving druid was like, this is mid, <laughs> I think. Um, so, druid, there's a lot of stuff on druid of the claw. I have been a bleed fan forever. I've actually randomly have probably played ferals where I got my start. I played more feral. I played feral all day every day during Siege of Orgrimmar and a little before that, a couple years before that. And it's because all the power was in their bleeds. So I'm looking for Druid of the Claw, which is, you know, Guardians have had one choice so far, which goes all the way into their Lunar side, right? They have an entire part of their spec tree or a bunch of talents that are, like, Lunar-related, and this one goes that, that, down that side. Guess what's the opposite side? Everything that's purely bleed-based, and I think Ferals, my opinion, having more power put into their bleeds is... A good thing for the spec. I actually just kind of a side note. I wish all the classes in this game that were built off of dots, so like you know, Feral and then all of the caster wizard daughters. I wish they brought dots back. Like I I wish the classes that were built around dots were just I the dots were the part of the spec that was sick. And it used to be like that, and they've nerfed them, and I know why they nerfed them. Because dots are insanely hard to tune. But, like, I don't know. Uh, they kind of just play so similar now. Like, they turned Feral Druid for so many years into just, like, an Assassination Rogue. And Assassination Rogue is also not really about its dots. It's like, they made Rake uh, Garrote. They made Rip Rupture. And then they made Ferocious Bite Eviscerate. And outside of a couple of things in their toolkit, they were basically just, like spamming their finishers but like the whole point should be their dots um so maybe i'm asking for too much but i'm hoping from this druid of the claw tree to see a little bit more emphasis in their multi-dot gameplay i kind of doubt it though because 
their other one they got so far, uh, what was it called? Uh, Wild Stalker. Wild Stalker had a bunch of dot stuff in the form of those little vines or whatever, but I, I think that was kind of kind of weird. Uh, let's see. Uh, Matt, <laughs> it's just called Massive Attack. Okay. Before I read any of this, and it might stink, this, there has never been something, uh, you guys have heard me so far today. Like, you can read the first thing, and you can tell if it's super insane or really bad. I've never been more confused. This could be the most ass thing of all time, or it could just be fucking insane. Like, they just have their first thing is called Massive Attack. Your auto attacks have a chance to make your next ferocious bite or maul become Massive Attack. I hope they never change that name. Holy moly. Uh, finishing move that slashes your target in a wide arc, dealing physical damage per combo point to your target and consuming... Well, it has to hit other enemies because it's in a wide arc, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, consuming up to 25 additional energy and to increase... Okay, so it's just Ferocious Bite that AoEs. Hits all other enemies in front of you for reduced... It, it probably hits harder than Ferocious Bite and also AoEs. I have not played Feral this expansion, but just quick question. As a baseline, Feral Druids, is having one out of four Ferocious Bites do massive AoE, would that feel good in in AoE, for example? Like, are you... Like, just... Now, keep in mind, you're not already Ferocious Biting. You have to keep in mind that, like, you're going to have your Thrash up. You're going to have AoE ripped everything already. And then now, it's just your Ferocious Bite two times a pack is going to light up and do a ton of AoE damage. Does that feel bad or good? I want a real AoE spender, please. Uh, I would... I... Maybe a conversation for another day, but I'd be careful what you ask for. The classes that are the most problematic in this game's right in this game for the last couple years actually are the classes where they've built in binary decisions on whether you're spending a finisher to AoE or single target. Those classes are super one-dimensional and never usually never come close to classes that can do both at the same time by having more nuanced design. Uh that like that was Rhett's problem for years. Uh, Rhett is currently super, super well-tuned, but I think in the future they'll still suffer from that. Like, literally just having to choose Divine Storm or Templar's Verdict has limited them so much. Uh, so be careful what you ask for. Um, let's see. Uh, and then Guardian, you'll press Maul and it will just AoE, which is kind of weird because they already have a button that's Maul, but just AoEs. Um, dealing physical damage to enemies in front of you. I, for Guardian, I find this even weirder. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Frenzied Regen increases your max health by 10% just during the duration of Frenzied Regen. Okay. Frenzy, your maximum energy and rage are increased. Okay. Uh, Iron Fur and Frenzied Regen persist in cat form. Wait. Okay, Feral and Guard. Iron Fur and Frenzied Regen persist in cat form, but you can't cast them in cat form. When transitioning from bear to cat form, you retain 80% of your bear form armor and health for 6 seconds. Oh, this is so funny. For 6 seconds after entering bear form, you heal for 10% of damage taken over 8 seconds. Uh, the reason why I find this funny is most people or most druid players are, have been moonkins or at least the most loud ones. And they've been having to go bear to live things for so long. Feral's less often. But I just find it so funny that they actually leaned into that for Feral and gave them some kind of lasting mitigation that would have helped Moonkins feel less ass in doing that. Other than the fact that Moonkins don't want to do that at all. And then every other class is like, haha, you have bear form, buddy. You're always tanky. And then all Moonkins are like... I just remember the POV. When people make that argument about how, like... Oh, druids are actually really tanky. They can just turn into a dog and, like, not die. Um, I just remember watching Zevi's PUV on Razageth, where I think on our kill he was in bear form for 45% of P1 Razageth, which is just the worst feeling of all time. Uh, he got almost every uh, lightning thing. Uh, okay. 
uh, but maybe more of this will make sense. Uh, Frenzied Regen can be cast in cat form for 40 energy. Ooh, kind of like faint vibes. Uh, bear form reduce, reduces magic damage you take by 4%. Uh, shred swipe and mangle damage increased. And there's uh, two choices here. So that's just a choice of something else where shred and swipe gain ursine potential. When you have eight stacks, your next time you transform into bear form... Oh my god, is this a bear weaving? Is this like a... Like a cat bear? It is. Ooh. Okay, so before I even fucking read this, super interesting. Super interesting. Okay, so number one. For Guardian, this is sick. Because Guardians have struggled to find raid viability for the past couple years, and the only time they've been viable in raid have been when they are just the absolute most broken class in the game, and even then, not even. And I feel like Blizzard should have been able to lean more into what they're unique at, which is they're the tank that should always be able to, while not actively tanking, do more damage than the rest of everyone else, because they have Heart of the Wild and they have the ability to, like, Cat and Moon can weave, right? Uh, and they've never really realized that. Like, they have, but it hasn't been something where, like, you'd bring them for, a, like, a powerful competitive... Re like, like they'd be good enough because of that. Like, Paladins have off-healing. DKs have... If there's a ton of magic damage, the way that they heal doesn't really matter. Same thing with uh, Avengers Demon Hunter, right? Like, every tank has, like, its thing. Bear hasn't really had its thing other than overtuning, and I think Bear's thing should be we can do a ton of damage while I'm not actually tanking, and that's... Has turned out, but not strong enough as it should be. So I hope to see that from this. And then for Feral, I'm not totally... It sounds ass. But I'm not totally against the idea of bear and cat weaving if they give it enough juice. Like, I started reading this shit initially, and I was like, what's going on here? How is that going to work? I'm assuming you're they're going to have to add some stuff where you, like, retain combo points. And All right, let's keep reading. So Frenzied Regen can be cast in cat form, uh, some buffs to some of your spells and defensives, and then Shred and Swipe gain this at 8 stacks, and next time you trans... Okay, so when you hit 8 stacks, you're going to ideally want to transfer into bear form. Your next Mangle or Swipe deals 100% increased damage and generates 15 extra rage, but it also has to, like, generate combo points, kind of, right? Like, okay, and then let's look at the other way. So Mangle grants Feline Potential, and Feline Potential is when you have 6 stacks, the next time you transform into cat form, gain 6 combo points, and your next Ferocious Bite or Rip deals 50% increased damage for its full duration. Dude, it's so funny. This this is going to be extremely fun, or it's going to miss horribly. Uh, they, They're going to... Uh, I just need to read the rest of the tree. There's there's so much going on here. Um, okay. Um, and, and also, they are giving you choice nodes, like... If you just want to be a cat, for example, and you don't want to do this transfer stuff, there are choice. It seems like so far all the stuff where you're weaving is is a straight up choice. Like it's not if you take this, you're definitely doing that. Massive attack also inflicts a bleed that causes additional damage over six seconds and saps its strength, reducing damage they deal to you by five percent. For feral. If a Dreadful Wound is be benefiting from Tiger's Fury is reapplied, the new Dreadful Wound deals damage as if Tiger Fury was active. So I asked that question before to you, Ferals. If you're in a pack and you already have all your dots up and you have AoE rip out, and then your Ferocious Bite lights up and it just does big damn, do you want to press that? Now it also is inflicting a bleed. Uh, so, I mean, I guess even more powerful. Okay. Uh, massive attack increases your <laughs> auto attack speed by 20% for 6 seconds. That's mid. Massive attack increases your agi by 5%. And armor granted by iron fur by 20%. Uh, okay. And then the other one. Feral, your first tiger's fury after entering combat makes your next ferocious bite become a massive attack. I kind of wish that was every tiger's fury. And not just number one. More autos equals more massive attacks. True, yeah. And then Guardian, your first mangle after entering combat makes your next maul become a passive attack. Or massive attack. Uh, not passive. Okay. Uh, cool. For every finishing move, 
shred, thrash, or swipe you cast extends the duration of your dreadful wounds by 0.4 seconds up to 6 seconds. That's the uh, dot. Which you can extend out. And then guardian, every maul, raise, mangle, thrash, or swipe you cast extends the duration. Okay, so just extend it by pressing your buttons. Uh, ferocious bites damage increased by 5% and primal wrath direct damage increased by 100. Uh, stampeding roars duration increased by... Ooh, that's nice. Oh, I really like that actually. So this is going to give ferals and guardians a feel at some extra utility that they have that the other druid specs can't bring like I, I know at least for me like when we're bringing roars into a raid and you always need them for certain fights having a certain spec bring you an extra roar is not something that is going to make you bring another spec instead of another one but it is something where you would realize it and actively notice that that is very nice uh so that's that's sick that's really good that's a that's a that's a nice utility note and then the cooldown of Feral Frenzy is reduced by 5 seconds, and the cooldown of Pulverize is reduced by 5, and then Shred Swipe and Mangle's Crit Strike Chance and Critical Strike Damage are increased by 8. Okay, both making you want crit and... Well, not really not want crit. You're unlikely hitting crit DRs, but... Okay, I didn't even read the last thing yet. During Berserk, Shred, Swipe, and Thrash have a 25% chance to make your next Ferocious Bite become a massive attack. And then during Berserk Mangle, all your buttons have a 20 percent side. Dude, I, I think this is sick. I, I like this tree a lot. I, I feel like this is going to make your, your cooldown windows as Feral feel so much stronger. Now, there's one thing. So I just think even without the bear weaving, I think this tree feels good. I'm a little concerned about the bear weaving. <laughs> Like, I could see Bear Weaving Feral Druid being strong in raid combat and being the most unkillable thing to ever grace more than, like, it'd be like Rep Paladins with a cheat death. Like, an actual unkillable DPS class. And also, it's so funny that it would be competing for a raid spot with Moonkin, who are, like, weak as fuck, right? Like, Feral's already were, like, a little tankier than Moonkin. Although, this is, like, kind of Feral Strikes Back thing, especially with the Stampeding Roar. Do you guys know that Ferals weren't brought to the race world first in an optimal scenario for 10 years? Uh, before Amir Drasil? And the main reason for that was for nine of those years, uh, Moonkins had Innervate and Ferals didn't until this expansion. And now it's like Ferals have a little bit better Roar, too. So, how's the utility game going now, you fucking owls? Uh... I like this. Uh, what's what's the feral community feedback on this? I can see initially reading it, and it's not like Rider of the Apocalypse tier, but I feel like this is great for for me. I, I it sounds it sounds good. Uh, like just having Ferocious Bite pop. The, it's it's not what I wanted from the dot thing, although they did kind of have another hero talent for dot trees. Like I I think it's certainly above mid. I don't know if you could call it like awesome awesome, but. I think Ferals and Moonkins got kind of what they wanted, right? Like, if you look at it from a Feral and Moonkins perspective, let's ignore healers and tanks for a moment. You, like, Druid was probably the hardest job they had because they have four specs and four hero talent trees and specs that want to do very different things. And they ended up having Feral have a ferocious bite proccing massive damage build that includes some bear weaving, which is super interesting. And their other alternative is we want to make your multi-dotting better. Those are two things you would use in different scenarios. I think the vines thing doesn't hit as hard. It could be a little better, but it kind of works. Moonkins have uh, the lunar tree that they wanted that looks good. And then they have the tree one, which in my opinion is going to be better gameplay and also a more powerful thing for their kit. But it's a really bad theme, but it's because it's shared with Resto. Resto gets a tree hero talent, which is... They've been super buying into trees all expansion. And then they get a cat weaving one, which is this super interesting play style that a lot of Resto Druids partake in, right? And then Guardian gets this, like, off-tank cat weaving gameplay, which could be really, really sick. And... Also has the Moonkin thing. We made Lunar Beam 
good for the first time. And like Lunar Beam is this like awesome Guardian Druid talent that's been bad for years and years and years. And they made Lunar Beam like the focus of that tree. And it sounds like it's going to crank. I'm a big fan of overall what they did with Druid. I think it's probably the hardest thing they had to do. And now that we've seen all four of them, I I think they did a really good job of, of balancing the gameplay of each spec against each other. You always are going to have an option you want. Okay. The PvP implications do seem absolutely nutty for this bear cat weaving. Oh, yeah. So I'm not familiar with PvP just in general, but I can just imagine ferals already being weird to kill, and now they can just go in bear form and kill you through it, and they're just also in bear form. Where, like, if you're fighting a Moonkin right now, if they're in bear form, that means they're in high danger and they're running away from you and also not killing you, but that is not going to be true with feral, right? All right, so we have pack leader. So this is for BM and survival. I imagine this will be majorly kill command base. It's a button that both of them have. Um, they gave Dark Ranger to BM and MM. I thought about that for a while because I heard some people saying that survival made more sense for Dark Ranger than BM. So it should have been like MM survival. But I think the reason they did that is Dark Ranger is a huge bat chest spec that want hunters want to play. And let's be real. Probably 90% or more of hunters are MM, BM only gamers. And Dark Ranger is the most wanted theme thing. So they wanted you to have a 50%, you know, 90% of the players can play Dark Ranger at all times, right? Uh, but let's see how this works. Pack leader. Your kill command prepares. Oh, oh actually, you know, I want to hear more, maybe more kill command. They have a kill command icon, but I, or kill command, kill shot. I hope they make kill shot better for these packs. Uh, prepares you to visually attack coordination with your pack dealing additional physical damage with your next kill command. This already is setting this tree up for failure. Just every time you read a great tree, you're not leaving this first tree like, okay. You know, but I'm just like, okay. Uh, going down the left. Attacking a vicious hunt instructs your pet to strike with their basic attack alongside your next barb shot. Okay. Does damage. Aspect of the turtle, survival of the fittest, and men pet. Heal the target for 20% of max health over 4 seconds. Duration is increased by 1 second when healing a target over under 50% health. Uh, so a little bit more of a... I mean, this is fine. The, the, the defensive node in Dark Ranger was also something that I liked a lot. Uh, and this just has to rival that, and I feel like it's pretty close to doing that. It's giving you the, like, free exil with Survival of the Fittest that Dark Ranger has. Um... Well, it's over... It's 20% over 4 seconds, so it's not as good. Hunters are classes that are going to focus more. I, I've been talking about how they shouldn't overdo the defensives. If they give hunters some extra defensives, no one's crying about it, right? Uh, Whatever. Okay. Kind of cool, I think. Uh, Kill Command increases the duration of Beast Cleave by 1 second. Uh, ooh, that... Okay, well, I was thinking of Dark Ranger, which needed this, but... Just fine. Okay. Wildfire Bomb reduces the cooldown of Carver Butchery. I don't play that spec. I have no idea what that means. Multi-shot increases the damage of your next multi-shot by 25%. So just your multi-shot does more damage. Uh, Kill Command increases the duration of Beast Cleave. And then the other one is multi-shot damage focus. So I guess... What's the choice here? It's... When you're... I guess covering fire is supposed to be... Like, you're prioing a target, but Beast Cleave is still value, so you want to be kill commanding and blasting the main target, right? And then the second one is, like, if you want a hard AoE, I guess. It's, like, free cleave versus... Interesting. I'm just going to ignore most of the survival stuff because I just don't understand it. I feel like you're just going to take the top one. Whatever. Uh, Let's read the middle. Your pet's basic attack crits become your critical strike damage. Increase your crit damage by 5... Uh, percent for six seconds, stack them to three times. Okay, so just making crit way better for BM. Uh, or like it may already be good, but like it's just giving it more value. Um, aspect of the cheetah now also increases movement speed by 15% for another eight seconds. That'll actually feel pretty good. Uh, disengage increases the range of all your attacks by five yards for five seconds. I also, I don't know if it's gonna, I mean, I, I don't dislike that. I feel like both of those are. Even for PvE, I think there's scenarios where those both make sense. That's fine. I feel like you're always going to take Aspect of the Cheetah, maybe? I don't know. Um, let's see. Kill Shot deals an additional 30% damage over 5... Actually, question. Before we go away from this, when you guys were Marksman Hunters, 
I don't think this is still in the game, but didn't you guys at one point have a mastery or something where the farther you were from the target, the more damage you did, or you had to like stand still or some shit? What what, what was that called? In WAD? Was that did you guys like that? Yeah, sniper training. Was that was that like something that you guys enjoyed? Hell no. Okay, never mind. My bad. Uh, kill shot deals an additional 30% damage over 5 seconds uh, and increases the bleed damage you and your pet deal by 25%. I was looking for someone to make kill shot feel better to press, at least for BM. Uh, so maybe something in that direction. Although it kind of made more sense for that to happen on the Dark Ranger tree since there's more kill shot integration. Every And maybe that'll happen in the spec and class tree, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, every third pet basic attack is a guaranteed crit with di this tree is so boring uh with damage further increased by critical strike chance your pet's basic attack has a 20 percent chance to reset the cooldown of kill command uh and cause kill command to strike a second time okay consuming frenzy terror uh which is the second time thing has a 50 percent chance to reset the cooldown of barb shot and deal more damage consuming it for survival is a 50 chance of raptor striker mongoose and then bestial wrath calls on the pack summoning a pet from your stable for six seconds uh, okay. I mean, in general, people are going to like that, but why can't the whole, why can't the whole tree be about that? Right? Like, isn't that the, you're talking about theme. You already did dark ranger. Isn't the theme for BM hunters that you're a fucking pet master? Like you just have a million, you have a zoo. H how is that in, how is this entire tree not buying into that fantasy? Why is people love that shit? People play minion builds and ARPGs. People just love being the fucking, the commander, you know? Maybe the last node is like, you're a pet commander. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, vicious hunt and pack coordination now stack and apply twice and are always active during Call of the Wild. See, like, nothing about pack leader is as bad as Trickster, Oracle, and Lightsmith because those are, like, actively bad. This is just... I feel like this is that bad, but just on a different level. It's just so uninspired. And forget power level. This is just so uninspired. And like, how did this get made? Like, Hunter, Pack Leader, Beast, BM, and Survival. Both of them use Kill Command. They have like, they, pet pets are like an okay amount of their damage. BM, it's everything. How, how are you not fully buying into like having Stampede up during All of Lust or... In, this is a this is a go back to the drawing board thing. This is this is doggy. I don't like this at all. <clears throat> uh okay. Get owned hunters. Uh okay, evoker flame shaper. Oh, we knew it. I I called it. Oh wait, no, I didn't call it. It's the, it's this <laughs> it's the same uh it's the same icon, but I, we were talking about like what Ruby Adept is gonna be, and Scale Commander. If you haven't seen it, is the Devastation one. It is insane. It's it's probably the best one. Uh, and we were wondering what Ruby Adept would have to do to compete with it, and like Scale Commander hard focused on the blue spells, so Ruby Adept is gonna focus on like Pyre and stuff, and we hope it's not as binary as like. You play Ruby Adept in AoE and Scale Commander in Cleave and Single Target. Um, but I don't know. Let's see. High hopes. I have high hopes here. Wait. Also, didn't they... <laughs> Is this a little 360 name change? Did I... When I... This, this is originally from rating the spec names. Did they just... This is just called... I mean, cooler name, right? So already we're starting out on the right foot. Okay. I'm going to look at this more from a devastation angle because I'm too stupid to understand how healers work. Uh, in 20 second cooldown, engulf your target in dragon flame, uh, damaging or healing them. For each of your periodic effects on the target, effectiveness is increased by 50%. So this is just a button you're pressing every 20 seconds. Okay. It's going to need to be supported for sure. Super boring. And, and... Just really interesting. Uh, okay. Let's go down the middle. Feeling weird. Uh, engulf causes fire breath or dream breath to spread to a nearby target. 
If no valid targets are present, its duration is refreshed. Um, so if you fire breath and there's two targets and your fire breath hits both of them, if you press engulf, will fire breath go to two stacks on that other target or is it only on the main target? Like it's just, it's just going to refresh its duration. Uh, is there any weird stuff with this where like you would want to do like a higher quality fire breath? Cause doesn't fire breath work where it does like more, like when you charge it up, you're just getting more upfront damage, but the dot damage is like always the same or something like that. I don't know. Um, let's go. Let's, there's gotta be more. Engulf, uh, quickens your pulse. So when you press this, you pulse is faster. Reducing the cast time of your next two spells. Okay. Instantly, this is way better. I was wondering, like, how is this going to feel as Devastation just pressing and golf and, like... But just already pressing button that makes your next two spells go faster is... That's going to make this feel ten times better. So, already good. And golf gains one additional charge. Even better. Because there's going to be different times in your rotation where you want to press this. this. Okay, this is... This middle thing has made this way better. This is trending in the direction of being, I think, the first time that we might get a really... I'm, I'm kind of projecting here. But the first time we might get a really, really good tree that... Uh, started out in a really rough spot. Uh, okay. Uh, engulf gains... Okay, we have the additional charge. Uh, let's read the bottom. Engulf consumes 8 seconds of fire breath from the target, detonating it and damaging all nearby targets equal to 300% of the amount consumed, reduced beyond 5 targets. That's... Okay, that feels insane, right? So like now this is an this is an on the GCD instant cast with charges that buffs your next two casts that is also going to blow up everything around you. And if another target already has fire breath on it and you AoE them, it's gonna put the fire breath right back on. It's gonna refresh it. They're gonna need to fix dev aggro. Well, not really, right? Because isn't this going to be you're going to use this a little bit late. Since it's refreshing the target, or since it's refreshing the duration, wouldn't you want to use this a little bit into your fire breath? Instead of, like, right away? I'm pretty sure this is also a full full charge fire breath angle, and then it would have less duration anyway. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Yeah. Ah, man. A lot of burst damage. Okay. Preservation. Engulf. Engulf. Consumes eight seconds of dream breath from the target, detonating it and healing all near... Oh... As if, as if preservation needed more buttons to just s instantly heal people standing near each other. <laughs> um, okay, so big, big for preservation. So far, this is just looking really good, right up the middle. Essence abilities are enhanced with flame, dealing twenty percent healing or damage done as fire over eight seconds. Oh wow, okay. I mean, that's gonna be great for both, right? Uh. Just in general, your essence spenders just deal 20% more damage uh, all the time. And then for healers, I think that's like much more interesting, right? You're getting a lot more of a hot profile, even from big bursty heals. Uh, although this is, just sounds like more hot based anyway, right? Um, I don't know. Extra. Oh, it's also an extra dot for engulf value. True. The only thing I get, I'm trying to think of for preservation is with DPS and golf makes a lot more sense, but like this is like, I guess it's like a spot heal, right? Is that how this is going to play? Like, I guess in most scenarios, this is something you're using on a tank and like mythic plus, but using that on a tank and raid is kind of bad. You're using it as an AOE nuke, but like. It's also spot healing them. It's a spot heal that blows up and heals everyone else. And them. Uh. Okay. Because I told you I'm too stupid to understand healer. I'm trying to keep up. Engulf. Engulf reignites in Kindle. Extending its duration and effectiveness by 25%. That's first choice node. Second one is fire breath dot is increased by 20%. Okay, so you're almost certainly taking... In AoE, at least, you're taking the Fire Breath one because you're, like, exploding it, and you're also doing the Giga one, I think. Is this a good choice node, or is this just a simming thing? 
So when you press engulf, it's going to reignite your enkindle. And it's going to just make... I mean, you're not really going to think about that. I don't know. That one's fine. Um, renewing blaze also applies to one nearby injured ally. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. whoa, whoa, hold up. That is so good. Uh. Oh, wow. The only thing that's kind of a problem is it's nearby injured, so... I wonder how it's going to work. It'd be really, really nice if... It'd be really nice if you could give it to someone next to you that you know is going to take a bunch of damage. But, like, imagine it jumps to someone who's low that doesn't need help. Like, for example, Renewing Blaze is one of the most misused buttons ever. It is practically worthless against a bunch of things that will kill you. And it is as strong as any defensive in the game at the right kind of damage. And typically that kind of damage looks like a bunch of raid damage going out over the course of 10 to 15 seconds. Or a really hard hitting dot on you. Both of which are more often defined in raid than in Mythic Plus. But even in Mythic Plus, you Evoker players know there, there's scenarios where Renewing Blaze is great, right? But like, if you were to give Renewing Blaze to someone who's already going to immune something, or has greater invis for it or alter time they don't need renewing blaze at all but the hunter you're right next to that might be at full health going into it really does and you can't give it to them on purpose because they're not currently injured so I, basically i just have an issue with how this is applied um i i hope this just goes on the closest like it, it in one nearby okay it's probably made the right way because one nearby injured ally is probably making it on average better to be used when you're not thinking about it, but it could also make this really hard to be valuable when you're using it correctly. So it's it's going to be better for people who are not really preparing for it, but it's going to be worse for people who are trying to make it as powerful as it can be. Uh, I don't know. It'll require some testing, but that could be really cool, and the idea is really cool. Um... Your wounds have a small chance to cauterize, healing you for 30% chance of damage taken occurs more often from attacks that deal high damage. This is a great choice node because a lot of times you're probably just going to take, like, like, I think you're going to take the second one all the time. Uh, like, it depends on how much healing it does over the course of a fight. Um, but, like, the first one is going to be really hard to actually be useful. Oh, no, it, it totally depends. Because the thing is, is, like... The way that raid damage works in this game is a lot of people... And this this comes down to, like, using health pots and stuff. Uh, a lot of people will be like, oh, the, someone's calling to, like, mass health pot a damage event. And you're like, well, I'm going to live without health pot, so I'm not going to do it. And I know I'm not going to die. But health potting still has value because it makes smart healing heal other people that actually have already used their health stone and are going to die. Like, if two people are going down to 0%, I wish I could show you this visually... In, in the raid frames, healers are going to focus on those two people. If you know you're not going to die and have a hellstone, you probably should use it because that other person going down, healers are choosing whether to spot heal you or them, and they could choose you for zero reason, but if you hellstone, you remove that option from them. And using that same kind of philosophy across a raid will allow healers to target people who need that kind of stuff more. Not every fight is like this, but like Rashok is exactly like this. So if you were to press Renewing Blaze, even when only you need it, it is going to go to someone that gets value if it's like when you're dunking in the thing in the battery in the middle and like the entire raid's taking damage. Super good ability for this. You're going to make one other person not need spot healing. And even though a bit of it will be overhealing and you didn't put it on exactly the right person, regardless on who it goes on, you are going to save deaths overall in progression because your healers are making better decisions on who is actually in danger. So it's going to have more value than just Draconic things, things in general, but I think I think this is better than you'd think it is initially, even, even if you're not using it exactly right. Good shot on the water break. Okay. We have uh let's uh we haven't read the left side, right? Oh, here we go. Hover and deep breath travel 50% faster, and hover travels 50% further. <laughs> This is, uh, really funny. 
So this is, I feel like this, if you change between Shape of Flame and Trailblazer a lot, I can imagine people dying to using Trailblazer. Both expecting Hover to take them farther, and then also expecting Hover to take you not as far, and you hovering off the edge. Um, Really funny. Like, uh, there's actually a version of this in the game, even though it's a bug. Have any of you guys who, who played Demon, Demon Hunter, have you ever procced a fell rush that goes twice as far or more than you intended? That feeling? That is basically, if, if you frequently play the other Soulbind, Soulbind, if you play the other hero talent, and or play this other choice node you're gonna kind of get used to using a hover throughout the expansion that is either a procced longer one or a shorter one and you'll kind of have to remember which one you are which is pretty funny so uh be prepared to laugh at your evoker friends for hovering off the edge or not making it out of a mechanic because they think it's going farther that'd be good and what does shape of flame do tail swipe and wing buffet scorch enemies and blind them with ash causing their next attack within four seconds to miss. So that one's really, really nice for tanks. It turns uh, both of those abilities into a, uh, like a damage reduction. But the first one is better for you, so no one's ever going to take the second one. Woohoo! Fuck tanks. Uh, down one more. Uh... Critical strike chance against targets above... Wait, what? Critical strike chance against targets above 50%. Huh? They, I'm assuming some words are missing here. Uh, no? Wait, am, is my brain broken? It says health... Critical chance increased by 10%. Oh, oh, I'm so, my brain is so broken. Do you guys know what happened? I read them as like, I read health increased by 10%. And I was like, wow, that's insane. They're getting 10% passive health increase. And then I thought they like missed some words on the first line. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a dench, a dench moment. Okay, so critical strike chance against target about 50% increased by 10%. Cool. Uh, also kind of plays into their mastery. For a DPS. Uh, Living Flame, Reversion, and Azure Strike. Critical Strikes have a 100% increased chance to trigger Essence Burst. This is a great tree. This is a banger. And they did something really smart. Um, So when they made Scale Commander, which is also a super banger, uh, I kind of assumed because of it being called Ruby Adept, which they changed it to Flame Shaper, much better name, but clearly it was going to be involved with Flame. There's a decent side of Flame uh, from the Preservation side, and then also Devastation has a literal entire like part of their tree that is red right um i thought it would have been kind of boring for them to do a binary scale commander is all about disintegrate and flame shaper is all about pyre it didn't say the word pyre one time here so it's not going to shoehorn you into just playing whichever spender you're currently using a lot it's giving you a realistic choice for both builds um in all content and both of them sound super fun and super different. This is this is great. Devastation is eating next expansion. I think they have two. Devastation is probably so far only second to Rep Paladin in amazing choices for hero talents. Uh, but unfortunately, you don't have spatial paradox. So similar to why Feral Druids didn't get brought for ten years because they didn't have Innervate. As long as Aug is the only spec, regardless of tuning that has that, you won't get brought anyway until they until they give you that. Um, okay, so Flame Shaper, good. Uh, Spell Slinger, which was the name of a very fun Wildstar class. And the second mage one that we've seen so far, we've only seen Frostfire, and until the most recent Hero Talents before this, it was the best tree in the game. Let's see if they continue the banging. Uh, there's a dev note on this one. All right, let's check it out. Uh, I'm going to have to scroll so far down. Here we go. Dev note. Note, Spell Slinger splinters are themed and tuned based on your active spec. 
Arcane Splinters are named Arcane Splinters and deal moderate arcane damage. Frost Splinters are named Frost Splinters and deal light frost school damage. Those specifics uh, have been omitted from this mock-up for the sake of tooltip readability as both spec splinters serve the same purpose. Woo! Woo! Uh, okay. Going to Spell Slinger. When you consume Nether Precision or Winter's Chill, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, is that, is that like, uh, shooting an ice lance? Sorry, I don't play, I don't play wizard. Clear casting? So it's like clear cast procs? Okay. All right. Um, conjure a splinter that fires at your target. Uh, conjure raw magic into a sharp projectile that deals damage. Splinters embed themselves into their target, dealing additional damage over 16 seconds. Cool. Casting Arcane Surge or Icy Veins, their main cooldowns, conjures eight splinters. So they're going to be doing big damn. Uh, I'm assuming only on your main target. Uh, and whenever you conjure one, you have a 100% chance to conjure an additional. Okay. Making your cooldowns way better for both specs. Uh, you have a 40% increased movement speed during alter time. Oh, man. The things fired up will do with that. Uh, displacement has a 50% longer duration. Uh, 25% longer range. Uh, and leaves behind a mirror image. That's also crazy. Okay. Wait. What, what, what is the DR on mirror image? It's a 20% DR? I mean, fucking why not? Uh, okay. Uh, shifting power fires a barrage of eight splinters at random enemies within 40 yards over its duration. Now just make those splinters pulse AOE and then we're in fucking business. While a target under the effects of Nether Tempest or Winter's Chill, 20% of the damage dealt by a splinter also is dealt to nearby enemies. Oh my fucking god. Near damage reduced beyond five targets. Direct damage from arcane splinters re uh, resets the duration of nether tempest. This is sick. Their prismatic barrier, arcane, and ice barrier can absorb up to 50% more damage based on your missing health. They they're actually just the main characters of this game. I don't even need to read. Dude, do we read the rest of this nonsense? Like, what's the point? Okay, uh... Can absorb 50% more damage based on your missing health, max effectiveness when under 50. Does that apply to mass barrier? Because isn't mass barrier just putting up your barrier on other... Or no, isn't it a different spell? It should. So if you can use this while your party's lower, your mass barrier is 50% better. Yo. Your mirror image summons an extra clone. Mirror image now reduces all damage taken by an additional fibers. I mean, why not, right? Uh, direct damage from a splinter is a 5% chance to summon an Arcane Echo or an Icy Comet that deals damage to all nearby enemies and increases the damage enemies take from you by 6% for 6 seconds. Uh, let's just not even read the bottom yet. Let's just let's just wait. Uh, the first 8 times an enemy is damaged by your orb on either orb, conjure a splinter that fires the damage target. And then just in general, orb damage increased by 10. Uh, whenever a splinter is removed or recalled, it explodes, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Yeah. Uh, okay. Each time you conjure a splinter, increase the damage from your next supernova by 18%, or ice nova by 6, stacks up to 30 times. So it's going to make supernova and ice nova sick, and not something you have to press all the time, but when you do, it's a big burst of damage. Uh, gain 2% increased critical strike dan chance and crit strike damage. Okay. Worst note on the tree. Weird. Uh, recall all embedded splinters to you. Wait, how do you do this? It's like a button. Like, Splinter Storm is a button. Recall all embedded splinters to you, dealing their damage, periodic damage, instantly. After a brief delay, unleash a devastating barrage of splinters, dealing damage to your target for each splinter in the Splinter Storm. Splinter Storm grants you clear casting or applies Winter's Chill to its target. Uh, it happens when it reaches eight stacks. So isn't that just pressing your cooldowns or I guess just getting enough procs? Hmm. 
you instantly get eight when you when you press your button. So this sounds really cool. Uh, mages have two trees so far, and I think they're both two of the very best ones in the game. Uh, this one is what? It's just arcane and frost. Okay, very sick. All right. Oh yes. All right, guys. It's it's my time. By the way, this is my time. This is my time. Monk, we have two Windwalker trees on this fucking blessed day. I'm so ready. I'm so... I have so much hopium. There's so many things that need to help this beautiful... Guys, you want to know why people complain so much about Windwalker not getting changes? Because Windwalker fucking owns. When Windwalker's done right, it's just the GOAT class. So that's why. So, I, I want them... To give me the good shit, baby. Let's go! Shadow Pan. Which I think of the three names, Master of Harmony, Shadow Pan, and Conduit of the Celestials, this is the least hype name. So let's, let's fucking get into it. This one can be bad and I'm not even mad. Uh, as long as it doesn't say Rushing Jade Wind specifically, unless Rushing Jade Wind is being completely reworked. Um, no, do not PP laugh. No, you're PP laughing. Does it actually say Rushing Jade Wind? Okay, one second. Uh, let's see. Dealing damage equal to your maximum health generates a flurry charge. Uh, okay. That's going to be super interesting because damage. This is really interesting that they did this. So throughout an expansion, the ratio at which you do damage compared to the ratio at which you gain maximum health is not linear. It's totally different. So this is actually going to either get significantly worse throughout the expansion or significantly better in every patch, which is the most iconic monk thing ever because monks struggle from verse being a good stat. Uh, which just means the rest of your stats fucking stink. Uh, and they constantly need to be tuned individually every patch because they don't scale with gear like everyone else does. Um, and yeah, so they're, they're going to have to do the same thing where they retune this every patch because the balance of health uh, is totally different than the balance of, uh, of the damage you're doing. Yeah, also just give me, don't give me fort. It's a DPS loss, by the way. Uh, okay. So for each 400 energy you spend, unleash all flurry charges as flurry strikes, dealing physical damage per charge. Um, so I like this in concept right away. Yeah, who used rally? Um, the only thing is there's a button which is... I'm not a big fan of this button. I know some people are. I hate Serenity, but this also makes Serenity a lot worse, right? Because you're not spending energy in this. At least unless they rework Serenity. So, like, this just makes that, like, ten times worse. Which is good. Fuck Serenity. Any 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 cooldown in this game that, in, that encourages you to cap on your resources is absolutely dog shit. Um, okay, going left first. I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling the good news is on the left side. Flurry Strikes has a 15% additional chance to crit. Okay. Enemies who die... Okay, well, okay, let's get back to that. Enemies who die within 5 seconds of being damaged by a Flurry Strike explode, dealing damage to uncontrolled enemies within 8 yards. Uncontrolled enemies? Why specifically mention that? What the fuck? Like, not mind-controlled? Oh, I see, so it doesn't break CC. Extremely hype. <laughs> uh... It could be a single target AOE thing. High impact is like also making the ones near the end of the pull feel better if like mobs are dying. I don't know. I'm okay with it. Uh, Vivify always heals you for an additional 30% of its total value. And this is between Brewmaster and Windwalker. Okay. And you have some instant Vivifies now. Uh, Chi Burst, Chi Wave, and Expel Harm now leech 20% of damage dealt. Uh, all of those buttons do zero damage. Uh, 
but maybe over the course of a fight it feels better. Uh, whatever. Uh, flurry strikes increases your agi by one percent for six seconds, stacking up to twenty times. So they're assuming that you are going to stack a ton of these. to make this have any kind of value. All right, let's read the middle. Striking the same target five times within two seconds grants 2% haste, our worst stat. Uh, multiple instances of this effect may overlap, stacking up to 10 times, okay? Uh, damage dealt uh, by Fist of Fury and Keg Smash counts as double towards flurry charge mm -hmm. generation. Okay, that's gonna make, that. this is making a lot more sense because they were assuming that. Uh, Fist of Fury damage increased by 10%. And Keg Smash damage increased by 30. Love getting Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick to do more damage passively rather than being constantly upkept by having tier bonuses buff them. Uh, abilities that spend energy deal an additional 15% damage. Uh, okay. Every 50 energy spent reduces the cooldown of Storm, Earth, and Fire, Serenity, and Weapons of Order. Hold, hold the phone. Did I just... Where's the Weapons of Order reveal? Oh. Oh, Brewmaster have Weapons of Order. Oh. I just got so... I'm so sad. Don't haw me, please. I can't take it right now. Oh, that's so sad, man. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Feyline Stomp is definitely not going to be in next expansion or Jade Fire, whatever it's called, on Windwalker's Tree, and Weapons of Order is going to replace it for sure. Actually, I don't even know how Weapons of Order would play now. It was better last expansion, but Jade Fire Stomp definitely turbo stinks. Get that the fuck out, but... Um, stop pee, pee laughing. That makes me think that there's something even worse. Uh... Please stop. Uh, okay, attacks penetrate 10% of the target's armor. Uh, just uh, just in general? So we have armor pen now? I haven't heard of that in a while. Uh, when you become injured, summon a whirling steel, increasing your parry chance and avoidance for, by 15% for 6 seconds. What? So, what does becoming injured mean in this game? Is that sub-35? Does anyone know what the... And does this have an ICD of some kind? Because that's kind of insane. I'm just going to guess it's at least sub-50. I mean, that's definitely going to save deaths for sure. Uh, not like monks really need any defensive help. When you dodge or parry an attack, reduce damage taken by 10% for the next 6 seconds. Uh, so, Brewmaster thing. Okay. Blackout Kick deals an additional 20% critical damage and increases the damage of the next set of Flurry Strikes by 10%. Okay. So give him Blackout Kick some more some more value. Um, and let's look at the bottom. So every 10 Flurry Strikes, which could be pretty often, become infused with Wisdom of the Wall. <laughs> what? name <laughs> wait they couldn't come up with okay wisdom of the wall grants you the following effects your critical strikes deal an additional 30% damage wait hold up your mastery's effect is increased by 25% versatility now increases your dodge and critical strike chance by 25% of its effect and Flurry Strikes now deal additional shadow damage to all uncontrolled enemies within six yards. Okay, I was kind of laughing at the wall bit, but that's kind of insane. You're going to have this up almost permanently. This is going to be up all the time. Uh, okay, so... Um... Okay, so this is really weird. This is a weird way for Blizzard to solve the versatility issue with or with stat scaling. They're basically 
Like, when a class is versus good, you're acknowledging that all the rest of their stats are bad, but they're like, okay, monks, fuck it. Just go ahead and stack verse. Half of this is brewmasters, and tanks always like verse. And half of this is windwalker, and you guys stack verse anyway. So now you can stack verse, but also we'll scale an actual good stat with it for free. Bro, it takes 400 energy. Wait, what is it? It isn't four... It's 4,000 energy. Wait, what? Oh. 4,000 energy. Can someone hit up logs real quick and assume nothing changes, which obviously it will, and tell me how long it's going to take you to... It's not 4,000 energy. It's 10 times your health. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. It's yeah, you're right. It's not 4000 energy. It is it is how it's how long it takes you to do 10 times your health and damage with some benefit with Fist of Fury contributing more. Um and it's slightly delayed by you having to actually spend Dude, I really don't like this cuz this is super powerful, but like uh, okay, it's going to feel slightly better if you are playing Storm, Earth, and Fire. And really, if they can move your tree around and you can also get spiritual focus, you can kind of move... It. Like, Bone Dust Brew is weird and it's not very fun because you have to, like, basically just use clones with it and then you just become a one-dimensional, one-minute class. But, like, if you actually take clones and spiritual focus, you could always make use of of having this. My only thought is you still do the most of your damage on a two minute window. Could you, couldn't you see this proccing 20 seconds before your two minutes? And then that just feels like shit or, or feeling like you want to AFK energy spend. So this actually procs during your, I mean, yeah, but you're going to have this up pretty constantly though. It says following effects, so it's all. You only get one buff. It's A Weaver single target. I mean, yeah, but do you still like this tree, though? Like, I don't know. Monk has so much sauce. This is. Wowhead wrote it incorrectly. Oh, every 10 flurry strikes, you become infused with a wisdom of the wall for 20 seconds. You do not get all of the value of wisdom of the wall. You get one of them. Okay, so that actually almost makes this better. It's not literally more powerful, but it's better design because no, it's all, it's all of them. Okay. Let me look at Blizzard's thing. Here we go. You said Wowhead put it correct, or er, put it bad? Every 10 flurry strikes become infused with a wisdom of the wall. Not become infused with wisdom of the wall. And then... Well, no, it, it does mention all of them. It's, yeah, it is all, I think. It's just the fact that they put A there is weird. It is a little ambiguous, but read the actual blue post part. Okay. Shadowpan Capstone. Wisdom of the wall. Every 10 flurry strikes... Become infused with a Wisdom of the Wall for 20 seconds. Wisdom of the Wall grants the following effects. Wait, I actually... It says the exact same thing, first of all, but... Guys, I, I think it's only giving you one. Like, you could... It's super ambiguous, man. It says it grants the following effects, not grants one of the following effects. But 
this seems like kind of like a roll the bones kind of shit where like this is like to me the better design angle of this would be you're dealing you're like procking this all the time and it's rotating through these all the time i feel like this procking less often and then giving you all of them this is gonna make you so much more powerful that when this isn't up you're gonna be doing nothing so you either need to have this up all the time i don't know Either way, either way, I don't think I'm a fan of this. I just feel like there's so much cool stuff you can do with Monk. I just don't think this is one of them. This will probably be powerful, but I'm just not a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. There's no way you can read other trees and then read this and think this is sick. Imagine thinking Chi Burst, Chi Wave, and Expel Harm leeching damage is something you would put down and people would want to see that. The Vivify healing other people and healing you is like somewhat value, but I'd like to have that make you actually want to do that more and like use a GCD on it. Um, Like the fact that we just read Spell Slinger and then went to this is... I think this thing has potential though. I just... Also, it's just the most monk thing of all time to make it based on your max health. I really wonder if they considered how max health and your damage scales. Like, the way this works, I think, is if someone uses... Unless this is based on your base health with no buffs, which I guess they could do, but if someone rallies or gives you fort, you literally is a damage loss. Like, why why, why even kind of encourage weird shit like that? But it's probably just base health. Um. Okay, so first Windwalker tree, not a fan. And that's so sad because I feel like Windwalker... Like, even Windwalker this expansion, like... I think Windwalker, if you take the right talents, is the best version of Windwalker ever. Like, if you could just choose purely gameplay related and you chose however many talents you have here, it's the best version of Windwalker to ever exist. But you just play some ass. You play bad talents that are not fun, and AoE Touch of Death is nonsense. Um, so... Part of this is they're just going to have to fix that in the expansion anyway. All right. So let's read Condor to the Celestials. What is it? You mean weird shit like increasing Warlock's HP during Shadowlands to increase their DPS? Not like that ever happened. What, what kind of point are you making? That was fucking stupid too. You, do you think I'm a defender of that? Like, oh, well, that was the good times. Like, what are you fucking talking? That shit was horrible. Okay. Uh... Let's see, Monk of the Conduit of the Celestials is for Mistweaver and Windwalker. All right, it's got cool icons. The August Celestials empower you. Oh, there's Dev Notes. Okay, let's hit the let's hit the Devi. Hit the C Celestial Conduit's channel will not break to using a defensive utility or movement spell. Uh, okay. And Heart of the Jade Serpent's required stacks to activate for Mystery will be changed to 16 when talented and avail the Pride Passive. Okay. Got it. Um, the August Celestials empower you, causing you to radiate nature damage onto enemies and healing onto five injured allies within 20 yards over four seconds, split evenly among them. Uh, wait. The August Celestials empower you... Causing you to radiate nature damage onto enemies and healing up, up to five injured allies in 20 yards over four seconds. It's a spell. So you cast this. 1.5 minute cooldown. Healing and damage increased by 6% per enemy struck up to 30. But it's split. But Okay, it's split, but it increases. Oh my god. What the fuck is this? A four second channel? You may move while channeling, but casting, even if it's hasted, you don't even like haste. You may move while channeling, but casting other healing or damaging spells cancels this effect. You don't even need me to say it, right? Like, you can. Somewhere in the middle, it's a bit ambiguous, but every single one that's insane and every single one that sucks, you can tell right away. This this shit stinks. This this stinks. Let's see if it gets any better. Uh, 
the healing of enveloping mist and mist weaving. Okay, fist of fury and spinning crane kick deal fifty percent more. Da a guy. Zwen's guidance teachings of the monastery is a fifteen percent chance to refund a charge when consumed. Ooh, I like that. I like that choice node. Um, and damage of tiger palm is increased by thirty <laughs> percent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just fucking tiger palming. Uh. Uh, whatever. Sure. Uh, Miss Weaver consuming eight sacks of Shailun's gift causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown time of renewing Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Life Cocoon, and Thunder Focus D by 100% for eight seconds. I don't even know what any any of those things mean. Uh, Windwalker consuming 30 Chi. 30 Chi. Okay, that's a decent amount. Uh, causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown time of Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury. Strike of the Windlord and Whirling Dragon Punch by 100% for 8 seconds. Um, that? Is like a mini Serenity window? Kinda? But like you're gonna actually have to... It doesn't remove the Chi cost. So, as opposed to the big issue of Serenity, which is that your energy is completely irrelevant, you'd have to still go into it with high chi, preferably, and you're still going to have to generate, which doesn't make energy irrelevant. I actually really like this. this I, that, that, that's... Dude, I almost wish that was like a talent or something. I, I think that could be really, really fun. Um, it doesn't take it off CD. It just cools down twice as fast. Uh, it decreases the cooldown time by 100%. Isn't that... So I guess that could make it half the cooldown, but I, I could also see it... It's 8 seconds of double cooldown reduction. It means it resets. I think that's a... It's kind of interesting. That sounds like it's going to come up instantly. Because it's not saying that, like, you get double the CDR. It's saying it's reducing the cooldown time by 100. That's... That's that sounds like it's a little mini serenity window, right? Well, not kinda. They just in that you can use. That's not quite how serenity works, but yeah. Either way, moving on. Fortify brew uh, grants an absorb shield for twenty five percent of your maximum health. What's the cooldown on a uh, fort brew? Oh, uh, six minutes. Okay, cool. Or or two if you want to spend two talents in it. Got it. All right. So six minutes, we can get it absorbed for 25% of health. That's pretty good. Pretty pretty, uh, pretty uh, close to, like, passive permanent DR, like, gaining AMS randomly. Yeah. Uh, you heal for... Dude, I'm so jaded. Okay. You heal for 10... I just, I just turn into the average Windwalker complainer whenever I read some dog shit like this. You heal for 10% of your max health instantly when you activate Celestial Conduit and you receive 15% less damage for the duration. That's horrible. Um... Okay, uh, let's go down the middle. Tiger Palm, that's Miss Weaver. 50% chance for Zwen to claw your target for fizz damage, healing a nearby ally for 20%, 200% of the damage done. Chances increase while invoke you on the Jade Serpent or invoke GG, the Red Crane is active. Okay, so Tiger Palm just becomes like a strong, random, like smart heal ally who's low. Okay, and then for damage. Uh, Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to cause Zwen to claw your target for physical damage, healing a nearby ally for 100% of the... Oh, like, so in the first part of this, it was, like, sick. It's like a healing node for Mistweaver. But it's just fucking worse for Windwalker and also just isn't doing anything of value. Like, okay, yeah. We're going to bring a support Windwalker this week. That's good. Also, pro has to be a typo, maybe. I don't know. I mean, either way, it stinks. Also, just, you know what doesn't get me out of... I'm so jaded. This is so funny. You know what doesn't get me out of bed in the morning? Tiger Palm Integration. The least fun generator doggy spell of all time. Like, okay. Uh, after Zwen assists you, your next enveloping miss cast time is reduced by 50% and causes Nijua to grant an absorb shield to five nearby allies for 5% of your max health. After Zwen assists you, your next blackout kick causes Nijuao to stomp at your target's location, dealing damage to nearby enemies, damage reduced beyond five targets. Well, do you have, like, 
more uptime on your tiger now? You must for this kind of stuff to be on the tree, right? Because, like, if your tiger isn't up significantly more, then these would have to be significantly, significantly more powerful. Um, okay. Uh, your movement speed... Well, let's keep breeding. Your movement speed... Uh, Max, that's the proc you read from before. Oh, am I crazy? Oh. Oh. Well, it says Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to cause Zwen to claw your target. I assume that's only when Zwen's out. So you're saying Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to spawn Zwen, and then he also attacks... Uh... Healing in your mind. Uh, chance to increase. Oh, never mind. Okay. So, chance is increased when it's actually active. So, he will actually just randomly show. Okay. That makes it a bit better. I was assuming this whole thing was only when it was out, but it's just better when you have your cooldowns up and spawns him randomly throughout the fight. I mean, that's fine. The fact that it's on Tiger Palm doesn't really matter because you're just. They needed to choose a rotational button that has a chance to spawn him, and they chose one that you press probably more than anything else. So, it's fine that it's based on Tiger Palm. Uh,. And then after he assists you... Okay, so they just want the big... Cel I mean, obviously, this is based on Celestials, but they just want all the Celestials out all the time. They want to give you the vibes of the Rider of the Apocalypse tree where, like, the Four Horsemen are aiding you, but they just want it to be the Celestials. So they're using half of the... Kind of an issue, in my opinion, with the Rider of the Apocalypse tree is they're using the uh, half the tree to kind of make the Celestials worth something to you. But, oh, I just read Rushing Jade when I'm mad. Uh... The movement speed is increased by 25% during Celestial Conduit and for 3 seconds after. Totally irrelevant. They're the fastest class in the game. Uh, Celestial Conduit can be recast once during its duration to call upon all of the August... Ooh! So, while you're channeling it, you press the button again and it spawns all of the... That's kind of sick! We like that. That's cool as fuck. That makes this feel way better. Because it, it is four second channel, but also you are... It's a four second channel, but like you're using two globals during it. So... Wait, how long does it spawn them? Or does it not spawn them? It's just they assist you. So they do these assisting things? Okay, wait a second. So it can be recast once during iteration to call upon all of them to assist you at 200% effectiveness. So all it does is... How long does this last, though? Because, like, doesn't it have to be a duration? No, 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 no. Not how long is the channel, like... Like, for example, for Zwen to assist you, you have to press Tiger Palm. While you're channeling, you can't press Tiger Palm, so Zwen can't assist you. So this has to spawn. Oh, all it does is it just does all of the assists once. Oh, okay. So... So by channeling this, Yulon or whatever is going to... So when this ends, you'll have maybe eight seconds of zero CDs on these buttons. And then also Zwen is going to claw things and heal people. And over here we read what the red crane does. Uh, okay, let's keep reading up here. Um... Gain, gain refreshing jade wind while Chi G, the red crane, the jade serpent is active. Okay. Windwalker, gain rushing jade wind while Zwen, the white tiger, is active. Okay, so you're getting rushing jade wind, but you're getting rushing jade wind for free. So part of the huge issue with rushing jade wind is having to interact with it and you're just pressing a six second maintenance buff in a class that's already super locked down on what you want to press. It fucks up your whole flow and it's absolutely dog shit. Um, 
And currently it's tuned really poorly, but that doesn't really matter in the expansion because that can just change in two seconds. Did I skip a node? Where did I skip a node? I don't think I skipped a node. I read everything on the left so far. Yeah. Okay. Uh, going back to this. So that's fine with me, uh, but why does that matter? Okay, so what's the other option? So refreshing Jade Wind's duration is increased by 10 seconds. Windwalker, rushing Jade Wind's duration is increased by 4 seconds and multiple uses may overlap. So again, it's, it's just really simple. Unless we see an extremely different version of rushing Jade Wind than exists currently in the game, anything that says rushing Jade Wind on it is total and absolute shit. So... We can say, like, maybe... Like, there's so many ways to design Russian Jade Wind where, where it's really fucking good. Uh, this is... It's just bad, right? Um, it's it's probably one of the worst abilities in the entire game. But it's been great in the past, so... I'm not opposed I'm not opposed to this saying Rushing Jade Wind, assuming they change it. I mean, this tree already stinks. So the Rushing Jade Wind part can actually redeem it if they just make that button better. Right? Uh, okay. Move, going down. Uh, refreshing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause chi -G to quickly rush to five targets, healing each target. Rushing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause chi -G to quickly rush to five targets, doing damage. Uh, you don't even have to take Rushing Jade Wind, really, for... Dude, it's crazy. I mean, they're literally forcing you into Rushing Jade Wind. Well, not really. You don't have to talent Rushing Jade Wind. You could literally just take this talent, and then Rushing Jade Wind will happen regardless. And then this one just works with spinning crane kick, right? So you just don't have to take rushing Jade Wind. But yeah, I mean, if anyone at Blizzard is listening to this, and maybe you're not because I'm clearly biased towards Monk and I'm upset with this stuff. Uh, hopefully, I usually try to stay objective, but it's hard for me to do because I really like this spec. Rushing Jade Wind needs Jesus Christ. It needs all of it. Whatever religion you believe in, whoever's the like big guy, they need that. Rushing Jade Wind needs that. Uh, okay. Um, going down. Uh, you switch between alignments after an August Celestial assists you, increasing a correspondent secondary stat by 3%. <laughs> okay. Uh, casting Jade Fire Stun- No, I'm not even reading that. I'm not even fucking reading that. Oh, wait, it's Miss Weaver only? Wait, no, that's just Vivify? Let's see. Yeah, I mean, nah, nah, give me... I, I'm just not even reading it. I'm not even reading it. You do not play Windwalker if you think that pressing Jade Fire Stomp as a dog shit 10 second maintenance buff is not just... just... just miserably dog shit. Uh, nah, dude, I was gonna put... I wasn't even gonna put this in really bad. This is... I was gonna put this in kinda bad until I read Jade Fire Stomp in the, in the fucking bin. Ain't no way. Get that out of here immediately. Uh, so the two, uh, so the two, uh, Windwalker options are either mid or horrible, which is, uh, yeah, that's, that's sad. That's, that's not good. Um, all right. How many do we have left here? We have three left. Dude, I have three and a half thousand viewers on YouTube right now. That's insane. Look at that. Look at that. Shout out YouTube chat. That's crazy. First day of YouTube streaming. Uh, okay. Farseer. So the first look at Shaman. Let's go, baby. And maybe spamming. I love Rest of Shaman. Woo, Rest of Shaman. Yeah, Farseer Thrall. Okay, so... So, so I can already tell that this is going to be bad because maybe is going through it right now. Um, okay. So, Ellie and Resto. And we really need Farseer to be good for Resto Shamans, because without ever seeing it, if there's anything based on its name alone that I know will be horrible is Totemic. Uh, so Resto Shaman really needs this one to pull through. Uh, Primordial Wave calls an ancestor to your side for six seconds. Okay. Crazy good theme. 
Unleash life, calls an ancestor to your five for six seconds. Yep, I love Thrall. I see it. Yep, yep. Whenever you cast a healing or damaging spell, the ancestor will cast a similar spell. But just for Ellie, they don't do anything. That's hype. Uh, okay. Your ancestor's spells are 20% more powerful. Okay, you guys don't think this hits the theme? This is sick theme. This is like super sick shaman theme. You're summoning an ancestor and they're like doing shit. That's fucking sick. The theme's awesome. Uh, ancestors have a 15% chance to call another ancestor and they expire. Okay, a little RNG high rolling. Uh, when an ancestor is called, they reduce the cooldown of Fire Ellie and Storm Ellie by 10 seconds. Okay, so you're going to get a little CDR on, on your one of your big buttons. And Resto, when an ancestor is called, they reduce the cooldown of Riptide by two seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, if I remember, Riptide is still something you pretty much use on CD. And it, like, doesn't it also generate something like it increases the cast speed of your next spell or something like that? So that's actually nice. Is that is that nice? Or isn't Resto Shaman weird? Like, they went through a time where Riptide was, like, all of their healing and then, like, they didn't chain heal and now they're, like, kind of back to chain healing again. I don't know. Uh, reduces the cooldown of Nature's Guardian by 10 seconds and causes it to heal for an additional 5%. I think Nature's Guardian is... Isn't it that, like, passive thing on their tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty rough. That's a... Shamans are one of the weakest defensive classes in the game. Uh, so hopefully this isn't their defensive node. Uh, let's see. Earth Shield has a additional three charges and heals you for 25% more. It is. I think this is their defensive node. <laughs> That's so good. This is probably... This is probably the weakest defensive choice node of every single, not spec, of every hero talent in which every spec has two of. And... Ellie and Resto Shamans are probably the two are probably the two squishiest specs in the game with Moonkin and depending on the profile of the fight, Healer Priest sometimes. And this is the weakest I think the weakest defensive note I've seen. Even Moonkins were better than well, Moonkins were pretty good. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, but I guess they can onk as a defensive in it and you don't actually die. So that's sick. Dude, shout out. Do you guys remember in the MDI in season one where Zelia died and then got battle onked and then died again and then got battle rezzed and then died and then he onked again? And then, like, that French stream didn't understand how onk worked on the tournament realm and they were, like, calling them cheaters and shit? <laughs> yeah, it was in. <laughs> It was all in all of Valor. That was an all-time great moment. Just like the full French rage was coming out. Um. Okay. Up top, Ancestors last an additional two seconds. Lava Burst has a 8% chance to call down an Ancestor and Riptide has a... Okay. Uh, besides the bad defensive node, it, and I'm sure it gets worse because maybe Super Dobby. So far, I, I fuck with this. I think this is good. Like, the, uh, who loves gambling? Me. Woo. <laughs> All right, maybe. I know. Okay. But I think at least for theme, this seems, like, pretty good. I guess the ancestors don't do enough right now. We need to see. We need to. Okay, so now we know how to call ancestors, and we know how to make them more powerful, and we know they can give us some CDR, but, like, what do the ancestors do that matters? That's the thing that needs to, that we need to figure out now. Uh, increases Maelstrom by 25 and Mana by 5. Oh, what a node. What an absolute node for Resto Shaman. Uh, increases the damage of Earthshock, Ellie Blast, and Earthquake by 8%. Okay. And Resto increases the healing done by Healing Wave, Healing Surge, Wellspring, Downpour, and Chain Heal by 8%. Okay, so just, you do more healing. Completely irrelevant node, because... Just... Actually, how many nodes have I seen that are like this? Usually there's like one boring your spells do more damage node, but like you can just fix that in class tuning. Like there could just be a node that says this tomorrow. It usually needs to be a bigger number to really accentuate certain spells that you wouldn't get from your other choice of hero talent. But like something this small is just so 
why is this even here kind of thing uh okay uh but uh, yeah actually it's the tuning knob good point yeah like for example if farseer is su is simming a lot less than another thing the tuning knob could be this it's a lot easier to tune something like this than all this other stuff i don't know uh lava burst gains an additional charge and deals five percent increased damage uh that's kind of nice quality of life isn't it i haven't played ellie in a while but that sounds like it would be something that uh that's trash three charges now so i guess if you're not swimming in procs it doesn't really matter what is it? Lava burst over caps all the time. Well, then wouldn't the extra charge be nice? I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right. Sounds like you guys are not a fan of it. I believe you. And then Riptide gains an additional charge and heals 5% more. Okay. Again, I still don't know how powerful Riptide is right now. Okay. So I'm still waiting to see what the ancestors do because... I get that the, the calling the ancestors down thing is nice and the CDR is nice, but that's just not good enough. I mean, there's even a, there's even a node where it's like your ancestors spells are more powerful. And I know they, they cast some of your spells, but like they need to do something else. There needs to be like, like when I read down here, it needs to be like a hell of a bunch of power. Uh, using spells with a cast time increases the duration of spirit walkers, grace and spirit walkers ages by one seconds to a maximum of four. I mean, the nodes this is competing with are like the hover nodes. Uh, I mean, it's weak compared to that. Those were some of the best ones. I feel like that's not good enough. Uh, final calling. When an ancestor expires, they cast Ellie Blast on a nearby enemy. Depends on how often you're calling them down. Uh, and when an ancestor expires, they cast Hydro Bubble <laughs> on a nearby enemy. I was not prepared for... For Hydra Bubble. Um, let's see. So, uh, surrounds your target in a protective water bubble for 10 seconds. The shield absorbs incoming damage, but the absorb amount decays fully over its duration. I mean, that could... I mean, it depends on how big it is, but depending on how many times you're calling down an Ancestor, I could see Hydra Bubble being like a pretty decent amount of your healing. Uh, I don't know why it... The fact that it absorbs incoming damage, but it's going to decay over its duration makes me think that when this initially spawns, you like, it's going to be huge. Because the scenario is it's a moderate amount and it just doesn't randomly decay. It has to be a real big absorb. So that could be pretty nice. It depends on how often you call them down. And then let's look at the bottom. Your next healing or damaging spells within 10 seconds is instant. And deals... Oh, this is just when you cast... Nature's Swiftness, right? Your next ancestral healing or damage spell within 10 seconds is instant and deals 10% increased damage and healing. If you already know Nature's Swiftness, it is replaced by this and causes Ancestral Swiftness to call an ancestor to your side. This is the worst part of the whole tree. Like, I feel like they were kind of... Some of these nodes were weak, but they were kind of cooking up something here, and it seemed like it was going to all culminate with something that says... Something along the lines of, like, when your ancestors are out, they do this, and it's powerful. Or some kind of extra ancestor synergy. Not CDR-related. You already have that. They already mirror your spells, or they cast like, like spells. Spells that are alike to what you're casting. But this needed to do that. Like, I just feel like this thing all culminated with this fucking terrible Ancestral Swiftness node. I don't think this is too far off of being kind of nice. I think this CDR is going to feel good. Because they could, they could proc pretty often. Or no, actually... Am I missing something? How do you call Ancestors to your site again? Oh, maybe I'm wrong. It's only when you do these things, right? It's not like you get random procs. It is RNG. Oh, 8% proc on Lava Burst. Like, I think if they get it right, like, like when I think of spawning random things, I'm kind of thinking like, uh, like Warlocks, Diabolist, or I'm thinking even Rider of the Apocalypse. Like, 
if it's going through ancestors pretty consistently and it's a more static power gain that feels better but this seems like there looks like they're trying to give them a lot of like if you're giving yourself cdr these need to be popping out and i feel like they're not going to be coming out fast enough Where, where's the thing where they spawn i'm missing it oh here it is riptide is a 15 percent chance to call down an ancestor lava burst is an eight percent chance i think they need to I think the theme is right. I think the calling down the ancestors thing and like half of these nodes involving ancestors are good. I think they need to rework the capstone and they need to give the ancestors more consistent power or and make them spawn more often. So basically the way that this spec feels good is that the CDR is something that you're really leaning into. I think that could be fun. Or maybe something we don't know is that the ancestors crank. And then that makes sense, but I would I think I would rather have the ancestors be more practical and more consistent than super RNG and really powerful. I feel like that just doesn't especially for healers, that's like a super weird profile. Uh what is it? The issue is that it's random and any Ellie or Resto Shaman main can tell you they really gotta get procs when you don't need them. Yeah, I'm just saying, guys, I've read Doggy Doggy Trees, and they seem like you have to just remake the tree. And I could name, like, four of them, where it's like, you just started on the wrong foot, and you have to just do it again. I don't think they actually have to do them. I don't think they have to do that here. I think they can... I think they can turn this around. I don't think this is one of them. I like the idea of calling down the Ancestors... I think they're like half of these nodes are good. Half of them are not very great, but even in some of the really good trees, some of the nodes aren't perfect and the bottom is horrible. They just need to, they need to put this one back in the oven for a bit. I think they have the right idea. It just has to be, I mean, just significantly better than this. Uh, okay. I would not rate this highly <laughs> for sure. This is worse than the Oracle priests. Okay. Stop the guys. Come on come there's that's what you just said isn't true and you know that it's not true unless 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 you're like so i mean i can kind of respect being so biased towards your class that yeah yo dude okay you guys are memeing on hydro bubble i think this owns Like, with enough Ancestors, I could see this doing a ton of healing. And saving lives, bro. I can't believe they called that shit Hydro Bubble. Alright, one second. Before we start the next one, big drink of water, boys. Uh, Max, there's a Wowhead Twitter post. And you should read that before looking at the Warlock tree. Okay. Uh, is this the one? Wait. <laughs> the Ellie Resto Shaman Farseer tree still doesn't seem to add much to the specs limited utility worst case they'll be able to see far from the bench holy fuck <laughs> oh my god um okay i actually want to push back a little bit on this i think ellie and resto need more defensiveness and they need more utility in the game specifically raid utility or raid buff uh, which also applies to Mythic Plus now. People refer to them as raid buffs, but I think this expansion that we're in right now has actually been defined by the viability of classes raid buffs in a dungeon, where they used to kind of be secondary. Um, I think... I don't think that these hero talent trees should be solving that issue, because if they do, they have to do it in both of the options. You know what I mean? And that's... That means, and if they don't do it in both, then you always have to play the hero talent that gives you value, which is bad. So like, I just don't, 
I think they need better defensives, and I think they need better utility. They need raid utility, whatever. But, like, it should not come from these trees. It should come from when the alpha comes out and we see what their new uh, class and spec trees look like. Like, that's that's where you do that. Or you bake it in. You, you don't you do not do it in the hero talents. Uh, that, that's not what you were telling me to look at, though. Uh, you said to look in Discord, but there's no other tweet linked in Discord. So maybe I just look on Wowhead? Please, Max, you're reaching. <laughs> reaching farther than a Farseer from the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here we go. Clarification for Wither and Hellcaller Hell Warlocks. Hello. We've seen some confusion regarding Hellcaller talents. Please know that Cataclysm and Seed of Corruption will apply Wither, and Wither is instant cast for Destro and Affliction. Okay. Cool. Love that. All right, so I don't really know how Warlocks work, so we're just going to try to figure this out, but... Ooh, replacing Corruption. Okay. Uh... Uh... Replaces Corruption with this and replaces Immolate. Bestow a vile malediction upon the target, burning the sinew and muscle of its host, dealing shadow... I, I could have just said it's a dot. I can't believe I read all of that. I bet someone had so much fun writing that sentence. Uh, okay, going down the left. Uh, shadow damage by... Okay, irrelevant. Curse of Tongues applies Curse of Weakness. Or, wait, no, other way around. That's kind of nice. Save a little, little GCD in there. Uh, enemies... Within 10 yards are affected by your Curse of Weakness and Curse of Tongues at 75% effectiveness. Oh! And that's a choice node? That's kind of... That seems real good. Uh, We like that. That's real, real, real. I mean, that's going to be so nice for... Uh, for just dungeons forever. Uh, Okay. Uh, agony damage is increased by 10%. Agony is now a combo skill. Directly recasting agony within two seconds supplies agony to one other nearby enemy. What? So you put up agony twice on the same target, which will pandemic it, I guess. And then the benefit is you pandemic that agony at the same time as you're spreading it. And it also removes the need of tab targeting. So you're like... It just sounds like you're, instead of tab targeting, you can just agony, but you're also, it's also pandemicking the, the dot as well, right? Oh, wait. Never mind. I'm, I'm so stupid. You would agony target one. You don't have to do it at the same target. You agony target two, you get a third agony for free. That's what it is. And then wither damage, which is immolate, increased by 10%, and it's now a combo skill. Oh, interesting. Directly recasting Wither within two seconds applies it to one other enemy. So it makes it easier to multi-dot. Uh, for both, uh, both specs. Is all of this going on to YouTube? Uh, Frank will probably make a YouTube video, but I'm also live on YouTube right now, which is still weird, and I feel like I'm leaving them out because I'm just completely ignoring them. Uh, okay. Uh... Down here. Blackened Soul. Your damaging abilities further corrupt enemies affected by your Wither, increasing its stack count by one. Wait. Your damaging abilities further corrupt enemies... So, when you cast into an enemy that has Immolate on it, or Corruption, it increases its stacks. It's gonna stack. And each time Wither increases, it has a chance to become acute, dealing damage to its host every one second until one... Oh, this is good. Right? Wither will always become acute after reaching 8 stacks no matter what or when the host reaches 20% health. That's sick. I think it's a really, really cool way to look at dots. Sounds really good. And especially because I'm imagining there can be a lot of interaction with, like, how many times that's happening. Uh, Wither deals 100% damage, but its duration is 50% shorter. Uh, Why would you want that? Because wouldn't that also make it... I mean, it's just way more GCDs. I mean, it just depends on how much damage it does versus the viability of this. 
Because it's not going to increase the damage of, of this, right? Maybe it is. Um, read the next talent and it synergizes. Okay, well, I'm going to read the other choice note first. Wither damage increased by 15%. When Wither gains a stack from Black and Soul, it has a chance to gain an additional stack. Okay. So, yeah, it's like this choice note is kind of like, do you want a shorter dot or a longer dot? And if you have the longer dot, we'll make it even better. Uh, casting Wither directly or refreshing Wither with less than four seconds left causes it to gain three stacks instantly. Okay, so that's going to feel a lot better because you're refreshing it much more often. Uh, and you're casting it much more often. So, yeah, this one... I mean, it also works with both. Uh, but it definitely makes Hate hate Fury Rituals a lot more viable. Uh, also really good with... We mentioned earlier with the dev note that... Uh, not this part here. Um, that Seed of Corruption applies with her. Uh, so that's going to go insane, right? In AoE... Casting Wither directly. Oh, no. Is that Casting Wither directly, though? It's not, right? It's spreading it. It's, it shouldn't be... But it is refreshing it. It is refreshing, yeah. But, like, you... You would have to take Hate Fury Rituals, and you wouldn't be spamming Seed. Right? You would be... I mean, Seed Spam would still be sick because, I mean, you're just going to be gaining stacks from doing it, right? Uh, that seems really good. Uh, let's read the right first. Fire... Okay, whatever. Uh, when you consume a Health Stone, you also restore 10% of your max health as Soul Leech. Uh, okay, so an Absorb. Sacrifice an Ill Hoof's Design. Sacrifice 10% of your max health. Soul Leech now absorbs an additional 15% of your max health. Uh, so this is the defensive node that every class by default needs to get, which I don't understand. Uh, that second one seems worse. Is that second one? Is that actually bad? Like, I, I, I could see it absorbing more I could see it absorbing more with, like, less damage, but when you're doing a hard fight that's actually trying to kill you, your max health pool is so relevant, and I just don't even think... I just think that would actually make you die more often. You almost never reach Soul Leech Cap? Yeah, it's bad then. Well, I mean, the first one isn't that good either, so if you're just playing Zevrim's Resilience, that is super nothing, which is good, because some classes, turns out, they don't actually need defensives, and Warlocks are one of them. Um, actually... I wonder how true that would feel if they weren't verse stacking this raid. I felt like Warlocks are certainly not squishy. They're certainly not even mid-defensiveness. But one thing that's happened with class trees is that other classes have surpassed Warlocks in tankiness. To where Warlocks, which were once OP, like kind of haven't changed at all. Uh, and other classes have like just gone up insane throughout the expansion so it's uh just an interesting way to look at it i felt different about warlocks this expansion um and then blackened souls deals five percent increased damage per stack of wither and then just in general also agony deals damage and wither deals damage 10 percent faster and the bottom the thing that ties it all together the thing that ruined the farseer tree in my opinion Dark magic erupts from you and corrupts your soul for 20 seconds, causing enemies suffering from your wither to take shadow flame damage and increase its stat count by three on a one-minute CD. Uh, I'm not familiar with Affliction and Destro, but in a, in probably like four or five of these so far, they've added one-minute CDs to classes. Does a one-minute CD feel good on Affliction and Destro, is that something that... I mean, just in general, 1-Minute CD is, like, probably the literal best timing of a cooldown in the entire game. But, like, I just don't know if you have weird shit that doesn't line up. Yes. Lines up with other CDs. Okay. Uh, in Affliction, 
Also, your active withers are acute, which whatever the fuck that... Your haste is increased by 10% and Malefic Rapture grants one additional stack of wither to targets affected by a UA. And then Destruction, while corrupted, your active withers are acute, your haste is increased by 10%, and your Chaos Bolt grants one additional stack of wither. Uh, I don't know how Warlocks work. I'm just I'm just going to need you all to tell me if those things mean good or if those things are good. Oh, this is where we found out Malefic Rapture is still in the war within Sag. But it'll be strong. Nice. Okay. I wonder if you'll still have Siphon Life. Dude, oh my god. I really hope... Or no, I think we got the last Affliction Tree, right? We got, uh, isn't Diabolist? Oh no, Diabolist was Destro and Demo. Okay, so we have the two Destro trees. So dude, I really hope that Soul Harvester is Siphon Life based. Well, I don't really hope that, but I just like at the Agent of Chaos inside of me wants that to be the case. Okay, um, all right, we are on the last one. And then we'll, uh, we'll add them to our rankings. Slayer. I have a, I have huge hopes for Slayer. I hope they brought Execute back. Devnote, Devnote. Okay, we'll check the Devnote. God, I'm so sad the Windwalker ones were that that bad. Brutal. Uh, where's the Devnote? Fury will have access to Bladestorm via Spec Talents in the War Within. Oh. Okay, I'm assuming that's where people were like, "What the fuck? This doesn't apply to Fury." Okay, so Fury be spinning. Damn, the few times they've they've only had to mention things like, by the way, you don't have to stand in your D&D &D next expansion, and also, by the way, Fury will have Bladestorm. They've only had to mention these when that directly contradicts or makes one of these hero talents that they're releasing confusing. It sounds like they're making a fucking ton of changes, by the way. Because the ones that they've noted are pretty significant, and they've only had to do that when it like directly contradicts with something. So, Can't wait for Alpha, that's for sure. Um, let's see. Your attacks have a high chance to overwhelm your target's defenses and trigger a Slayer's Strike, dealing low damage and applying Marked for Execution, increasing the damage they take from your next execute by 10% stacks three times. Uh, so... I'm not wowed by this right away. The dealing low damage thing is... The reason they're pointing that out is they, they just assumed that marked for execution is going to be the thing that is super, super sick. The question is how often, as Fury in Arms, are you executing in your rotation? And is it going to be often enough to always have three stacks? And also, they need to build something down here to where when you exceed three stacks, you get some kind of value from it. Or increase that amount. Uh... Okay, Sudden Death's chance to reset the cooldown of Execute and make it usable on any target regardless of health is just increased no matter what. And using Sudden Death accelerates your next Bladestorm, striking one additional time. Bladestorm's total duration is unchanged. Okay, so like AoE and single target and your... Bla How many times does Bladestorm deal damage right now? How many strikes are in Bladestorm? total right now dude it's so funny people are just making shit up seeing a lot of numbers from five to eight and no one actually knows okay so we're gonna go with six okay so it strikes six times and because you're playing this it's gonna actually hit nine times so it'll do 50 percent more blade storm swings so your blade storm is 50 percent stronger wow uh Dude, Max, some guy just said it's six for Fury, like Fury even has it right now. <laughs> Wait, someone did say that. Right now it's six for Fury. That's so fucking hype. I love making shit up. Making shit up goes crazy, man. Uh, You heal for 50% of the damage dealt by sudden death. Uh... So I'm assuming that's their defensive node. That could be actually really good, right? Is that the execute? 
No, 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 no. Okay, that's actually sudden death. That's actually bad. If it's the execute that you do by sudden death, then that's that's big old healing. So, yeah. Uh, okay, marks for execution, which is probably something I'm not aware of. Marks for execution increases the crit strength chance and damage of your next execute on the target by 5%. What is that? Oh, that's the free execute? Oh, this thing. Uh, mark for execution. So it can stack three times. So not only will your execute do 30% more damage, but also its crit strike and damage will also be increased by 15%. The crit damage by 15% is pretty weak, but the crit strike chance is pretty huge. Um... Let's see, going down the middle. Each strike of Bladestorm applies... Ooh, which is why the strikes are relevant. Each strike of Bladestorm applies overwhelmed to all enemies affected, increasing damage taken by 1% for 10 seconds. So it would be... Someone in chat clarified that Bladestorm does damage 7 times. So assuming that stays the same, it would actually be 10. So it would be 10% damage taken for 10 seconds. So Bladestorm not only hits almost 50% more uh, times, but it'll also give you a 10% damage increase for 10 seconds. Um, lit. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. They they clarified. It's only six for Fury right now. Um, let's see. Slayer Strikes have a chance to reset the cooldown of Bloodthirst and Overpower. What the fuck is that? What are, what are Slayer Strikes? The top node? Oh, dude, there's so many different words in this. It's called Slayer's Dominance. It triggers Slayer Strikes and gives you stacks of Mark for Execution. Come on, man. Just call it the, the first thing. Okay, uh, uh, let's see. Slayer Strikes have a chance to reset the cooldown of Bloodthirst and Overpower. So that just depends, like... Basically, throughout your rotation, for Arms or Fury, will it feel good to have random resets on Bloodthirst and Overpower? Uh, I don't know. Uh, cooldown of Overpower reduced by 10 or Bloodthirst reduced by 10. So do you want random resets or do you want passive? 10% CDR is so rough, though. I don't know. I think both of those don't feel awesome, but they're just, it's like a minor note, I guess. Uh, Overpower and Bloodthirst have a chance to cause you to unleash a brief Bladestorm. Oh, okay. We're going way into Bladestorm. I thought this was going to be more execute based, and it certainly is, but they're like doing heavy Bladestorm synergy here. Uh, Overpower and Bloodthirst have a chance to cause you to unleash a brief bla Bladestorm, striking all enemies around you once, and you can now use Pummel and Storm Bolt while Bladestorming. Okay, so I was just about to say, imagine you're about to kick something, and then you're just randomly bladestorming, and you can't, and then you get fucked. But just in general, being able to use utility while bladestorming is sick. I wonder why they stopped at Stormbolt. I wonder why that doesn't also include other forms of CC, like Shockwave or something. Uh, on the right, Charge removes all movement impairing effects, and grants you 70% movement speed for 3 seconds. <clears throat> Uh, does that include roots? So charge is a freedom? I mean, that would, I mean, that's good in PvE too, depending on the fight. Um, and heroic leap reduces the cooldown of charge by five seconds and charge reduces the cooldown of heroic leap by five seconds. So if they ever make Razageth again but they increase the amount of knockbacks by like three times, warriors will be the only class that can possibly live the knockback. So they're, they're set up for that too. DK? Maybe with uh, that one talent that gives you the free movement speed thing. Uh, time Spiral. Oh, by the way, wait, does that... Does Time Spiral give you a free use of Death's Advance? It does, right? So it would give you the Rider of the Apocalypse version? Oh my fucking god. That is that is by far the best button that Time Spiral re reduces now, right? I mean, it's like way fucking better than everything else. <laughs> okay. 
Um, cool. Uh, your auto attack speed increases while you are in combat. Changing targets resets this effect. Okay, single target. And execute increases your auto attack speed for 10 seconds. By how much? Uh, your att auto attack speed increases while you're in combat and changing targets resets this effect. I mean, that's, is it like, is it literally just raid versus mythic plus? Is it pure single target versus target swapping? It's literally called tunnel vision. Okay. And last one to pull it together before the capstone. Uh. That doesn't seem right. Isn't it the exact same thing? Is that what it said on the... Ah, it's a wowhead diff, wowhead diff, wowhead diff, wowhead diff. Uh, it's overpowered damage by 10% in Bloodthirst, and this one's CDR. Okay. Still... Man, so I don't know if the capstone's gonna tie it all together here. But you can tell the quality of these trees and how many ideas they had by how many nodes they have to put in that say shit like this. Go back to the splinter tree. Go back to spell slinger and see how many times they have to just have some basic ass shit like just giving you some really, really minor thing like this. You could just bake. I don't know. Um, some people have pointed out that having these nodes is very specific because it's the tuning knob. Like if they know they want you to focus on overpower and bloodthirst obviously, and execute and Bladestorm as Slayer. Those are the things you can buff if Slayer is underperforming compared to the other options, right? All right, last one. When you execute a target that you've marked for execution, reduce the cooldown of Bladestorm by five seconds per stack of marked for execution and apply stacks of Overwhelmed equal to the number of stacks of marked for execution the target have. What is Overwhelmed again? Dude, so many, so many words. Uh, second middle. Oh, overwhelm. Oh, I see. Each strike of blade storm implies overwhelmed, increasing one for ten seconds, and this does for every single one. It'll also give them that many stacks. I mean, you're definitely not wowed by this tree, right? I think they have the right idea. It's like the execute Bladestorm synergy sounds good. The quality of life of being able to do things in Bladestorm is good. But there's just a couple of nodes that just seem like they're not really taking you anywhere. But it's not bad. This is not a bad tree. Wait, overwhelmed buffs everyone? Wait. Wait, oh, uh, that's, that's, I don't think that's how that works. That, that, that is what it says. Ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no fucking way your entire raid would just be Fury Warriors. That would be completely broken. Yeah. Uh, what, it, what he's saying is it does say each type of blade form in, Blade Storm increases the damage they take by whatever percent, let's say 10%. And it doesn't necessarily say increases your damage. They just says that they increase damage taken. Warrior utility. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, utility. We can call it utility. Just bring, bring the spinning boys. All right, so let's go ahead and add these. It's been a long day. Let me finish my food and let you guys kind of talk to me about these real quick, and then I'll, uh... Get a drink of water and then I'll rank them. Sure. What's the best one I read today? It's got to be Flame Shaper or uh, Spell Slinger, Rider's Good. Massive attack. Let's see, 50 50 today. <clears throat> Dude, they gave 12 today. That's crazy. Yeah, there weren't as many 
there were like as many bangers today as there were the last time, but they released four less trees. Max, check the Wowhead Twitter post for Shaman. I already did. This one? It's pretty it's a pretty sick burn. Max, I think Hellcaller leaked a change to Unstable Affliction. The text says targets instead of target. Might be unrestricted past one target in the War Within. Wait, where does it say that? Oh, and UA can go on three targets in PvP, so it might be a PvP thing. It's left side. While Corrupted, your active withers. Haste increased by 10. Malefic Rapture grants one additional stack of wither to targets affected by Unstable Affliction. Maybe, maybe it's a leak. I think it could just be said like that. But, but I mean, I think the other ones have shown us in the little we've heard from the devs that they've changed a lot of classes. There's a lot of changes. So, could be. Totemic has to be doggy, right? That's what I'm saying. It has to be, bro. Sad Mistweaver feels when Max gets them to totally rework Conduit of the Celestials when it's great for us. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I don't even think I hated Conduit of the Celestials as much as a lot of other people. But, I mean, it's definitely not good for us. But it is interesting to know that Mistweavers like it. Problem is that it confirms Jade Fire Stomp and Rushing Jade Wind stays in the game. Uh, I mean, so again, it's heavy copium. It's heavy. I'm acknowledging that before I say it. There are versions of Rushing Jade Wind that have existed in this game that are great. We don't know what Rushing Jade Wind looks like in the expansion. In my opinion, Rushing if they don't change Rushing Jade Wind, they would be foolish if they're going to put it in a talent tree and leave it as it is. Like, oh, people haven't selected this expansion. That'll be fun. No, people aren't selecting it because it's bad, but also it's just extremely unfun garbage, right? Um, there's a lot you can do to make Russian Jade Wind better. Uh, same thing with Jade Fire. Jade Fire Stomp instantly becomes better the second you take a 10-second maintenance buff off of it. Instantly. Just remove Jade Fire Harmony, and this spell is makes a bit more sense. I mean, I, I don't like it in general, but, like, that's the main problem. Uh, and having to stand in it. Three patches into new talent system, still no bone dust legendary on Windwalker. Oh yeah, doesn't Mistweaver have it? Is 
Is it brew? Oh, yeah. Your abilities have a low chance to cast Bone Dust Brew. Bountiful Brew. Love just getting Bone Dust. Yeah, here's our option. <laughs> ah, fucking sensational. Oh my god, that's so bad. Let's increase the radius of Bone Dust Brew, in which, by the way, your spinning crane kick isn't 50% bigger. So, let's just say there's a perfect scenario where the mobs are so spread where the radius hits more of them. You wouldn't even be able to spinning crane kick them. And it's a capstone. Oh my god, someone should be in jail. I'm mad, and now I'm mad. Look at that. I was having a good day, and now I'm mad. God. Now I'm mad. You know, before I rate these, I'm going to play an ad now because I'm mad. I'm going to play an ad. I'm going to refill my water. I'm going to take out Reptar, and then I'm going to rank all of these. Get an ad then, unless you're on YouTube.
Farsi or Resto is just blue holy priest Naru summon, but they don't get PI. What are you, what did you just say? My brewmaster friend is super pissed at Mistweaver and Windwalker getting Nijuao in the conduit tree. Yeah, I'm surprised. Wouldn't conduit be something that's like really popular for all the specs? Wait, but being pissed is kind of a lot, right? Like that's 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 maybe extra. Do you guys think we'll get that change in Dragonflight where or in uh, the War Within where uh, the bottom of the monk class tree isn't three serpent or three statues that absolutely no one cares about? Okay, and now I'm mad again. But it wasn't even you; it was me. I made myself mad. I made myself mad. Look at that. Uh, all right. Let's rate them with the help of you all. Okay? So when I ask you all for your opinion, if you don't actually play that spec, you have to not type. And I know you guys will respond to this too. You'll, you'll, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know whether to do it or not. Uh, let's see. Slayer. I think they're on the right track. I think they got the executes popping. It's definitely going to increase. I'm surprised there isn't more. I'm surprised there isn't more execute benefits that aren't just from the proc. Like, it seems like it's much more about sudden death procs. But, man, I'm really looking for, like, execute phase to be, like, crazy. But maybe they can't do that with, like, PV PvP. Like, I don't know. I'm, like, looking at the mid-specs. Here, let's do this. I, I looked at the mid-specs. The mid-specs are not, uh... Let's see. Keeper of the Grove, Chrono Warden, Dark Ranger, and Colossus. Like, this is just better than those. But I don't think it's really cool either. I think it, uh, it might just be high-mid. Might be high-mid... Which is really sad. It's definitely not really cool. Like they've they've got really cool ideas, but they're not they didn't pull it all together. So it needs a little work. Slayer needs a little work for me. Has some talent tree issues for Fury right now. I it's really hard to do, but you kinda have to look past that because I think these talent trees that we are looking at right now are totally different than what these devs are looking at when they're making these. Like, totally different. Especially if you did not get a bunch of talent tree attention in this expansion. Uh, what else we got? Let's move up. We got Hellcaller. I don't think Hellcaller is super insane, but it's, I mean, it's it's really cool at the, at the, at the base level, right? It's, uh... It's not as cool as Diabolist yet. Well, I don't know about power. Power is really hard to tell. It's like, are you going to actively be looking at like the stacks going off and stuff like that? Or is this just something you don't even track and it just happens? I don't know, actually. Also, did it fit the theme? Like it's called a hell collar and like, feel like it's just totally different than what it's called. Zero theme for Destro. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like it might be mid. It's literally just a... Like, you're, yeah, you're replacing Immolate and Corruption, but for what? I mean, it's just basic... Mm. It's either bottom of really cool or mid. What do you guys think? What are what are warlocks saying? What are non THD warlocks saying? Let's see. Kalamazi. Hellcaller hero talents are much more in depth. Then Diabolist, but I think maybe deceptively powerful. Baby Dark Soul is back with a one minute cooldown. So it sounds like Kalamazi's hyped. 
THD hates everything. Let's see what THD said, though. He's not tweeting. Pretty based. All right. We're putting in really cool. Let's do it. Uh, what's next? We have Farseer. Okay, so I think shamans want to put this in really bad. I, I feel that. I, I can feel it. I, I think it's a step above. Guys, the really bad tier is on a totally different level. Those missed on theme. They missed on... They missed on... Really, everything... Like this, this, this wasn't that bad. The, the theme is actually great. It's just, there's not enough to support it. Like the only way you could put this in kind of bad is if you made another tier for other things. It locks you into P wave. I wonder what maybe thinks, bro. He was actually spamming in all caps. Is Max is enhanced the only spec in the game with no tree at all yet? Uh? Nah, there's a rogue spec. <clears throat> uh, whatever the rogue spec is that isn't on Trickster doesn't have any. Also, Shadow Priest doesn't have any. Don't worry. They're going to have one bad one with Totemic. That's 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 my that's my thought. Uh I'm putting Farseer here. Like you would have to miss on all fronts to be really bad. And they just simply didn't miss on theme. The gameplay isn't great, the synergy isn't great. It's not strong enough. The capstone is hilarious. But that's pretty true with these other things too. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a tier below these and a tier above really bad, but you just you just can't you just can't put it here. Also, Stormbringer. Stormbringer is Ellie and Enhance. I'm already calling it, boys. Up here. Stormbringer is going to be absolutely crazy. Uh. Okay. Conduit of the Celestials. So this one is weird. So for Windwalkers... This one's really bad. Maybe it's kind of bad. I actually think there's some stuff here. But what some Mistweavers were saying is Max cares so much about Windwalker that he's going to like call this really bad and then it's going to suck for Mistweavers. But like, it turns out Mistweavers. So, I don't know. I also think the theme is actually good though. Like, the theme of Conduit of the Celestials is is good. Like you, they're making the Celestials do stuff. I mean, this is literally Riders of the Apocalypse. It's the same shit, except with a four-second channel. Uh, but I mean, either way, it's still the theme. The theme works. They're making all the Celestials do stuff. Eight seconds. Yeah, maybe. This replaces Essence font. If Mistweaver thinks it's good and Windwalker thinks it's bad, then it's mid. I mean, that's... That's a compromise that works for me. But some Windwalker is going to see this and not understand that context and get very mad. <laughs> but they'll be okay. Uh, all right. Shadow pan. It's such a, it's just so weird. I could see this being super powerful, but it just seems so cluttered and all over the place in its design. I do like the CDR though. Love the CDR element of this. I think this one's also mid. 
it's just it's just weird, isn't it? Like I want to make a new tier called just weird as fuck. This is just so weird. The health thing is just so strange. Also, like, like oh, I didn't even I was only considering this for Windwalker. Like, oh yeah, they're gonna cast Rally or give you Fort, and you're gonna do less damage, bro. Imagine being a tank where you do less damage than a DPS and have significantly more health. Bro, I think this one's even worse. Does it miss on theme? I don't even really know what the theme of Shadow Pan is, but I think so. Does it... It seems, it seems a lot more powerful than all these, but I try to ignore power in this. Does it have good synergy? I mean... Not really bad. The thing is, is like, I feel like if you put it in kind of bad, it's not going to get like looked at maybe. And it, it really needs, but I mean, probably every class would say that for something that isn't awesome. Under Farseer is crazy. Yeah, maybe. All right, going up. Spellslinger. Uh, that's at the very top. Uh, better or worse than Frost? I think Frostfire might be a little bit more interesting. I think I'd put it behind... I think I'd put it behind Scale Commander and Frostfire, but, I mean, that's just, like, super subjective. Like, probably... I still think Scale Commander is the best one in the game. Uh, yep, so mage, mage, who would have guessed? Uh, what do we got here? Uh, flame shaper. I, man. Let me like re read it a little bit again. I feel like this is also, so here's the deal. I think for devastation, this is a step behind scale commander. It's also not called Ruby Adept anymore. But for preservation, it's way up here. I feel like it's probably, like, at the bottom of the super insane tier. The Mega Nuke, yeah. That's actually going to do so much damage, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's keep going. Pack leader. <laughs> this was this this one might actually be really bad. Like there was this is the most uninspired nonsense. Like I actually think the talent when when Blizzard was like, all right, we're gonna do the totems as the statues, or we're gonna do the capstones as the statues, right? And then, like, but wait, we don't have a Windwalker statue. And then they made this, which I actually think someone in kindergarten probably could have made something more interesting than this. I think that is more inspired than the pack leader tree. This is just like, oh, well, they kind of cast kill command. It's not crazy with theme. You're not, like, commanding a bunch of pets. It's just, like, a bunch of minor increases, a somewhat interesting defensive node, and just... Nothing of value. Uh, I I think this is really bad. I think this is down here. I actually think this is on that level of like, there's no way you could go live with this shit. I think I think it's worse than Farseer. Farseer at least has some cool. Sh it has some CDR and it has some cool shit going on with uh 
with like summoning celestials or not celestials. Oh Jesus, so many hero towns today. Uh, summoning like uh ancestors, right? And they're like copying your spells and doing some shit. And when they go away, you get some CDR. Like like there's there's some sauce there that makes that great. It's not there yet, but it's there. This has nothing. <clears throat> this is just. What is it? Then put Dark Ranger there too. Uh yeah, I mean you could relook at Dark Ranger. So Dark Ranger, the thing is, is Dark Ranger has theme. And it has decent synergy within its kit, too. It's just that you don't know how good Killshot is yet. Like I and it's possible that I'm giving them credit that they haven't earned yet. But to me, the Dark Ranger tree made it pretty obvious that Killshot is going to be much more involved in the spec tree of BM next expansion. And uh, my mic is being hella weird right now. Um, Max says, one of the 12 survival players, pack leader, absolutely. Yeah, I think pack leader stinks. Like Dark Ranger, they got the theme exactly right. You like fucking disengage and you chain shit to the ground with these shadow chains and when your black arrow's out, it like little fucking shadow dogs come out of nowhere and just deal damage deal damage to the target. Plus, not to mention the gameplay. I have some issues with the way that of the duration of Black Arrow. But Black Arrow is like an iconic, awesome ability. When Black Arrow Survival was a thing and it proc explosive shot, like that was a super fun time in this game. Now it's doing that for MM and BM. Um, but it's like going to make the time that it's up, your gameplay is gonna be significantly better. Uh, the only thing is that kill shot stuff. I think saying pack leader and dark ranger are at the same tier is kind of insane, actually. Like, like if there's one thing they got right is what dark ranger is going to look like and what people want from that is right. Max, dark ranger should be marked survival melee weaving. I don't think they have that option. I think, uh, I think dark ranger... They know that 90% of hunters play BM and MM and are ranged only players. And for people who are looking forward to Dark Ranger, they were going to make sure that both MM and BM could play it. Case closed. And that's probably the right thing to do. Uh, okay, going up. A Druid of the Claw. I liked this a lot. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to reread a fucking massive attack, bro. I'm going to put it in really cool, but I think that, uh, I think that it could be super insane if the bear weaving feels great. I think that's the, that's like the unlock. Like if they can do that, I think that's awesome. I think just right now, if you're playing feral druid, but you're getting ferocious bite procs, in your cooldowns or in AoE that's putting out big bleeds and doing fat damage and AoEing everything. That just sounds fun to play. You already have the tree that's fully based on dots, even though I think those vines could be a lot better. And plus, the main thing just says massive attack. I like that. Actually, massive attack is consideration for Super Insane, I think. Max, a little off topic, but I find Flame Shaper more interesting than Scale Commander for Devastation. Really? I can go back and read them side by side after this. Uh, Scale Commander is so cool. <laughs> okay, um, let's look. Uh, Aldrachi Reaver. So until I read the fact that you were getting that hunt CDR back here, I was not a fan of this. Seems really whatever. Gameplay wise, it's S tier. Really? Like your throw glaive's gonna proc, which is gonna make your chaos strike and your blade dance proc. But then also you have to choose where you use it because the second enhancement is getting like hella buffed. And then it's like a four button combo kind of that ends with that with Thrill the Fight. 
I guess it does have something interesting here. It has, like, for the movement players, you can get a second vengeful retreat for, like, a ton of energy, which would be really, really nice for Fel Barrage. And then if people are no movement gamers, if you ever have to Fel Vengeful Retreat, you get a Fel Blade instantly, which, like, solves the problem of moving. You're, like, instantly back at your target. Um, for tanks, Fel Blade is a 10% DR, which is kind of interesting. I don't think this is really bad. I don't know. Nothing about this wows. Its theme is non-existent, basically, but the gameplay seems decent. I think this is a... This is just... It's just mid. It's just mid. It's mid. I'm thinking too much. It has no wow factor in quotes. Wait, do you think that was a bit because wow is called wow? There's that's way too meta. Okay, uh, Rider of the Apocalypse. So this is the best theme of everything. Probably they nailed the theme for sure. It's gonna make Death Knight's movement significantly better for the rest of time, which is kind of crazy. I do have two gripes with this tree. The main one is, and this might not be relevant, but until we see the the War Within spec and class trees, which are definitely different, having to take Frostworm's Fury here is weird. Uh, they spent half of this spec tree just exp just making Mograine, White Mane, Trollmane, and Nazgrim do things that they could have just had in the original tooltip to begin with. Which just means less synergy. The defensive node is super overpowered regardless which one you take. Uh, I don't know. I, I just... Like, I just... You can't compare the gameplay of this. to some of these insane ones. But the theme is just so perfect. So weird. I don't know where to put this. Like, I... If it's super insane, it's at the very bottom of this. But I don't know. I feel like you could just be playing Unholy DK for the first time. And when you press army and the fucking four horsemen come out. I feel like it's just going to feel like the theme actually carries so hard that. It's actually crazy. Not to mention the death charge thing is one of the coolest things ever. Like the death charge. Ability is like that. That is the like maybe the best movement ability in the entire game. Like this, super cracked. I'm gonna leave it bottom of super insane. What is Atlas saying? Let's see. How do you, like, search a Discord for what someone's type? I don't know what he's saying. From user? Yeah, but when you're, when you're in streamer mode, it doesn't work. Like, you can't do that. All right, let me disable streamer mode. Hopefully, I get a bunch of noties. And then let's search from Atlas. <laughs> I'm not making this up. He has typed twice today and he typed I am going to come and then 1 minute later he typed come town USA. That's all that's all he's typed today. So uh so we're good. We're good. That's that's what he thinks. Okay. <laughs> That's where I live. 
Um, okay, well, all right, we have it in the super insane tier. I'll move it up one or two because of that. I can't put it above Templar. That's just... Is Herald of the Sun and Templar too low in the super insane tier? I mean, it's super subjective, but like, I don't know. These, these ones might actually just be as good as anything. Maybe even just Templar. Herald of the Sun is also sick. All right, there. That looks cooler. Scale Commander is too high. Absolutely false. Deathbringer. I like this. Deathbringer was good. Deathbringer is really good. Oh, yeah. The damage node was like, why is one of those a thing? This one is like not even close to a choice. You always take the first one. So some of the choice nodes don't make any sense. Um, Really, really good gameplay, though. I think I think this is going to feel really nice. And then theme. I mean. How do you accomplish the theme of Deathbringer? I mean, it, something like this, right? You're going to have, like, fucking these crazy scythes come out after you do this. Like, it's going to look pretty sick. You're going to look very Grim Reaper-y. This is cool. This is really cool. Somewhere up there. Yeah. And then you're also just going to be giving out random soul reapies. That's good. And you don't even have to spec it. Uh, okay. So the question is, we're only, how many do we have left? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11, right? We have 11 that we haven't seen yet. We have not seen a single Shadow Priest one. We have not seen it, seen a single Assassination Rogue one. We haven't seen a single Enhance one. Which one of these are like guaranteed to be good? Probably the Mage one. <laughs> uh, Stormbringer sounds like it's going to be super crazy. Sentinel is going to be good. Well, the only thing that... <clears throat> I know about Sentinel is Sentinel Owl, which is like, why does that exist? Uh, but yeah, it could be good. Deathstalker sounds edgy. Yeah. I just feel so bad for Shadow Priest. Like, you know, probably actually... I'll say it. And they don't think this because they hate everything. But I think one of these are going to be awesome. I think Shadow I think Shadow Priest is getting an awesome tree. You got two chances. Ain't no I, I I'm going to either Archon or Void Weaver is going to be super insane. I think they're getting that shit. All right, guys, calling it now. Archon is, it's going to be, wait, wait, what is Archon shared between? Is that, is that Holy Priest and Shadow? All right, never mind. I was going to say Archon is going to be the new Surrender to Madness. You're going to go Archon form like Wizards in Diablo 3. And you're just going to be, an, it's just going to make you a, insane cooldown class you're gonna have this fat ass cooldown class but that wouldn't really work with holy i don't think like if anything void weaver would probably be that like just because of the synergies with disc Wait, what did this guy say? If Voidweaver has surrendered to madness again, I'll eat my own ass on cam, said this guy. 
Jesus. Pin it? No, I don't want to. I don't want that to happen. That sounds. That's just. That's not good for anybody. You kind of want to see it? <laughs> Let's rank the rest of them by name. Stormbringer at the top. Felsguard. Eh. It's like a Sentinel. Eh. Sun Fury. Uh, you just already know. Master of Harmony. What is it? Brewmaster Mistweaver? Eh. Archon. Yes. Voidweaver. Yes. Fatebound. Oh. Deathstalker. No. Actually, Deathstalker is kind of sick. Uh, Totemic is going to be the worst one of all of them. And then Soul Harvester is going to be super insane. That's it. Oh, no. Wait. Now I can't. Now I can't. Uh, how do you, like, take them out now? Can you not do it without, uh, can you not do it without resetting it? I'm like trying to drag it. It's not working. Dude, you're telling me, oh, oh, you're right. I could, I could add a row below called pending. Oh no, shit. Almost fucked that up. Unreleased. Unrelease. Unreleased. Uh, shit. I, what are the ones that are not out? Let's slam it. Let's see. Soul Harvester. Uh, Totemic. Fatebound. Sentinel. Felsguard. Master of Harmony. Uh, Deathstalker. Voidweaver. Archon. Sun Fury. Stormbringer. Is that it? They could also change names. I mean, yeah, if someone wants to change Ruby Adept, that would be sweet, but... Max, there's no way Pack Leader is really bad. It doesn't make the class worse like the other three. But that's not necessarily what really bad means. I mean, I guess you could draw the line there. Like, which one of these things makes your class actually worse by even existing? That is true, but with, in my opinion, I think that's true with Lightsmith. That's absolutely true with Oracle, although it is being re remade. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily true with Trickster, though. Max Reels... Leaked, uh, leaked fell scarred. Oh, it's not even a good bit. It's just sin. He just says sinful brand a lot as a joke. Pack leader belongs in the boring as fuck. Yeah, but like, I don't know. If we want to get really weird, we could do a bunch of tiers that are more specific than really bad. Like you can have a amazing theme, bad gameplay. You can have bad synergy, bad theme, good power. Like you could do a thousand of these. I think it's, it's okay. Like the most confusing one on here by far, the most confusing one by far is the fact that Conduit of the Celestials is really bad for Windwalker and super insane for Mistweaver. So it's mid on this thing which is incorrect for both of them. <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely going to make people mad and confuse people, but <laughs> Max check blue post for Conduit of the Celestials update. Ooh. We found an error. 
and oh wait, we'd like to note that we're planning on making updates to Mistweaver Monk and the War Within to remove Essence font from the talent tree along with changes throughout the talent tree to accommodate this and ensure that gameplay is not disrupted. Bro, these talent trees look so different and we just don't even know it yet. Like anytime they've spoken on this, they're like, oh yeah, this major thing is gone. <laughs> uh, okay, but either way, the uh, this will kind of replace that. Okay, we found an error in our updated our blog post to reflect this. The tooltip for Courage of the White Tiger should read, Tiger Palm of Vivify have a 50% chance to cause Wenda Claw nearby enemy for physical damage, healing an nearby ally, by, nearby ally for 15% of the damage done. Isn't that what it... Isn't that what it said? Oh, is that the one where it had like two randomly? Oh, healing was 100%. Yeah. Oh, and, and for, it's Tiger Palm and Vivify, too, that also. If they're healing a nearby alley for 15% of the damage done, that is going to do a ton of damage. Max, is a dev note involving D&D? Yeah, I saw that. That was super hype. Dude, why is Rider in Super Insane? It has nothing that you do yourself. It's all passive summons. Yeah, we talked about that. So I brought all of that up and basically it gets carried by the cool factor of the name and what's going on so much that it looks that it overlooks that. Like something that every other thing in the Super Insane tier has is crazy synergies and awesome gameplay that are entirely exist because of the hero talent. And it like adds really good gameplay on top of what you're already doing. It's just enhancing what you're doing by a lot. The Rise of the Apocalypse doesn't really have that, except it gives you a crazy new movement ability and makes you pop off more in your cooldowns and you summon horsemen. But that is so sick that... Like, the theme of this just dunks everything else. That's why. Not to mention, and I don't know if this is necessarily true with Unholy or with Blood, but... Not every spec is the same. There are specs where you could add a bunch of gameplay on top of what you're already doing, and it's a really good thing. And there's other specs that already have a decent amount going on and a lot of buttons, and that's not necessarily true. And you don't need that many extra things going on. It's Frost and Unholy. Yeah. Okay, that's your opinion? Well, yeah, I mean, this is what the fuck is going on here. You're watching my stream where I'm giving you my opinion on where these things. Yeah, it's exactly what do you think? I'm like, ob I'm like objectively ranking these for the whole community. I'm just fucking I'm just <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Uh, Max. Do you know how many people you have watching on YouTube? Right now we're down to 2,500, uh, but we were at 3,500 earlier. Fucking crazy, by the way. And I have a pretty good idea of what my Twitch viewership is. Normally. And that's not cannibalizing viewership. Maybe, maybe 300 of those viewers, maybe, are Twitch viewers that are watching on YouTube so they don't get ads because they have YouTube Premium. I had like six and a half K viewers earlier. That's a little bit more than I had last time I was talking about hero talents. And so it's always hard to tell because I think the hype for WoW is kind of increasing with like alpha and beta coming up in season four stuff. But I'm pretty sure me dual streaming increased my overall viewership by like two to three K today. Right around there. Which is pretty fucking insane. Like super, super. I had no idea co-streaming was this OP fucking wild i guess it just it kind of makes sense right like like think about it like this right if you're just browsing youtube and you want to watch one of my videos right so like let's just say on your uh on your like youtube page you're like i don't know you're just watching whatever and then one of my videos pops up right oh not maximum bods
and you're like just scrolling through your regular page and your algo hits you with the uh like just one of my videos and then you are like oh wait that guy's live that's cool i'm never on twitch but i see i see max on here and i've never caught his stream before and i'm just gonna catch that i mean clearly I, you can tell from the viewership today that it was not cannibalizing my twitch viewership it was pretty much purely additional which like i guess i i underrated co-streaming i guess um So, like, the reason that co-streaming didn't make a lot of sense to me is I think a lot of people were talking about co-streaming in regards to, like, growing your stream. There's no discoverability as a streamer if you're trying to, like, get big, right? The only way you can, like, get bigger as a streamer is to make TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube content, and then you grow your stream from that. That's, like, the only thing that works nowadays. Like, if you're just streaming, amplifying your discoverability... If the discoverability on streaming is zero and you stream in four different places, you're not growing, right? But if you already have an established stream and you have on YouTube and like an established stream, from what I could tell in a one day sample size is it is extremely, extremely fucking broken to co-stream and I can't believe I haven't done this before. Although I did just recently get out of a Twitch contract that did not allow me to do this. Like when they announced co-streaming being available, I was unable to do that for months after they announced that. Uh, that's a... Very recently for me, was I even allowed to do that at all? Uh, yeah. Wait, so what are the YouTube... Wait, so how, do, how can I even do this? Do I go to my channel and then you'll see that I'm live right now which wait what did Frank do as the live thing established YouTube helps a lot with streaming if you don't if you didn't have regular YouTube content co-streaming would be worthless you should keep doing it so I can watch more streams XD pull up tears back up oh shit Max is streaming he says as he's in the stream with me streaming that's very meta YouTube is much more convenient. Yeah, I mean, YouTube dunks on Twitch in a couple of ways. Here's one of them. Oh, you just missed what I said? All right, let me rewind it 20 seconds. Done. On Twitch, you have to open my VOD, wait for it to update. I mean, it's a million times better, right? Um, But have you been ignoring YouTube chat? Yeah, don't tell them. Don't tell them, but I... Uh, I haven't looked at what they've said the whole time until right now. Uh, because, and here's why you can get, um, you can get plugins that show both. Like I can read my YouTube and Twitch chat at the same time. I just wouldn't want to, maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try it and you guys can tell me if you hate it or not but i think it'd be kind of annoying what was this from oh yeah the writers of the apocalypse thing it looks so stupid when you bring it up afterwards um the yeah fusing it i mean i i didn't realize i was gonna have that many viewers that's kind of insane I don't even know if I make any money off of YouTube streaming, though. Like, does it play ads? If you don't have YouTube Premium... Hey, you guys right here. If you don't have YouTube Premium, was this playing ads today? On here? Is that is that how this works? I, I have no fucking clue how that works. Everyone on YouTube has Adblock. Okay, for anyone who's on here that doesn't have Adblock or YouTube Premium, someone give me an answer. Give me an answer. I'm going to ban someone on this chat forever. I don't want to do it. Right? I don't want to do that, but I, I have to if, if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't, right? Adblock or Easy hasn't had any 
Okay, don't have premium, got no ads. Oh, shit. Okay, so super easy then. <laughs> I guess I don't have the ad... I guess I don't have the ad button on. All good. We're going to have to change that for tomorrow, boys. <laughs> We're going to have to... Sorry. You know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. Um... Fuck, ban me, Max. Stop asking stupid questions. Dude, okay, someone had to go. Rock and stone time? It is It is my off day. I'm not doing a bunch of skating or workout after this. I mean, let's just see what people's uh, responses are, right? I mean, we could look at Wowhead comments. Oh, they're so mad, by the way. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Oh, wait, does Adblock work on YouTube but not Twitch? I mean, where do you even get feedback, right? Like, uh, oh, probably the individual post, right? But then you're going to be reading the WoW forums, and WoW forums trend heavy doomer. Uh, but let's see. So Slayer Warrior. Let's check that out. How many responses? Let us know what you think in this... Wait. So where's the actual thread? Oh, you have to go to the source? Okay. I really like what's going on in this tree. Best hero talent tree so far. All right. Please respond to the level 10 troll hunter. Let's... Let's let's maybe fucking relax a second, right? Maybe let's maybe let's just take a take a second and think about this. Uh, oh, this is a a warrior man. Cool theme. Enjoy the concept. Unless there's some concept, unless there's a particular interesting visuals attached, this doesn't seem to have the same cosmetic impact. It's focus and concept. Oh, this guy wrote. Oh, we're not reading this. No way. Overall, very exciting reveal. Okay, very underwhelming. But okay, that guy over there said it was the best in the game. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So not as Doomer. Uh, it has a couple issues that other more skilled warriors have already mentioned, but I'm overall happy with the tree. Look at this sweet guy. Um, Slayer W. So he has a lot riding on this tree, right? <laughs> like, it's very important. He's going to be Slayer W the Slayer. It's very similar to my Death Knight named World Destroy, the World Destroyer. Um, please, Tunnel Vision is a... Or Dosu's stupid character. His name was Azeroth Saver, and then he, ha he used the Savior of Azeroth title. Um, please, Tunnel Vision is a good idea and good for Mythic Plus or bosses you don't execute, so please, please, I beg. <laughs> Jesus. Don't make it reset. Just cease the momentum for the warrior player and the character. Let us have the buff all the time and decay when nothing is happening. <laughs> so you just want to get attack speed forever. <laughs> and when you're not attacking, it will slowly go away. Yeah, just just make it crazy. Very good, yeah. Second this. Get rid of the choice node and just rename it Freight Train. <laughs> or Frenzy Strikes. Or something where your auto attack speed increases while in combat. Dude, okay, having the talent named Freight Train goes wild, by the way. Uh, let's see. Warriors have a build that don't use blood, doesn't use bloodthirst. The only reason we used it the past two seasons is because of a set bonus bust its damage. So tying talents to bloodthirst without addressing that issue first is a bit of a misstep. See, this is where we don't know. They either have or could have completely changed this shit in the spec tree so far. You have no idea, right? Um, uh, that and make blades from but if they didn't this is good feedback though other than those thing, two things tree looks great uh so far i'm pretty impressed with the slayer talents you're a warlock buddy you you got exposed you left your main on uh i do not want to see slayer changed very much though personally i think it sounds really fun to play around and i cannot wait to test it out for myself however i hope you see the large difference in the two arms two for arms and buff the weaker one 
Wait, what's the large difference? Are people assuming this is going to be much stronger for arms than fury? Oh, wait. The developers already confirmed that fury would be reworked to address the bloodthirst versus raging blow competition during the Q&A. So Slayers not having any mention of Raging Blow implies that Bloodthirst will probably be the basis of Fury rotations going forward. Okay, so this guy already knows. Oh, I just remembered 10.2.6 is coming out Tuesday. What a, what a time to be alive. Check Shaman feedback. Oh, I don't want to. Guys, do we, do we really look at the shaman feedback? I feel like I feel like the shamans are probably not very nice on this blessed day. Or maybe maybe we do. Let's see. Uh no data to display. Okay. Hey guys, please check out our new preview and let us know what you think. Famous last words. The Farseer Shaman is terrible. <laughs> the very first thing. Literally fucking minutes after posting it. Yet it is so close to being amazing. Oh, wait. We're coming out of the dumps. Uh, Get rid of the ancestors. <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> That's the whole tree. That's so good. The Farseer Shaman is terrible, yet it's so close to being amazing. Step one, remove the whole tree, basically. The ancestors are everything. <laughs> okay, make it summon fire elementals. Wait, this is so specific. Make the summoned fire elementals cast flame shock on two to three targets. Get rid of the flame shock target cap. Okay, this guy is fucking cooking. Optional, make the tree give some CDR and prim wave. Let the targets of those new flame shocks get hit by your next lava. So just make it crazy. But is that, does that fit the theme of Farseer? I guess you could. Who says that these fire elementals can't, can't also see shit, right? Like the ancestors. Okay. And just also... And just also, resto shamans just don't exist, too. Um, Exaplume. I'm just very confused. This doesn't seem interesting at all. Just triggering a ghost that basically just acts like your mastery and sets up Farseer versus Stormbringer to be yet another extension of the existing elemental issue of the Meatballs versus Lightning Bolt conflict that has plagued the spec this expansion. Wait, this is actually a really good take. This guy is exactly right. That 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 is a huge issue with this. Um, uh, if you're going to give us another pet, why add into the tree things for our fire Ellies and storm Ellies? This talent should change our elementals into ancestors. Oh my God, what a cook! It oh, sorry, I'm going back. Uh, it brings up the current issue of fire versus lightning build, which, yeah, 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 only touches fire abilities. It gives nothing. That is a good point. So, some of these have done really well. I thought, uh, God, there was one of them today um, that I thought was going to go. Okay, it was like the the scale commander and uh, flame thing for devastation evokers. Like, you saw that one heavily focus on disintegrate, the scale commander tree, and it looked like they were just going to do some basic-ass this tree is disintegrate and this tree is fire and they actually made them both pretty variable and you could do both things. Um, but shaman is actually like painting itself into a fire versus lightning corner. And that's super, super boring. Like generally speaking, these classes don't, the classes that are blessed enough to actually have two fully functioning different gameplay styles within their spec trees that are both good when they're not altered by any outside forces. But then you give them tier sets that force you to play one of them. They have not generally liked that. Like you, you with hero talents and with tier sets, you need to leave, you need to leave room for interpretation to be able to play both. If you do it well, right? Like for example, if you're an enhanced shaman, 
I could totally see you wanting to just play an elemental enhanced shaman no matter what, and I could totally see you wanting to play physical or storm. And it having nothing to do with that, with anything else, right? So you can't just, like, make one of them not interact for an entire patch. Same thing. Uh, I don't know. Unless they're going to make tier sets... Oh, I wonder how tier sets are actually going to work in the expansion. Aren't, like, every tier set in the game going to have to have, like, two bonuses that interacts depending on what hero talent you're playing? Right? I don't know. Or they're, like, super boring and apply to both, but, like, they're both trying to do totally different things. Uh, let's read a few more of these. I, I'd also like to give... It gives Elemental nothing of note. It literally forces you to select Prim Wave as it states in the first talent that your P-Wave summons an Ancestor, which this build is based off of. If you want to use P-Wave and then have the Ancestor cast Flame Shock on targets not affected by them, allowing our Lava Burst to hit them for your damage. Okay. Fuck, I'm gonna have to figure out how to read YouTube chat. I didn't realize there was gonna be so many people in there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can ignore a couple hundred viewers you can't ignore 4,000 viewers like I had today on YouTube you can't just like just completely ignore them <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure that out for sure uh this is a bit of a letdown okay let's 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 go back let's 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 check some more out so shaman what's another one we want to which one do you guys want to see next do you guys want to watch the mages all relish in the fact that their class is just better than everyone else's? Or, wait, are they going to complain? Oh my god, imagine the universe where they're complaining. Fatal flaws! Oh my god, they're writing books. Well, at least they care, dude. I mean, dude, maybe, okay, chat, maybe is it could be a chicken before the egg thing, but is the reason that Meg's mage stuff is so constantly good is because their stuff isn't saying ridiculous shit like the Ellie shamans were, and they're actually numbering and labeling their points and giving obviously much more constructed feedback. Hmm? Look at this. this. This looks totally diffy than the than the other ones. Like way different. Were mages just smarter all along? Okay, we're not gonna read that shit. That 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 uh that hero talent's pretty nice. Uh, ooh, Rider of the Apocalypse could be fun. Drew to the Claw, Flame Shaper. Okay, do we read Pack Leader? I mean, negativity sells, right? So let's let's just get on in there. Oh, wrong thing. Seems really lackluster and boring, to be honest. Expected more. Why not incorporate Stampede into the tree or something? Dude! Not even Doomer and exactly right. This was basically my exact point. It's just super boring and it's a pack leader and it's for BM Hunter. And you, not wasted, but half of BM Hunter's hero talent choices were taken up by the, the Bat Chest Dark Ranger thing. So like, you're telling me you're going to give them the hero talent fantasy of pack leader and you're not even going to summon a bunch of pets? Like, what the, what are you fucking doing? This guy's level 10 and he knows that. All right. Here's the tree that's lazy for anyone like me. Didn't you have to... What do you mean lazy for anyone like you? You... The link is on this page. You had to click on the feedback thing from the actual page where it's at. It is literally harder to get to this point than it was to just read the thing. 
Okay, either way. And you took the time to, like, type all this out? Like, this is... Okay, all good. All good. All good. Yep. Slash 10... What does this mean? Is this, like... This is some kind of lingo I don't understand. Character count to post. Okay. Uh, pack leader. There really, there should really be a talent that summons tons of pets. Facts. And that doesn't suck like Stampede. A talent specifically on this tree. I should have said that since it's called. Yeah, bro. Yeah, uh, we get it. Uh, from a survival standpoint, this tree is better than I anticipated it would be. You know what's funny? This actually could be really cool for survival, but who would know? You know. Extremely boring, focusing on kill command and basic attack. Main mechanic of the tree is to... Dude, people actually give good feedback. I thought people would just be like, fuck Blizzard <laughs> in this... In this... Th like some... I, I guess like some, like some wow head comments, you know? To be fair, they normally are. Really? On the wow forums? Maybe. Like, you can just tell sometimes that people... Like... They see a WoW head thing pop up. Like, all the people who haven't played WoW for a long time, but still, like, shit on it constantly to validate their decision to quit. Some weird, weird-ass X, X behavior kind of stuff. They see something like this that's usually posted about their game. Like, classic, right? And then they see something for retail, and they're like, I remember when I used to play retail. I'm gonna fucking... One second. Wait, does this take me right to the forums? Open WoW head comment at the bottom. And then it's just, like... Oh my, I can't even make it to the bottom of this thing. It never ends. And they're like, I know what I wanted to say. I finally made it. Fucking, fucking, fuck Blizzard. <laughs> and it's just, they just need to let it out. They need someone to know. Um, Check Demon Hunter. Uh, We will. I, I could see, well, Demon Hunters are definitely, yeah, actually, I'm very interested to see how Demon Hunter forum posters are feeling. Nothing says pack leader better than not getting a pack to lead. At least Rider of the Apocalypse gets four different horsemen to show up or all four at once. Why can't we get three different pack animals? You know, one for each of the three pet families. Learned how many pet families there were today. Each of their own thing that they will do in, in addition to what they normally do. Like a ferocity pet is summoned, you get extra leech for a while. And then when we use bestial wrath, all three show up at once. Dude, random, random druid on the forum posts just this guy just spit a significantly better idea than whatever the fuck they came up with uh dude shout out wow wow forum posters today god damn Yeah, I was about to ask, where is the pack two? Should be called enhanced basic attack, not pack leader. <laughs> I like that sounds stupid, but one of them is kind of called massive attack, so it could actually be called enhanced basic attack. That's a crazy burn, though. Seems created with BM in mind. Really, I feel like BM is the most. Uh, maybe it's even less for survival. Oh, yeah, this guy's saying it. Uh, looks like Blizzard r totally forgot that Kill Command serves completely different purposes of BM and Survival. It's a somewhat hard-hitting focus vendor uh, for BM, while for Survival, it's a garbage filler slash generator button that you press when you can't press any of your good buttons. It's uninspired for BM, flat-out bad for Survival. I don't want to just complain, so here are some thoughts from a Survival PvP standpoint. Build pack court... Oh, yeah, I'm not going to read all that at all. I don't even know why I started. That's actually insane. Pack leader of passives? Dude, let's go hunters fucking drag them. They did. They they actually made some bullshit with this with this uh with this one. Uh so let's check uh Let's let's look at the let's look what the very uh normal demon hunters are thinking. Dude, I'll be mind blown if demon hunter forum posters are giving good takes and are not losing their fucking mind. Havoc as it is right now in Dragonflight is a spec that has evolved from one of the easiest spec to play to one of the most complex. Uh, yeah, kind in its current build. Uh, the main... Mm, how hard is current inertia with tier set Demon Hunter? 
It's harder than melee. It's 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 not as hard as enhance. It's not as hard as Windwalker, but it's definitely harder than Rhett. It's harder. It's harder than uh, I can't compare it to Warrior. I haven't played Warrior in a while. I think initially there's like a lot of very unique interactions, but once you get used to them, it's still pretty easy. But either way, um, the main change that pushed this class into unfriendly territory are the short duration. Oh yeah, so he's directly referencing inertia, but that's the thing that's sick though, Lich Dog. Uh, the hero class rests on a spell that is not the main class fantasy. The main class fantasy is I beam, metamorphosis, and blade dance iconic abilities. Throwing X is not. Um, I think I have some issues with this thing clearly going so down, so far down throw glaive that the other one's gonna have to go in a different direction. And it's just like it's they're doing the bad thing, right? And the bad thing is. Some of these specs actually have totally different ideas of how you play them in like the middle to bottom of this spec tree, and Havoc is one of them. And it seems like they're fully committing to throw Glaive for one, so they're just going to commit to the other shit for the other one. Maybe specifically this middle stuff. Being in demon form. Or pressing I-beam or fell dev. And I just think that's binary and boring and super uh, dependent on what kind of content you're doing. Uh... Anyways, the Eldrachi team tree seems amazing for Havoc, but incredibly weak for Vengeance. I seriously hope there's another tree coming to DH that's more aligned for Vengeance. Uh, does it seem amazing for Havoc, though? Uh, as long as the current 2-4 to four piece gets reworked as talents, this is fantastic. I think that this tree kind of... <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I saw that I had the tab open and I forgot it was the chat box. Oh, that's fucking good. Okay, um, where is it? Aldrachi Reaver. Oh, see, I totally forgot what I was talking about. Okay, um, oh yeah. So as soon as I saw the hunt gets cooldown reduction when you cast an enhanced ability, at least to me, what this tells me is that the current tier bonus is not going to be baked into their talents. Which I think is okay as long as it does exist within hero talents. I don't think it has to be. Um, I mean, also, I don't think this tree is bad for havoc. By the way, I, it, it is a good havoc tree. Uh, it's just not. I don't. It's not definitely not insane. Hunt getting CDR is so good. Yeah, like for me personally, I played a ton of havoc this patch, and I haven't played it in a long time. I don't think I've played havoc since it's gotten the hunt. So like two expansions basically this and shadowlands and i cannot imagine pressing the hunt without any cdr it would just i wouldn't i i couldn't i can't even fathom what that would feel like it would be so weird um it's really 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 bad like look at the dk windwalker warlock trees uh wait let's 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 hey lsr 65 orc hunter let's back the fuck up here a second like, look at the DK Windwalker Warlock trees. They're all so cool and just add to the gameplay. No, they're not. The Do not throw Windwalker in there, you, you fucking... What are you doing? All right. Uh, like, somehow they made DH even harder to put... Whoa, whoa, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, 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 okay. Like, you somehow made DH even harder to play, which is mind-boggling. Is there... Is it like a take out there that Demon Hunter is really hard to play? I think people are just... Here's what I think. I think... Th I think... People played no movement Demon Hunter. And they saw momentum this expansion. And then they weren't playing the game. And then they saw Inertia getting in introduced. And then they were mad about it. Weren't playing the game either way. And then they're like... Just assuming the class is super hard now and not actually playing it. Um... I mean, when you watch people who are not good, I bet you watch them have terrible inertia windows. Like, I bet they'll do an inertia window without a blade dance in it, or, like, they're not worrying about having it up during the hunt, or, like, they they don't do a really good, like, essence break uh, inertia thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I bet that happens all the time. But the thing is, is you can fuck that up and just kind of fell rush whenever it lights up and probably do within at least 90% of the amount of damage, right? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that's a not playing it angle. Uh, this looks like the most absolute boring class to play if you're looking for class fantasy experience. Basically, throw glaive to win, which is interesting for a melee range DPS class. What are these people fucking talking about? While, while I wish I could make s suggestions, most of my ideas are better suited for a chaos build. However, throwing glaive as the iconic ability for demon hunters is really sad. Even Big Daddy Illidan use the ability once per complete fight. <laughs> That's so funny that I don't know which one's more true that they researched how many times Illidan cast throw glaive abilities for this post or that they knew that like as that's just knowledge they could get from their brain at any point because they would know something like that. Uh, kind of shows that Blizzard really doesn't know what to do with demon hunters to make them be unique and showcase class fantasy, especially if this is the end result. DKs get the force for horsemen. Monks get to hit the avatar state. Um, shamans get ancestors to squat up. Okay, a lot of the examples you're using here, people are not happy. But yeah, and demon hunters get to do the exact thing they've been doing, but with extra burr. Yeah, this is about what I expected. Guys, I, I, all I'm saying is some classes get better changes than others. And we've kind of looked at it side by side, but when you're looking at mages and you're looking at demon hunters, you're, do you, do you, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? There's, there's a different quality of response from, from the mage posters here. It's, it's, I'm on, I'm unbiased to both of these. These guys have bullet points and they're like, this is just like, these people are just spouting off some, some fucking nonsense. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's got to be some more. This is clearly doubling down on the short duration, precise sequences. No, it isn't. You press throw glaive and then your buttons light up. If you continue your rotation as normal, you will get the benefit from all of those buttons. Uh, is this like a, this must be a, because I can see it. Demon Hunters have a, a huge amount of people that play Demon Hunter and they must have a lot of very casual players, obviously. And I'm assuming that like very similar to like Breath of Syndragosa versus a Blit for Frosty K, there's this huge divide in the community of like whether you want to do movement or no movement. And it seems like there's clearly a lot of angst built up within these people about doing anything other than like dog shit ass easy. I shouldn't even say dog shit. Like I think I think I beam Demon Hunter is fine, right? But like I'm assuming there's just like an extremely unhealthy feeling with these people that there's any option to do that kind of stuff like they'd rather it all just be easy with no talents that try to challenge you and like you can just tell by the way that they type that like i mean because like this is, isn't even how the class plays right now but i'm just trying to understand the community the the owner community better um will we have a consistent way of consuming souls as havoc other than run through them that's kind of a good point unhindered assault Fellblade reset of Medjool Retreat is legit awesome. Presumably, Reaver's Glaive is going to be improved by talents that improve Glaive Toss because it... Throw Glaive? Uh, because it seems to me that Amping Chaos Strike and Glaive in the same build cuts across purposes when it comes to Fury usage. It doesn't cost any Fury to do that. Uh, thematically, the extension of the current Havoc tier set seems cool. Mechanically, however, I have concerns over the generation of Soul Fragments. Align cooldown used properly... From the Havoc perspective, the hero talents themselves are pretty underwhelming. More throw glaive stuff, tiny damage buff windows. Wow! that That's not true, by the way. There are not tiny damage buff windows. That is not... But you can tell that it's like a trigger for them. Right? Like, that's... I, I don't think that's how this is made. It's not a small damage window thing. Like, they, they stay procced... Uh, But you can tell that, like, the tiny damage buff thing, like, they're looking for that to be a thing, because that's just not even how it works. Although, they could just be misunderstanding it, but yeah. Uh, align code units properly, pool fury users in burst windows, perform split-second fight mechanic assessment. 
Both specs have been reworked in Dragonflight for better IMO. The more complex things that Havoc in particular can do in spec into inertia feel really rewarding when pulled off correctly, but in many cases, to do so correctly, one has to align cooldown users properly, okay? Pull Fury to enter burst windows with Fury rather than generators, okay? Perform split-second fight mechanic assessments and solve geometry problems for where to safely VR towards and then VR, and then VR or fell rush back into the fight. Okay, you did... They're doing a little too much. No one's pulling out the, no one's pulling out the protractor, right? Um, while also contending with any of the number of the things going on in the fight, the spatial concerns outside of the, we can execute inertia window properly in that window, but upcoming mechanics. So this is just a whole bit on inertia, right? They're just getting their inertia thoughts out. Man, this, I, I, I didn't realize it, but also. It's not surprising to me that there's a large portion of the Havoc community that does not want to feel forced to have to play anything other than like Blade Dance off cooldown, Chaos Strike to spend Fury, and Demon Blades or pressing Demon's Bite to generate Fury, and that's literally it. That's all they want to do. Um, general fight mechanic concerns, kicking, stopping important spells and abilities... What is it, Max? You have to understand how bad the majority of players... No, I understand. Like, Havoc, I think when it was initially announced, I think attracted a lot of... It was, like, easily the easiest melee, and I, I think that some people really liked that. They they want to have less going on. There's attraction for that. Why do you think they made AUG? Like, they want to have the support class that you can put someone on. Like, that's an attractive thing that WoW wants to make, right? Like, Demon Hunter for a lot of people probably was that. Oh, I can play a DPS class in melee and not have to try that hard? Like, that makes sense. Like, a lot of you, like, people who play this game at a super high level, you guys are listening to that like, oh, fucking casuals, fucking NPCs. Bro, that's like most people, <laughs> right? So, uh, that play WoW. So, uh, I can see it. It's just... Uh, do you not want there to be an option to do other stuff? Do you feel forced to do those things? One thing Demon Hunter has actually always done really well, even in Legion when it first existed, is they have old momentum or current inertia, like Legion momentum and current inertia, which do require more from you. But there are builds that are very close to the viability of those that use zero movement skills are significantly easier and Blizzard has honestly done a really good job since Demon Hunter has been released to make sure that those two things are really close to each other. So if you're a Demon Hunter player, you don't have to do any of this. And it's a big stretch to say that... Uh, it's a big stretch to say that now this is all tight window combos again. That's just not true. I mean, I guess... I, the only tight combo thing I could say is with Eldrachi Reaver. It seems obvious to me that the essence break window with the Eldrachi Reaver is going to be very fat and almost like forces you to play that. And maybe that's where they're getting that feedback. I can kind of, but they, none of them have specifically mentioned that. They are kind of implying that it alone is a tight window, and that's just not true. Um,. Hey, Max. First time viewer here. You have a really jarring American accent. Nice beard, though. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking chat. <laughs> Dude, chat is so funny, man. What a fucking chat. <laughs> it's very jarring. Max, you are misremembering the tree. Chaos Strike applies a 30% damage taken debuff. Yeah, I know. But, like, you're going to use those other things in succession anyway. It's like a four-button combo, kind of, on buttons you're going to press anyway. It does have really good synergy with Essence Break, though, but I haven't seen any of them bring that up. 
Let's see. <laughs> okay, I already know this is going to be a banger because their character being shown is like a character that isn't even max level, and they're putting hilarious things in parentheses. Good grief, y'all, in parentheses, Bliss. <laughs> oh, this is going to be so good. Oh, it's, it has to be so good. Why would you have to point out that you meant Blizzard? Okay, um... Despite how many times you really want us out here throwing glaives, huh? Despite how many times people say they don't think it's either A, enjoyable, or B, in any way related to the cool of being a demon hunter. Actually, kind of facts. Well, I mean, Illidan had glaives, and I guess throwing them is kind of... I can kind of get it. Uh, but either way, that's how he feels. I mean, you even invented this talent called Glaive Tempest that is actually kind of cool. It's reminiscent of the Legion Artifact Weapon ability... It is actually good, but it's also about the most glaive-related button I want to press. <laughs> Just glaive tempest three times a minute or so, and I'm good. Thanks. You people, in parentheses, Blizz, <laughs> don't even know how to get people to play the game like you seem to want. Oh my god. This is, and of course all the punctuation and capitalization doesn't exist. You always forcing them to do the most unfun things. Average Demon Hunter player. And you always... <laughs> Make those things that you force on players as unfun as possible. <laughs> this is like actual like fifth grader writing this. There's no way this is an adult. Um, you always forcing them to do the most unfun things and you always make those things, comma, that you force on players as unfun as possible. All you had to do is get people to enjoy it. <laughs> He's bringing Torghast into this. This is so good. This, <laughs> this, this guy is actually just getting it all out. He's getting it. This is a perfect example of how most people approach. Like, it's more obvious with this guy. Because there's not a lot going on here, right? But with most of these posts, it actually does come down to just them needing to get it all out. And at least with him, it's like more obvious. I fucking respect this, dude. As unfun as possible. All you have to do is get people to enjoy Torghast. Where did that come from? Was allow them to get obtain one high item level epic item per week from there. That's it. That was... That is completely false. That was the issue with Torghast. The issue with Torghast was that everyone needed to do it for power, so they had to make it a joke. But it's a roguelike, so roguelikes can't be fun if they just have to be completed easily for power. You getting a high item level epic item would make that even worse than it already was, right? That's it, and you would have seen drastically different sentiment about the entire damn thing. Instead, you took the L hard. You heated it. <laughs> I love this guy. You took the L hard, you heated it, and reheated it, and choked that Torghast L down at Blizz offices with tears in your eyes. <laughs> Mmm, nom nom nom, this chore gas nightmare was definitely, om um, nom nom nom, one of the most important design lessons of my life, in parentheses, swallows while crying. <laughs> Dude, I would love to just have a conversation with this person and just see what happens, you know? Uh... But the answer was so simple. Do Torghast... Most of this most of this post ended up being a Torghast post. I would, You just never know where this is going. But the answer was so simple. Do Torghast get gear easy W. Just like here, if you really want people to enjoy... Okay, bringing it all back to Throwglaive. Let's see if he lands the plane here. This ability almost all DH hate to use. Make it generate fury. They did! In the in the spec in this hero talent tree, the glaive thing that it procs generates twenty fury instead of spending. Okay, huge amounts of fury, all caps. Easy fix, easy W, and so clearly you won't do it, <laughs> dude. I'm hitting that with a like. Let's fucking get it. Wait, it's not working. Like, oh, I'm not logged in. No. What a fucking banger, dude. 
Oh, it just logged me in. Let's go. I'm hitting that guy with a like. Let's fucking go, baby. Just type stuff. I just... If I started reading this... And then I just... I, can't, I could... If you would have told me that he would have spent the whole thing complaining about Torghast and then bringing it back and complaining that the reason the Throwblade isn't good is because it does something that they just added in the Hero Talent thing, but he missed it. <laughs> Wait, there's a reply? Are you okay? Dude, you guys are going to be mad at him for that, but... When was the last time someone asked you if you were okay? Everyone asks, where is Max? But no one asks, how is Max? Right? Sag. Okay. Um, okay, kind of low-hanging fruit here. But guys, the difference between the mage forums and the DK and the DH forums are not a huge sample size, but it's not looking good for the blindfolded ones. Uh Okay. Let's uh Okay, we can we'll look at one more. We'll look at one more. You're me, you're All right. I'm actually, like, questioning my entire life choice as the fact that I just randomly decided to stream on YouTube and it, like, almost doubled my viewers. I don't understand life anymore. YouTube streaming is insanely OP, I guess. Um. Okay. Okay. And you ignore them? Guys, stop bringing that up. I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a chance to not ignore them yet. I th I was going to ignore them because I assumed there wouldn't be so many of them. Well, I guess this doesn't make it sound any better. But I mean, now that there's so many of them, I can't and I'm going to figure out how to solve it, right? Every I I'm the good guy. I'm AOE streaming. I just got to figure it out. You only care about them because you have to, not because you want to. That's not true. I don't have to. I. Let's see how YouTube chat's taking this. Boo! What do you mean them? Okay, this is not good. Everything's bad. Every every. This is this is, this is not working at all. Um. Okay. It kind of sucks. You can't combine chats. I mean, you, there are programs where you can combine chats, but I won't be able to get all of you guys to combine chats. So realistically, the people who are watching on YouTube in the future will just have not as good of a chat experience, but it shows up on screen. Like, you can see the other chat you're not seeing on screen. I feel like that helps. Has to help. Maybe I'll make it bigger, if anything. Uh, You think it's against the TOS to have combined chats? I'm sure it's probably fine. That sounds like something they might write down but never enforce. Like I can't I can't imagine getting a a call from Mr. Twitch one day and they're like, "Hey, so we need to talk. You've been uh combining your chats recently." <laughs> That's like as non-enforceable as non-competes. Um either way, I'll, I'll set it up. So shout out, shout out hero guys. I can't afford Twitch. It's free. Max will never see me. And that makes me feel safe. I, I just ruined this person's day. Wait. So when you click on people on YouTube, what can you do? Put user in time. What does that mean? Put user in timeout. Yo, does someone on YouTube want to find out what the fuck this means? I need to put someone in timeout real quick. I need I need I need a, a volunteer. Me, all right, salty creepa. You're in timeout, buddy. Oh, I can decide how how long do you want it. How long are you trying to be in timeout? It's up to you. 
24 hours? A whole fucking day? I mean, fucking Jesus. <laughs> he wants the whole... He wants the whole... Okay, let's fucking go. All right. <laughs> See you, buddy. Uh, yeah. Max, you don't ban people in, in YouTube. You just shadow ban them. You can probably... Oh. Oh. That's kind of evil. So, like, if instead of being banned, you can always watch the stream, but you'll just be talking to yourself and you won't realize well, no, why no one's responding to you. That is peak evil. They just think they're still typing. All right. Also, no mods in YouTube chat. Free reign. Oh, God. Refreshing YouTube increases the delay. Okay, so I found this out. So, YouTube, it should be better next time. Uh, there is a ultra low latency option, which I have selected on Twitch, and I did not select for my YouTube stream today. So, my I don't know the difference between those two things. I've never tried it, but I'm assuming it'll be much more up to date than it is today. I'll mod your YouTube. Now we'll leave them unmodded for now until they get super weird. Quick question: Can you post ASCII cocks in YouTube? This is a terrible idea, by the way. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream. Um, I will. Uh, we're going to go play hockey in a bit. Uh, I should be live tomorrow, doing some kind of shit. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll probably be talking to somebody, and that's good. Uh, remember to. See, eat vegetables and stuff. I'll see.